the doctrine of Chilkul. The main occult laws and concepts. Book 1. The series. Esoteric Natural Science. The doctrine of the master of the Trans-Himalayan esoteric school, Jhilkul. The continuation of books of H. P. Blavatsky and R. Bailey. Synthesis of Science and Religion. Dashyana Danina. I do not invent hypotheses Isaac Newton. Memento Mori the famous phrase. When we say that we live on a planet, this expresses our delusions of grandeur. Earth allegedly belongs to us, it is ours, we are its owners. But this is nonsense. Our world, is a thin layer around the globe, height about 7 kilometers, deep, where the sea, 5, in general, the 12 kilometer layer. F. Boschk, unknown. And death shall have no dominion Dylan Thomas, Welsh poet. It is the customary fate of new truths to begin as heresies and to end as superstitions Thomas Henry Huxley. The Preface. 01. The series of the books, The Doctrine of Jhil Kuhl, Esoteric Natural Science, and a source of information for it. In our lifetimes, there is probably nothing more mysterious, enchanting, enticing and frightening at the same time, rather than contact with something supernatural. Higher mind, other worlds, mysterious places, keeping the secrets, and strange beings endowed with abilities that are unavailable to the common man. All this and much more, the unknown, has always been the subject to scrutiny by the people. It's like a door, entailing somewhere into the unknown, which allows to look beyond the daily routine, expanding the horizons of our imagination. This is the only area that best informs us about the issues of death, and what will be after it. And, of course, people can't pass up the opportunity to look into the door, and even pass through it. Himalayan Mahatmas swung open before humanity one of these doors. They are superhuman, white mags, mentors and teachers. The word Mahatma is translated from Sanskrit as, great soul. The ascended masters, they have gone on the path of evolution far from us. However, they chose to remain to guide and coordinate the formation and development of people. This is the greatest difficulty for them and the boon for us. The masters of the Trans-Himalayan Esoteric School take disciples into their spiritual ashrams from around the globe. Contact carried out not in person, but on the subtle planes, in the mind. In the course of such intangible teaching people are taught to all kinds of spiritual practices that lead to enlightenment and the attainment of true knowledge about the world. The best known teachers of this school are Kathumi, Moria and Jhil Kul. From the middle of the 19th century Mahatmas additionally committed themselves to telepathically transmit through the intermediaries, who chosen from among the disciples, the texts of works, connecting science and religion. Helena Blavatsky was the first messenger. Telepath. Such monumental books like. Isis Unveiled. And. Secret Doctrine. Were born thanks to her cooperation with the Himalayan adepts. In the 20th century Alice Ann Bailey continued her work. She was the owner of great syllable and style. During her contact with Jhil Kuhl. She wrote more than 20 books containing valuable information about the basics of our being, the psychology of people and the techniques of meditation. In particular, the series of works entitled, A Treatise on the Seven Rays, is simply unique in its importance. In the books of Alice Bailey there is the prediction that it's not the latest series of works, and in the beginning of the 21st century, it will continue. These books will be also devoted to the theme of synthesis of science and esotericism. But their central focus of attention will be directed precisely on the scientific issues and problems and their decision. So and it has fallen out. And I was lucky to present to you this series of works entitled The Doctrine of Jhil Kuhl, Esoteric Natural Science, because here dealt mainly natural science issues. Let you not be afraid of the word discipline, that reminding rote learning and exams. We tried to use the simple and clear language, but without neglecting the laws of logic. 
Our aim was to reveal the deeper meaning of the known scientific laws and concepts of the natural processes and phenomena, using information gleaned from ageless wisdom. Bring to your attention the series of books created during the tense telepathic contact with one of the ascended masters, as they are often called, of the trans-Himalayan esoteric school Jhulkul. The purpose of this series of treatises, is to combine science and occult. To explain natural processes and phenomena, try using the basic occult terms and concepts. To solve the problems over which scientists break their heads. Also we want to take a look at the esotericism from the scientific point of view. A lot of what is said in this book by the different scientists at the different times have already been put forward in the form of bold hypotheses. So from it, we'll start. However, throughout the text we will inweave an esoteric terminology, seeking to put an equal sign between occultism and science. In this series of books we tell separately about every field of science. Although it was not easy. At the core of each of them there are the same fundamental laws of nature. Therefore, as we try, the usual separation of sciences you will not find here. A narrow specialization is useful for the perception of the studied material. However, the aim of this book, a synthesis, so there are often times you will find the absolute mix of sciences. Before we begin to make any changes in physics, chemistry, biology, astronomy, bow to the truly titanic work of the scientists of all time, who have erected along their shoulders the colossal and terrific science building. Science pervades all areas of everyday life, facilitating our existence. In no event we are going to destroy the foundation of scientific knowledge, particularly touching the question of its practical experience. Just try to look at the known natural processes and phenomena under somewhat different from the esoteric point of view. Humanity does not still possess a unified world outlook which would unite all people. But it is necessary to create such, for the sake of the future of ourselves. People die every day. Healthy person or sick, but death is inevitable for everyone. And we want to ask ourselves and you, do we not all are tired of the endless, maddening series of losses of the loved ones and friends and of our own expectation of death? Maybe is it time to change something? Maybe is possible for us another existence? We want people who read these lines, shared with us this knowledge and supplemented it with their own. For humanity. In whole, process of true revelation has not started yet. Transforming from human to superhuman state, we, will stand under a waterfall, of information of absolutely new level, which by avalanche going to fall on us. We should not be afraid of it. But before that must prepare our bodies, these, new furs, for the, new wine. Next, we are waiting for the endless wonders. We believe in the happy ending of our existence. If all goes bad, then it's not a final yet. And the final is not end in the usual sense of this word. It is a transition to another state of existence. O2. Oh, Why such epigraph was selected? As the first quote of epigraph to this book, we took Isaac Newton's famous words, I do not invent hypotheses. Although, admittedly, it was not always possible to follow his advice, the science is impossible without hypotheses and assumptions. It's especially in the process of forming a new theory. However, all hypotheses must be as close to reality and based on experience and logic. We assume that by hypotheses, which Newton did not recognize, it is understood any fantastic assumptions, detached from reality. It is the first. Why do we have quoted Newton? And the second, is tribute of gratitude to his genius. Its merit is, first of all, in the accuracy of many his discoveries and assumptions. This refers to the nature of light, law of gravity, law of inertia, nature of space and time. In the modern physics only a separate niche is given to the classical mechanics. While the tenets of the relativity theory and quantum mechanics are considered as more universal. In what follows we will focus on the assumptions of both mechanics and you'll see how far sighted Newton was. 
and that the classical mechanic is early to write off. Should rather revive it, update, and use its laws not only in relation to bodies, but also to the chemical elements and elementary particles. As for the second quote, used as an epigraph, it is also taken not by accident. Memento mori, lat, remember that you die, Latin phrase which became a catchphrase. In ancient Rome, this phrase was pronounced during the triumphal march of the Roman military leaders, who were returning with a victory. Behind the back of military commander put the slave who was required to periodically remind triumphant, that in spite of his fame, he is mortal, see Wikipedia. If you remember about death, it will help you to acquire the correct attitude to life. Awareness of the fact that everything in this world not lasts forever, including you yourself, enabled with you, first, to appreciate more every moment of life, and secondly, less tied to everything that you can have in life. The third quote speaks for itself. This is appealing to people not to consider themselves as the crown of evolutionary creation and not to see themselves as owners of the planet. As for the beautiful poem by Dylan Thomas, it can be regarded as a symbol of the age-old dream of mankind, life without death. The concluding statement, the words of Thomas Henry Huxley, tells us that, on the one hand, human thinking is inherently a certain inertia and people can react to new knowledge belatedly. On the other hand, human knowledge is in the process of constant renewal, and can become obsolete and discarded. O3. The Primary Aim of the Book. The primary aim of this series of books, scientifically interpret phenomenal achievement of Jesus Christ and other ascended masters. Minor, but also a very important task, bring together the knowledge of universe structure, accumulated by human science, with the esoteric information that is anciently contained in religious scriptures and treatises, and is known as the timeless wisdom. At this time we set ourselves another goal, to strip the soil those implausible scientific fantasies and hypothesis, divorced from reality, which are present in the scientific literature. Another purpose, it's forever removed from the minds of people the fear associated with the incorrect interpretation of biblical prophecies. Generally, then less of all kinds of fear oppress human, so he is freer and happier. The series is devoted into a number of works, each of which is dedicated to a specific area of science. Most of data will be associated with physics. This is not surprising. It must be admitted, physics is a basis for all other sciences. The most important for humanity is information of scientific outlook on the Bible and the faith of Jesus. Buddha and other ascended masters. O4. Oh, the additional aim of the book, analysis of habitual events. To a large extent process of creating this book stimulated the desire to help people relax, do not worry about the huge number of household challenges that we all face every day. Do not suffer of the everyday little things, what could be better? For each event should see the laws of nature, the laws of physics, chemistry astronomy and biology, and in case of any failures, or rather, what is considered to be failures, shift the blame, for these laws, and do not reproach yourself. When you realize a huge, immense, all-encompassing sweep of happening, you cease to suffer from any kind of negligence or because of what appears to be a misstep for others. You begin to appreciate those times when you managed to do everything right. After all, all of us living on the planet, every moment has to fight with a lot of the universal laws, which has been steadily in making no exceptions, dominate the all of our existence, for example, we have to fight with the influence of the gravity field of the planet. Let's say you drop the cup and brushed it off the table. She fell to the floor and shattered into pieces. This is followed by our usual reaction, oh, what a pity. It was such a beautiful thing. What have I done? How often we react so, especially when the cup was really loved. But it would be good to see yourself a little bit from the side, a creature of small size on the huge planet hurtling in the open spaces of boundless universe, victim of unforgiving laws of nature. 
it helps to recognize in happen a whole series of mechanical phenomena. And in the headlines up a number of questions, 1, what happened in the time of impact of hand with a cup on the edge of the table, or it slipped from hands, because they or a cup was wet. 2, why the cup wasn't left standing on the table, and began to move after impact, and then dropped, when the table surface is over. 3, why a cup has fallen when the table surface is over and not hovering, for example, in the air. 4. Why a cup has smashed when faced with a hard floor surface. 5. Why the parts into which it smashed, do not fall right there in the place collision with the floor, and dispersed all over the kitchen, room? And so on. The number of questions you can ask yourself, analyzing every minute event in your life can be overwhelming. In addition, you can pay attention to the chemical composition of the cup the chemical composition of the air through which the cup was falling, the chemical content of the table on which it stood, the chemical elements of the hand that shot it down, chemistry of the floor on which it fell, etc. And all of this will give you more information about what happened, and establish are any regularities. You can think about the state of own organism, and to analyze the reasons for which you have shot down, has been dropped, cup. Maybe you were in a hurry to somewhere or have been too scattered and immersed in your own thoughts and maybe you were angry or offended by something, or maybe just tired. Or you were filled with joy, and you were not up to the plate. The conclusions will help you to figure out at least roughly, what happens to your body and how it responds to what is happening to you in life in general. How much interesting and useful information we can extract from a simple falling the cup on the floor. Instead banal, oh, what I'm awkward. Perhaps after that you are so interested in the process of falling cups on the floor that you buy a dozen at a bargain price at the sale, and will take what will become of their brush away from tables, drop from wet hands, just drop, throw, throw on the wall, to throw from the balcony. And enthusiastically watch what happens with cup, with you and with others, especially with them. That's why we're writing this book in order that it will be interesting for you to drop the cups. And also for the fact that you have not felt guilty when you drop anything, smash, when you spoil the things. When not working out any processes that you planned. We want you to dissect the surrounding reality, reveal the lowdown of traditions and analyze the rituals, what lies behind them, and whether you should follow them blindly. We want people to not live automatically without thinking about what they do, how do, why they do what they do, and also about what happens around them. Life without analysis, the road to prejudice. Although it is recognized that the habits, traditions which make life much easier, let go with the flow, which helps to relax and unwind. If you have something go wrong, as it should be, or as prescribed, do not blame yourself and analyze what is happening. If you have something go wrong, as it should be, or as prescribed, do not blame yourself and analyze what is going on. And if others will look at you askance and with disapproval, do not be shy and try to understand why they behave this way. Likely that most of them are still in the thrall of thinking, is not prone to analysis. In other words, in front of you the people far from science. Do not judge them for it strictly and take this fact for granted. Maybe many of them yet in the future will take the path of the researcher and the experimenter. Oh 5. Be surprised of the fact of your existence. Wonder. Be surprised the very fact of your existence. Take a look around as absolutely, totally a sexual creature or rather, as creature equally combines the features of both sexes. Perceive life as a unique opportunity to participate in the process of creation bodies of perfect beings, for which will be accessible vastness of the universe, without the using of space vehicles. Search for the meaning of life, as well as the adoption of a religion, not necessarily one of the cause, is an explanation of what is happening with you and around you. The person discovers the true meaning of birth and death of self, others and all living things. The process of awareness the surrounding reality always starts with a question to me, what am I? 
And what is this world where I am? Apostrophe. The thoughts that come to you after that in the head, this is the answer to your question. Perhaps will not thought, but will only sensations. For example, it's the feeling of acute awareness of the moment of being. The whole process of awareness is very similar to the operation of awakening. You look at your body, at the things around you, at the sun, at the sky, at people, and are amazed. God, what is all this and why is this all here? And while you, are awakened, all of these questions are continuously present in your mind. If they disappear, then you, are fallen asleep, again. To humanity is absolutely necessary to look at yourself well from the outside. Recall the past, see into the future and appreciate the present. After that we will finally understand the meaning of our existence and the existence of this world at all. There is a constant clatter of heels on the pavement. There are children hubbub and noise of passing cars. Echo draws the geometric lines between the houses. Green lawns and playground, bathed in natural light. On the ground there is clearly visible every speck of dust, every stick and small insect. Literally every part of the air is permeated with light. Sunbeams from metallic coatings and window panes jump from trees along the sidewalk, and from there into the street and back, indiscriminately crawl into the eyes of curious children and respectable adults. 06. The Crutches of Humanity. Humanity can be compared with the patient recovering from a prolonged, severe illness. It relies on crutches and, thanks to them, can walk. Serious illness, in this case, this is the origin of man, his roots that originate from the early stages of the evolution of life on earth. Like any mineral, plant or animal, man chains to the planet and adapted to this existence. All biochemical and physiological reactions of the human body are due the information stored in all of the elementary particles of the body. And this information is accumulated by all three kingdoms of nature that preceded human. Bones, are the technosphere of all mankind, all his household, inventions and tools that support and facilitate the existence. Mankind recovers finally and discards crutches, only when we'll move to a new level of evolution, in the state of superhumanity. 07. Money. The Problems of Humanity. The cause of all ills and sins of mankind lies in the metabolism of the human organism. The human body, is a legacy of the animal kingdom. We, the people, have to constantly collect the fruits of plants and killing animals for subsistence, as not able to synthesize macromolecular complexes from carbon dioxide and water, as do plants. In today's world, money is a symbol of food. The availability of money is equated to the presence of food. This means that this person will live. Lack of money means no food that symbolizes death. Money, this is the scoring system, by which people evaluate each other's work. People, who are not involved in farming or herding, separated from natural food sources. Mostly, they are the townspeople. For them, money is the central motivation of their lives as it is the main condition of their survival. Following the instinct of self-preservation, these people seek to get, earn, as much money. Otherwise, death or hungry, miserable existence. Some do not neglect such methods, of earnings, as robbery and theft. Often they are accompanied by murders. The pursuit of money is exhausting, but vital. People want to survive. And live with securely and comfortably, without feeling anxiety about food and shelter for tomorrow day. People plan their lives, as opposed to animals, very carefully. In addition in people there are the beginnings of altruistic behavior, a care of their own kind, although all in varying degrees. Hence it is such a complex socio-economic structure of human society. Rural residents are not so dependent on money as townspeople. Money as opposed to agricultural products, is multifunctional. It can be exchanged for any, benefits of civilization, while with the fruits of plants and animal carcasses to make it more difficult. Typically, 
in areas where the plants are grown and animals are bred in people in excess of these products. Therefore, the exchanging between each other just does not happen, there is no one to sell. At the same time these people need products of artisans who live in urban centers. And the townspeople themselves in dire need of agricultural products and almost no need in the goods the same as they are, artisans. As a result, money has become the greatest boon, allowing each worker to acquire what he needs at the moment. Therefore, it must be admitted that the money gives everyone freedom. The spectrum of human needs is gradually increasing due to the appearance of spiritual needs in a variety of forms. This means that people are starting to be more actively interested in the meaning of their own existence. As a result, the creative professions are becoming more and more popular in society, film, TV, theater, dance art, music, literature, science, art, and industry of computer programming sports shows, and more. We can't list all. A such modern phenomenon as, show business, sometimes combines all areas of creative thought. The life of mankind is based on the possession, use, purchase and sale of various types of chemical compounds, resources, and products from them, goods. The problem of money, is eternal. Just as the crimes of people for money are eternal. This means that all of this will exist as long as humanity will remain the crown of nature. As soon as in the depths of mankind will blossom superhumanity, the money problem will gradually recede. And then disappear completely when the number superhuman will large enough. People will never solve all their problems, not defeat hunger, disease, not resolve the fuel crisis, not get rid of the death. But all this will on forces to representatives of coming over mankind, the fifth superhuman kingdom in nature. Although solve all human problems they will not habitually for people means. Rather, they will not solve them at all. All these problems simply disappear by themselves. Hunger, disease, lack of fuel and energy, and death, from it all superhuman will be spared because the metabolism of their organisms will be quite different. The earth will cease to be their only habitat place. Oh 08. The life after death. A growing number of scientists are beginning to listen carefully to the concept of existence of man I after death. However, the scientifically a fact of life after death is not confirmed. What does it mean, not scientifically confirmed? This means that any person with photo or video camera, or any other instrument fixing light or electromagnetic waves, not dead, and then returned, that is, came to life and showed everybody what he saw. Science is serious about only to such evidence. Such experiments would never be enforced. Death, a division of bodies consisting of elementary particles of different plans, combined during life into a single unit in the body. That is, life itself, is a rationing of unity of the particles of different quality. If we accept that human eye, is the body of very low density, then instrument that registers events must be the same, rarefied body. Perhaps human eye, is guiding the human. Organism during his life and is separated from the physical body after death, this is the most accurate, reliable device storing in memory all that happens to us, whether we are alive connected with dense body, or, in the other world, separated from the physical body. The problem is that human eye is not able to transfer to other human eye memories of the post-mortem existence by technical means. Because devices, its dense bodies, deprived of elementary particles of astral, mental, body or even higher planes, and create a transducer of signals into signals of these plans into physical plan the science can't. It should be noted that a similar natural converter, it is the human body. Therefore, in order to make sure in reality of life after death, people need to improve not the technology, but their own bodies. 09. The purpose of the spiritual practices. Animals and people tend to live with the, looking back, that is constantly look around for fear of potential attacks by predators or competitors for the feeding sites or habitats. 
in people such behavior manifests itself in a much lesser extent compared with the animals. This is due to a more reasonable organization of the human community and more powerful development altruistic features of behavior. To live, looking back, means to not have a stable metabolic state. The body then calms down, then switches to mode, fight or running away. The purpose of spiritual practice, is the developing the ability to move away from the animal and human behavior, and look at the events indifferently from a position of observer without fear in front of others. This means that the person seeks to maintain itself in a cheerful, but not of overexcited state, when both divisions of the ANS, the sympathetic and parasympathetic, are in a state of balance. He appreciates everyday residing. In behavior is reflected in the shape of a reluctance to follow the inferior, early. Programs of behavior as a result there appears reluctance to fight with others, earn their daily bread. You just want to look at everything, but not to participate, blindly imitating of the crowd. Appear an ability to move away from conflicts. Man as it initially sees the ultimate goal of existence of this world. 10. The dream of any one man. All human dreams could be summed as follows without disease and old age live forever and be able to freely and instantly travel to any point in the universe, that is, be able to fly. 11. In what appears of people mastery. The chief virtue of mankind is that people have well enough studied all the substances in the coarse crust. Have mastered every possible combination of these substances with each other, mechanical or chemical, or combine both. People mixed, combine merge and group the substances, and the individual elements, creating new ones and new combinations of materials mechanisms. 12. Additional Information. This series of books has under itself internet, basis, site http colon slash slash newiso.ru. Not all the articles that have been written, can be found on the website. Many of them still, have not come out into the light, and, lie in the table, waiting when their author will have enough time and energy to their completion and publication. 13. Thanks to my family and friends. I want to express my deep gratitude to my parents, Lyudmila Mikhailovna Novikovna mom, and Anatoly Maximovich, dad, for love and support now and for the rest of my life. Also express my son Daniel the great love and appreciation for what he is and to other relatives, friends and acquaintances. In particular, to Sergei Niklovic Nikitin, Tamara Nikolaevna Nikotina, Natalia Snetshinskaya, Nadezhda Bortnikova, Elena Shumilova, Vera Ivanovna Kolopetina, Olga Andreevna Portnova, Igor Gilshoff. And now we ask you to take their seats and get more comfortable during our with you traveling to new knowledge. Enjoy your journey. The Part 1 all sides of the Absolute, God, the Creator, the Thinking Substance. 01. The Main Actors of Occultism. Occultism, from Lat. Occultus, a secret, hidden, is a common name for the teachings, which reveal before the people who know how to understand their hidden meaning, the all low down of our world. Unlike normal human science, which focuses only on specific phenomena and processes of reality, Occultism tends to direct human attention primarily on the basis of the universe, to indicate those universal laws and factors that lie at the heart of everything, as existing and hidden. Moreover, exactly underlying factors are recognized as truly incorruptible. It reports as the generalized scheme, which contains information about what is this world, this universe. And transmitted knowledge is often imprinted in symbolic form. It would seem strange, how can in the religion to talk about any faces? After all, the universe, it's not a man. However, as is well known, religions constantly discern and use anthropomorphism in respect of global, philosophical categories. We plunge into symbolism and constantly come before the heavenly persons, men and women, gods and goddesses. That's why we have taken the liberty to claim that God appears before our researcher look is able to be an actor and change its masks. 
main actors, are the hypostases of creator, part of which we all are. Let's look at the basics of occult symbolism. The main goal of our excursus will be to find as many similarities in various esoteric writings and the holy scriptures. Need to identify main groups of synonyms, narrating about the same aspects of the absolute. When the series of definitions relating to one and the same, will be made up, people, studying the esoteric, will be easier to sort out all the abundance of symbolic information, that saturating the esoteric religious treatises, where it is very easy to think. Our universe, our God, it's a brilliant actor, director, screenwriter together. What's his dressing room? And what a scene and scenery. Anyone can verify this by looking in the mirror or around you. And the first role in which the creator acts, is he. Or rather, itself, because the universe, it's not a man. Absolute, God one reality, unparalleled, thinking cosmic substance, these are all synonyms. It is that unimaginable something that fills the space, and, in fact, is itself an intellectual spatial tissue. This is exactly the same Tao, the poetic treatise Lao Tzu, Tao Te Ching, is dedicated to. Moreover, translating into Russian Tao as, the truth, Valerie Perilishin certainly is not wrong. God, this is the only truth to which we are all really strive to and which always eludes from us. Now we barely hinted at the most important characters of the saga of the occultism. There is nothing in the base, but this essence filling the space, which is the space itself. There is nothing but, one of whom about naught may be said. It is eternal, inaccessible, unknowable and indescribable, invisible, inaudible, odorless and tasteless. Buddhism teaches us that Buddha, attained enlightenment, is immersed into nirvana. As you remember, nirvana can't be characterized, using human language, for it does not fit any known definitions. That's why Buddhists have resorted to the only remaining in their possession description method, the method of denial. Denying that, what nirvanic state is not, they thereby give us some idea of what it is, or at least, of what it cannot be. Nirvana, is not this and not that. And the absolute cannot be traced utilizing the available human language definition. There is only the absolute, Parabrah, the one God, etc. And it has two main states, active and inactive. Not active state, is a state of the unmanifestation. Active, is, of course, manifest state. If you will read the esoteric writings and treatises, you will find that about 80% of the information contained therein is given to the nuances and subtleties of the manifest, active, state of God. At the same time, only around 20% of the data are relevant to the absolute in an inactive unmanifested, state. Unmanifested state cosmic substance, is Mahapralaya, that is Great Pralaya. It's the time when the obsolete rest of his work. And, God knows, what about the space thinks, during his periodically upcoming dream. The developmental state of one reality, is Mahamanvantara, that is Great Manvantara. It's the time when God is in the state of active intelligence of its internal capabilities. Parabrah, the one reality, the absolute, is the field of absolute consciousness, that is that essence which is out of all relation to conditioned existence. H.P. Blavatsky, Secret Doctrine, I.P. 15. We can't speculatively spread about the nature of the Absolute, when it is in the unmanifested state. For the simple reason that it is beyond the comprehension of any living being who dwells in the depths of the Creator, and which is its integral part. If Absolute is manifested, we can indirectly judge of what inside him, on those grounds that we can observe in us and around us. Manifestation, Manvantara, gives us a chance to look at it from the side, without extending beyond. We learn to observe the face of cosmic substance by its attire, by its cover. The stumbling block for people plunging into occultism, is the abundance of synonyms. The same aspect of God is often viewed at different angles, 
is called differently. For this reason, the person may have a false sense that the world of religion is crowded with all sorts of beings, each of which lives its own life, has its own sphere of influence and its own functions. We assure you, this is nothing more than a false belief. Actually the main actors rather can be counted on one hand. Three main aspects, matter, spirit, soul, or otherwise, mother, father, son, are the three hypostases of God, three looks at him. This trinity under different names we find in all the major world religions. It presents in Hinduism and Kabbalah, of the Egyptians and the ancient Greeks, in Buddhism, Christianity, Islam and Zoroastrianism. It does not matter what names we assign to persons of the triad. The main thing, is to understand the general scheme of the mechanism of manifestation and the nuances of relationships between the members of this, divine family. No coincidence thinkers of ancient peoples considered the features manifestations of the absolute under such very human perspective. The idea of fusion to aspects with the aim to birth a third, of course, is somewhat similar human life. Matter, is the first aspect of absolute. In the state of manifestation, this is the first aspect of absolute. And in the unmanifestation, is the absolute. Reasonable, initial essence, devoid of the spirit, the male principle, and soul, of the union of women's and men's. Virgin Mary, Mare, Deva Matri, Svabhavart. In reality, there is only the thinking substance, substance principle, which has no the second. Exactly it is the basis of total, always. We can assign any number of names and give in our thoughts any traits and sexual identity, but, nevertheless, with these substances, at the same time all of these and none of these. The main characters are three, but only one of them always exists as in manifestation, and without it, it's the matter mother. The other two, spirit and soul, present only when the absolute, awake. Their birth is just marking the beginning of the new day of God. When absolute manifests itself, it becomes visible and hidden before this idea, the spirit is born. Spirit, is a manifestation of the creator's mind. Spirit, is a characteristic feature of matter in the developmental state, its distinguishing feature, it's the second aspect of the absolute. The matter, is a spatial tissue, and the spirit, is the ability of this tissue to think, realize, bring forth ideas. The spirit, is the changed state of matter. It's something like vibration, water hole on the surface of the matter. We can try to find other words to describe this kind of condition, but you should be aware in fact, that any of them does not characterize the spirit correctly, and genuinely the spirit is not this. It's just images, allegories. The spirit, the male principle, arising out from the women's, from the matter, it's her firstborn son. The creator, is the one God, which was chaos and darkness, when it was unmanifested. The scientific name for the power center, for the soul, is an elementary particle. You can also use the word atom. However, it's not the atom of physicists or chemist, which is a conglomeration of particles, namely, the truly indivisible object. The soul in which emerges the spirit, is the dragon of wisdom, or serpent biting its own tail. The last expression very accurately describes the process that takes place in each separate particle. Another name for the serpent, Kundalini which translates from Sanskrit as, folded ring, curled up in the form of snake. Kundalini, it is the same serpent, devouring itself. Dragon of wisdom, the serpent, Kundalini, it's all the soul. Another very commonly used name for the elementary structural units, is fire. Spirit manifested in matter, is fire. While the matter, substance, in the unmanifested state, is water. Another synonym for the elementary particle, is a, wheel. The spirit manifested in matter that is in occultism a, movement, or otherwise breath, any wheel, that is any elementary particle, it is the spirit that moves not in space but in time, born, 
for some time existing in this phenomenal world and then collapsing. This is the rotating serpent. It comes from the source, from the silent witness, as in the stanzas of Zion the matter is, make the circle through time, and then, go back, to the original source that emitted, back to the matter. O2. The act of creation, short version. The first aspect of creator, the matter, is the primal substance, the virgin mother virgin Mary, Mare, Isis, Eve. It produces in itself and from itself the second aspect, father, spirit, light, mind, thought, fire, Mahat, Buddhi, Christ, Buddha, Osiris, energy, power, Thermogen, Fohat, Prussia, Ether, Astral Light. The list of synonyms is long enough. The spirit in the matter is not in the passive state. She gives birth to him. And then he becomes her son brother husband. She, shall come, with him in the union, and together they form all manifested universe. The universe consists of souls, elementary particles. Mother and father, water and fire manifest together in the building blocks, seven principles, are high, seven rishis, seven brothers, seven sons, seven sephiroth, who are seven main types existing in the universe elementary particles. They should also be called monads, atoms. Other names for them, wheels, circles, kundalini, chakras, snakes, biting their own tails, dragons of wisdom, bindu. The word wheel very accurately reflects the mechanism of manifestation. The spirit rotates in the matter, through time, is born and disappears. This is a wheel, a soul, a whirlwind, a spirum a power center. The soul, is the spirit rolling in the matter. And the spirit, is an altered state of matter, a sort of ripple, vibrations, although, of course, it's not a ripple or vibration. The spirit, is the voice, the logos, the word, the breath, the movement. Shiva, Brahma Vishnu, is the Hindu Trimurti. Shiva, is the mother, Brahma, is the father, the spirit and Vishnu, is the soul. O3. The matter is the first aspect of the absolute, the thinking substance. The matter, is the first aspect of the absolute, the first side of the cosmic substance, which is revealed to us as we try to understand its nature. The matter, is an indication of the material reality of God, that the space is not empty. Often in occultism we equate the matter to the absolute, only the matter is always present and in whatever state of the Creator, and unmanifested, and manifested, and lies at the center of everything. In the religious treatises unmanifested absolute is often identified with the mother and is presented as the virgin mother, virgin egg. The feminine origin deprived of the masculine. The eternal parent trapped in her ever invisible robes, had slumbered once again for seven eternities. E. Blavitsky, Secret Doctrine 1, Book Zion, Stanza 1.1. The matter, the spirit and the soul merge into a whole one at each point of the manifested absolute. They are the faces of the Creator, its aspects. Three aspects of the absolute, these are three of its faces, the three parties with which we can look at each of its points. The matter, is itself spatial tissue. The spirit, it is an idea that arises in this tissue. And the soul, this is the sphere in which the spirit appears and disappears. The word Tao, this is another name for the space. Valerie Perlishin translated the word Tao as truth. There was something vague in the distance, I rose before heaven and earth, it is inaudible and cannot see, by this are full of all things forever. It's, the beginning of heaven and earth. Two. 113. The universe emerged from it, and there the mother of life lies. Who is this mother in the dark will find, will know with her and her children. And who at first will understand her kids, immediacy and the mother will, and she is immortal and full of itself. 3. 55. I would not know the name for it, but I named her by the truth. Is it easy to describe its nature? great, movable and alive, 
cognition of is not available, and is easily lost. 4, 56. So great is only the truth and the sky. Tao is called the truth. It's the synonym of the absolute, the one reality. The truth, is matter, the mother of being, mother in the darkness, matter, darkness. There is, an omnipresent, eternal, boundless and immutable principle, on which all speculation is impossible, since it transcends the power of human conception and could only be dwarfed by any human expression or similitude. It is beyond the range and reach of thought in the words of Mandukya, unthinkable and unspeakable. HPB, The Secret Doctrine, Volume 1, Page 14. Darkness, Water, Chaos the one reality, primordial depth mele prakriti rootless root, the virgin mother, the substance principle, svabhavat, eu, kali hamsa, water of life, absolute, space, truth, primordial mother giving birth, limitless all, eternal not being, limitless circle, zero, world womb, virgin egg, einsof, gaia, devamatri, world root, not number, that's not all the determinations that there are, only a certain percentage of them. The absolute in the unmanifested state is characterized by the fact that the matter and the spirit in it exist as a single whole. It is the one matter spirit. The intelligent plastic substance principle exists as Svabhava, independent, per se. That central reality can be called by any name that man may choose according to his mental or emotional bent, racial tradition and heritage, for it cannot be defined or conditioned by names. Human beings perforce always use names in order to express that which they sense, feel and know, both of the phenomenal and also of the intangible. Alice Bailey, The Reappearance of the Christ, Chapter 6. Mayor, giving the birth to the Buddha and Mary, the mother of Jesus Christ, are the symbolic representation of the matter the first hypostasis of God. And the Buddha and Christ can be seen as images of soul, son. Father of soul, of son, the spirit. Another name of Mea, is an illusion. Ancient Egyptian Isis, the sister and wife of Osiris, it is also a symbol of the matter. Substance got married to her brother, the spirit, the god Osiris. Gore, the child of Isis and Osiris, is the soul. Ancient Greek Rhea, wife and sister of Kronos, is an expression for the matter too. Kronos and Rhea, are the Titans, the children of Uranus and Gaia. Gaia and Uranus, earth and sky, are the matter and spirit, taken outside the manifested state. While Kronos and Rhea, it's all the same, the matter and the spirit involved in the process of formation of the universe and the, birth of the Olympian gods. Olympus in this case symbolizes all our universe, entire world around us. Olympian gods, are the building principles. Any god of time, such as, Zero Anna Arken, is the spirit that uses matter as a basis for manifesting. Kronos as a symbol of the spirit devours its children born of Rhea. On the destruction of impulse manifestation occurring after his birth the mechanical functioning of every building block of the universe based on this. In Hinduism we see with such concepts as Prakriti and Prasha. It's all the same matter and spirit, serving by reason for the appearance in the original substance the visibility, that is the soul. Fiery fish of life, is also matter, fertilized with the spirit. So say the ancient comments on stands Aiv. Mother is the fiery fish of life. It spawns and breath, motion, heats and develops it. Grain, caviar, soon attracted to each other, forming clots in the ocean, space, the secret doctrine, volume 1, H. P. Blavatsky. Breath, movement, in this quote symbolizes the spirit, the father, the second aspect of the creator. Grains, caviar, clots are souls, elementary particles. You can find still many synonyms for mother, where the spirit manifests the spirit, and which together generate the soul, is the third hypostasis of God. To render these ideas clearer to the general reader, 
let him set out with the postulate that there is one absolute reality which antecedes all manifested, conditioned, being. This infinite and eternal cause dimly formulated in the, unconscious, and, unknowable, of current European philosophy is the rootless root of, all that was, is, or ever shall be. It is of course devoid of all attributes and is essentially without any relation to. It is, beingness rather than being, in Sanskrit, sat, and is beyond all thought or speculation, the secret doctrine, volume 1, comma, proem, h. p. Blavatsky. This is, absolute abstract space, representing bare subjectivity, the one thing which no human mind can either exclude from any conception, or conceive of by itself, the secret doctrine, volume 1, proem. H. P. Blavitsky. In spite of the fact that in occultism is often made a distinction between the creator in passive and active states, yet it is the same creator, the one and the same universal creative substance endowed with the mind. When this substance is actively manifested, we judge about presence in it the thought precisely on this indirect cause, by arising a changed state of matter, which in occultism is the spirit and the soul. At the same time, we do not recognize and can't say anything about the Absolute, which is creatively not active. But, nevertheless, there is no exist the different creators, realities, there are only different in their conditions. We should remember always. The matter identified with that primordial depth, original chaos, with water and darkness, from which was born the light, soul, energy. It's the matter without of the manifested in her spirit, ideation of the universe, that forms souls is all the same. Unconscious. And. Unknown. Ever reason. Of which we talk when speak about unmanifested space. The birth of this universe which appears as a result of merging matter and spirit is a union of water and fire. Where the water is the origin basis by itself, that is matter. And the fire is soul the summary of manifestation the spirit in the matter. The substance in the unmanifested state, this is the well known for us the virgin matter, the virgin Mary. The matter gave birth to the husband in herself, who is the first son at the same time. The spirit, thought image of the universe. The absolute in unmanifested state, this is the matter, but more accurately the mother father. The eternal parent trapped in her ever invisible robes, Stanza 1, it's merely prakriti, root matter, if to translate from Sanskrit. Parabra, the one reality, the absolute, is the field of absolute consciousness, that is that essence which is out of all relation to conditioned existence, and of which conscious. Existence is a conditioned symbol. But once that we pass in thought from this, to us, absolute negation, duality supervenes in the contrast of spirit or consciousness, and matter, subject and object? E. P. Blavitsky, The Secret Doctrine, 1, Proem. Spirit, or consciousness, and matter are, however, to be regarded, not as independent realities, but as the two facets or aspects of the Absolute, Parabra, which constitute the basis of conditioned being whether subjective or objective. E. P. Blavitsky the secret doctrine, 1, proem. The prefix para in Sanskrit means a reference to something that is outside of something beyond this. Brahman, in turn, is a synonym for ideation, spirit, mind, which is a characteristic feature of substance of matter. That is, as you can see, in this case, parabra, is in some way a reference to the second aspect of the creator, on its reasonableness. This means that for one reality, even in its passive state, has two characteristics, materiality, matter, and the ability to think, spirit. Alpha and Omega, the secret doctrine, one, proem. Spirit, or consciousness, and matter are, however, to be regarded, not as independent realities, but as the two facets or aspects of the absolute, parabra which constitute the basis of conditioned being whether subjective or objective. The Secret Doctrine, 1, Proem. Parabrahm is not, God, 
because it is not a god. Dot. It is supreme as cause, not supreme as effect. Parabrahm is simply, as a, secondless reality, the all-inclusive cosmos or, rather, the infinite cosmic space in the highest spiritual sense, of course. The Secret Doctrine, 1, Proem. Darkness alone filled the boundless all? Stanza 1.5. Both these phrases are definitions synonyms. Eternal non-being. The one being. Stanza 1.7. Alone, the one form of existence stretched boundless, infinite, causeless, in dreamless sleep. Stanza 1.8. In this quote, and in the next it indicates on the universe in unmanifested, inactive, state. Darkness alone was father mother, Svabvat, and Svabvat was in darkness. Stanza 2.5. The divine thought and the divine bosom. Stanza 2.6. The spirit, is the divine thought, and the matter, is the divine bosom. The waters? The mother deep. Stanza 3.3. The eternal, ever-present cause of all? The secret doctrine, 1, comment for the stanza 1.1. Space is the one eternal thing that we can most easily imagine. Immovable in its abstraction and uninfluenced by either the presence or absence in it of an objective universe. It is without dimension, in every sense, and self-existent. The secret doctrine, 1. Comment for the stanza 1.1. Mele propriety, the root principle, the primordial substance, which is the basis of the apadi or vehicle of every possible phenomenon, whether physical, mental and spiritual. It is the source from which Akasha radiates, the secret doctrine, 1, comment for the stanza 1.1. Non-being, hence which is absolute being, existence, the secret doctrine, 1, comment for the stanza 1.4. Nothing is permanent except the one hidden absolute existence which contains in itself the noumena of all realities. The secret doctrine, 1, comment for the stanza 1.4. Karana, eternal cause, the secret doctrine, 1, comment for the stanza 1.5. Paranishpa, is the absolute perfection to which all existences attain at the close of a great period of activity, or Mahamanvantara, and in which they rest during the succeeding period of repose. The Secret Doctrine, 1, comment for the stanza 1.6. Paranishpana, is at the same time direction to the state in which there is the unmanifested substance. But this concept can be considered as direction on the inwardness of that we name the one non-ego, voidness, and darkness. The Secret Doctrine, 1, comment for the stanza 1.7. The visible that was, and the invisible that is, rested in eternal non-being. The one being. Stanza 1.7. Prabhavipyaya. The place whence is the origination, and into which is the resolution of all things. The Secret Doctrine, 1, Comment for the stanza 1.8. Abstract, the self-existent plastic essence and the root of all things? The secret doctrine, 1. Comment for the stanza 1.8. Paramatha. The secret doctrine, 1. Comment for the stanza 1.9. Ian is rendered, father mother of the gods, in the commentaries, or the six in one, or the septenary root from which all proceeds. The Secret Doctrine, 1, comment for the stanza 3.5. Eo is the, rootless root of all, hence, one with Parabrahman. The Secret Doctrine, 1, comment for the stanza 3.5. The root of life stanza 3.6. Chaos. The depths of the great dark waters? Stanza 3.7. The boundless circle, 0? The Secret Doctrine, 1, comment for the stanza 4.5. The Unknown One, the Infinite Totality. The Secret Doctrine, 1, comment for the stanza 5.2. No Form, the Root of the World, the Devmatrian des VBH Vat, rested in the bliss of non-being. Stanza 2.1.
the waters of life, or chaos. The female principle in symbolism, are the vacuum? Virgin Egg Stanza 3.3. Virgin Mother, the Secret Doctrine, 1, Comment for the Stanza 3.4. The Immaculate Root. The Secret Doctrine, 1, Comment for the Stanza 3.4. Virgin Female Principle. The Secret Doctrine, 1, Comment for the Stanza 3.4. The Mundane Egg. The Secret Doctrine, 1, Comment for the Stanza 3.4. Cosmic Matter. The Secret Doctrine, 1, Comment for the Stanza 3.4. Space Filled with Darkness. The Secret Doctrine, 1, Comment for the Stanza 3.7. Kalhamsa. Black Swan. The Secret Doctrine, 1, Comment for the Stanza 3.8. The Symbol of the Matter merged with the spirit, but unmanifested. Kala, means, black, hamza, is, swan. The swan is the symbol of matter, darkness, kala. The womb of the world? The secret doctrine, one, comment for the stanza 3.8. The unknown darkness? The secret doctrine, one, comment for the stanza 3.10. Swavavat, the Secret Doctrine, 1, Comment for the Stanza 4.5. The Darkness, Infinity, or Not a Number, Adinida. The Secret Doctrine, 1, Comment for the Stanza 4.5. The Unknown One, The Infinite Totality. The Secret Doctrine, 1, Comment for the Stanza 5.2. Teehee Circle of Infinity. The Secret Doctrine, 1, Comment for the stanza 5.2. Ein Sof, Hebrew, the eternal state of being, incomprehensible principle, supreme deity, the absolute. It's possible to open it only through the process of eliminating all its perceived attributes in a specific order. Being undetectable absolute pervades all space. Abstract to the point of incomprehensibility, Ein Sof is the unlimited state of all things. The substances essence and minds appear from the elusive iron sof, but the absolute is devoid of substantiality, the nature and reasonableness. Kabbalists call it the oldest of the oldest and always viewed asexual. The round, the true emblem of eternity symbolizes the nature of iron sof. Synonyms, in sof, iron sof, c, http colon slash slash www.ezozo.true. Gaia, Earth, is the ancient Greek goddess, wife of Uranus, who before becoming his wife, has created her future husband. And this is a direct indication to the procreation by the first aspect, by the matter, of the second, the spirit, and after they had connected and formed all that is in this universe. O4. Oh, spirit, Father, Light, Fire, 1001st, Logos, Thought. Christ, Osiris, Buddha, Energy, Ether, Akasha, Impulse, Fohat. And now, when we take a little acquainted with the first aspect of the God Absolute Matter, let's proceed to its second aspect, to the Spirit. In previous, introductory articles we yet quite enough told about the nature of the Spirit, and about what is this hypostasis. So here we in general need to repeat. And also we will make a list of synonym esoteric phrases related just to the second aspect of the creative substance. Here we turn again to the treatise of Lao Tzu. Tao teaching? To remember that? Truth. Tao, it's the matter. The matter? Gives birth to one? To the spirit. Two have appeared from one? Consisting of every elementary particle course to opposite directed process the birth of the spirit and its disappearance. Birth of the spirit, it's a spiritual origin, yin, rama, rajas. Disappearance of the spirit, it's a material origin, yin, shiva, dharmas. From two are formed the three? Two origins, spiritual and material, are merged and consist of every particle which is the third principle, sattva, vishnu, soul, the union of matter and spirit. And now let's speak about the spirit. The spirit, 
is the second aspect of the absolute. An aspect, is the view on some object, phenomenon. The spirit, it's a perturbation in the space, with some special way changing it. What is the perturbation and how it happens, for us it's a secret. The spirit, it's information nascent in elementary particles and dying in them. The spirit from the point of view of occultism it's the first born son of the virgin mother, the matter which then becomes her husband. And together they spawn the third aspect, all multitude of the universe forms. But actually in the spirit and the soul, are just another state of the intellectual substance, inside of which we inhabit. The spirit, it's a temporary creation consisting of the matter. The soul is more precisely the souls which are its continuation and concrete manifestation, also temporary. And the spirit and the soul are temporary as opposite to the constant space where they manifest. It's first. And second. The chain of changing which we name the time is inherent exactly to the spirit and the soul. The soul, it's the same spirit enclosed in a sphere. In every soul is taking place the rotation of the spirit through the time. All this said and repeat with the purpose to tell you that any god of time in literature is nothing but the symbol of time and personification of spirit and soul, in constant principle of the universe. In the stanzas of the book Zion is said. The ray shoots through the virgin egg, the ray causes the eternal egg to thrill, and drop the non-eternal germ, which condenses into the world egg. Stanza 3.3. The ray, it's the ray of light, and light as is known the synonym of the spirit. The non-eternal germ. It's the totality of elementary particles, souls. The word non-eternal? indicates on the inconstancy of existence the manifested universe. In the stanzas the definition, eternal non-being, is used for the substance itself. Here also leave that the time. From the occult point of view it's the symbol of spirit and soul. Any soul, chakra, particle, it's a circle, round, ring of time. And now let's go to the list of synonym occult and spiritual definitions with the help of which the thinkers and meditative visionaries of different times and nations characterized and named the second hypostasis of the Creator. In the given quotes these definitions will use bold italic. Universal mind was not, for there were no ahai to contain it. Stanza 1.3. We have begun from the universal mind. This is one of the definitions for the second hypostasis of God, the Spirit. Ahai. These are elementary particles, souls. As we will say in the next articles, the spirit saturates elementary particles, can say that they contain him. Her heart had not yet opened for the one ray to enter? Stanza 2.4. The one ray, it's one of the synonyms of the spirit. The universe was still concealed in the divine thought and the divine bosom. Stanza 2.6. The divine thought and the divine bosom, are the symbols of the spirit and the matter, male and female principles. Darkness radiates light, and light drops one solitary ray into the waters, into the mother deep. The ray shoots through the virgin egg, the ray causes the eternal egg to thrill, and drop the non-eternal germ, which condenses into the world egg. Stanza 3.3 we have just spoken about what the light and what the ray. The root of life was in every drop of the ocean of immortality, and the ocean was radiant light, which was fire, and heat, and motion. Stanza 3.6. The ocean of immortality, the radiant light, fire, heat and motion, these are all the synonyms of the spirit. Is used the definition? The ocean of immortality? Probably because the spirit is like the phoenix constantly restores in every soul. Light is cold flame, and flame is fire, and fire produces heat, which yields water the water of life in the great mother. Stanza 3.9. The water, is the symbol of the matter, female origin. But the phrase? The water of life. It's just the definition of the spirit, male origin. Thence vab vat send for hat to harden the atoms. Each is a part of the web. 
stanza 3.12. Fohat, it's the synonym of the spirit, the father. Fohat, it's the spirit that flows through the atoms, souls. It fills the atoms and by this way makes them to each other. Dot 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 who are born from the primordial flame? Stanza 4.2. The primordial flame, it's one more synonym for the second aspect. From the effulgence of light, the ray of the ever darkness? Stanza 4.3. The ray of light, the spirit, is born from the darkness, that is from the mother, matter. The army of the voice, the divine mother of the seven? Stanza 4.4. Curiously that in this case the voice, also known as the spirit, we call it with the female name, the divine mother. The Edison art, the number, for he is one. Stanza 4.5. In the occult texts the matter has their name, non-number, while the spirit, the number or the one. As the spirit, this is the first differentiation of matter and spirit by itself does not form shapes, particles it just fills them. The spirit is called the one element, the fifth element, as it is everywhere in the universe. Dot 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 the one, the eight left out, and his breath which is the light maker, stands a 4.5. The eighth son, this is the firstborn of the mother matter, her husband son brother, that is, the father. In fact, breathing is not of the father, and mother is the spirit, the father, the light. They make of him the messenger of their will. That Zayu becomes Fahat, the swift son of the divine sons, whose sons are the Lipica, runs circular errands. Fohat is the steed, and the thought is the rider. He passes like lightning through the fiery clouds, stands a 5.2. In fact, Fohat and thought, this is the same. The difference between them is only in that the thought, is the spirit in a general sense while Fohat, is the spirit is rotating in a spiral vortex, in time in the atoms, Lipicas. The divine sons, these are Lipicas, souls. He lifts his voice, and calls the innumerable sparks, and joins them together. He is their guiding spirit and leader. Stanzas 5.2, 5.3. We are again of the spirit. 1. By the power of the mother of mercy and knowledge, Quan Yin, the triple of Quan, Shai Yin, residing in Quan, Yin Xing, Fo Hat, the breath of their progeny, the son of the sons, having called forth, from the lower abyss, the elusive form of Sin Chin and the seven elements. 2. The swift and the radiant one produces the seven lacenters, against which none will prevail to the great day, be with us and seats the universe on these eternal foundations, surrounding Sinjin with the elementary germs. Stanza 6.1. When the one becomes two, stanza 7.3. The one, is the absolute in the unmanifested state, the matter, devoid of any signs of differentiation. The one becomes two, means that the matter has generated second principle, spirit. The spark hangs from the flame by the finest thread of Fahat, stanza 7.5. Here we are talking about the mechanism of creation, which resulted in the manifestation of the spirit and matter. The spark, is an elementary particle, the soul. The flame, it is the spirit. The finest thread of Fahat, is the same as the Antakarana, or ray of light. This is the flow of the spirit, of ether, moving through the sparks the elementary particles. From the first born the thread between the silent watcher and his shadow becomes more strong and radiant with every change. The morning sunlight has changed into noonday glory. Stanza 7.6. In this quotation is about the same as in the previous one, of the mechanism of manifestation. First born, the father, the spirit. The silent watcher, is the substance, the matter, his shadow, its soul, elementary particle. The thread from the firstborn, it's the same thing as the thread of Fahat. We list a number of synonyms for all the major of the second person of the Trinity, for the spirit, the father that we may find in the study of the occult, religious and scientific literature. Spirit, father, male principle, 
firstborn son, eighth son, yang, divine thought, universal mind, nous, absolute, perpetual motion, absolute consciousness, great breath, breath of life, central spiritual sun, brusha, nefesh, water of life, ocean of immortality, logos, verb, word, number, zero ana arkan, brahma, avalakaichvara, mahat, zayu, adisan art, sanat kimara, david prakriti, iswara, god, osiris, adam, christ, buddha, jehovah, yahweh, sawar of, elohim, tetragrammaton, uranus, cronus, guan Yin, the ancient of days, the fifth element, one element, holy spirit, fohat, lucifer, the dragon of wisdom, the kundalini serpent, ocean, sea, of milk, fire, light, heat, electricity, force, energy, impulse, kinetic energy, thermogen, electromagnetic field, information field, force field, ether, akasha, the astral light, pratil, apayan, arka, brana, kai, kai, food of the gods, spirit, the second aspect in the process of manifestation forms a ring, a circle, chakra, wheel, in every elementary particle, each soul, and jayas. But not in space and in time, is born, disappears, is born, disappears. When are talking about the spirit, rotating in the particles, for it often uses other definitions, rather than when they talk about it in a general sense. For example, Fohat, this is the spirit, rotating and making hard the atoms, that is the souls. Serpent, dragon, kundalini, ray of light, rope of angel, s antakarana, bridge, linking the spirit with the soul, arcan of spirit, sutrima, the thread of life, the thread of fahat, the thread of the firstborn, it's all the definitions for the same spirit, but in a particular way, considered in relation to individual elementary particle. Dot, 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 the breath which is eternal. It proceeds from without inwardly, when it is everywhere, and from within outwardly, when it is nowhere that is mere, one of the centers. It expands and contracts, exhalation and inhalation. Catechism of the Occult, taken from the Secret Doctrine, by H. P. Blavatsky. Dot, 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 absolute abstract motion representing unconditioned consciousness. Even our Western thinkers have shown that consciousness is inconceivable to us apart from change, and motion best symbolizes change, its essential characteristic. This latter aspect of the one reality, is also symbolized by the term, the great breath, a symbol sufficiently graphic to need no further elucidation. The Secret Doctrine? By H. P. Blavatsky, Prologue. This something, at present unknown to Western speculation, is called by the occultists for hat. It is the bridge by which the ideas existing in their divine thought are impressed on cosmic substance as the laws of nature. For hat is thus the dynamic energy of cosmic ideation, or, regarded from the other side, it is the intelligent medium, the guiding power of all manifestation, the thought divine, transmitted and made manifest through the dianchons, the architects of the visible world. Thus from spirit, or cosmic ideation, comes our consciousness, from cosmic substance the several vehicles in which that consciousness is individualized and attains to self, or reflective, consciousness, while for hat, in its various manifestations, is the mysterious link between mind and matter, the animating principle electrifying every atom into life. Secret Doctrine? Blavatsky, Prologue. Spirit is the first differentiation from T hat, the causeless cause of both spirit and matter. The Secret Doctrine, 1, Commentary on Stanza 1.1. The Universal Mind, The Secret Doctrine, 1, Commentary on Stanza 1.3. The Great Breath, The Secret Doctrine, 1, Commentary on Stanza 1.6. Now's The Secret Doctrine, 1. Commentary on Stanza 1.9. Absolute Consciousness. Behind Phenomena, The Secret Doctrine, 1. Commentary on Stanza 1.9. Archas or, Father Ether.
the manifested basis and source of the innumerable phenomena of life. The Secret Doctrine, 1, Commentary on Stanza 1.9. Self-Analyzing Consciousness, Svasam Vidana. The Secret Doctrine, 1, Commentary on Stanza 2.1. The breath of the one existence is used in its application only to the spiritual aspect of cosmogony by archaic esotericism, otherwise, it is replaced by its equivalent in the material plane, motion. The one eternal element, or element containing vehicle, is space, dimensionless in every sense, coexistent with which are, endless duration, primordial, hence indestructible, matter, and motion, absolute, perpetual motion which is the breath of the one element. The Secret Doctrine, 1, Commentary on Stanza 2.2. Water is the mother, and fire is the father? The Secret Doctrine, 1, Commentary on Stanza 2.3. The male element in nature, personified by the male deities and Logoi, Viraj, or Brahma, Horus, or Osiris, etc. etc. is born through, not from an immaculate source, personified by the mother, because that male having a mother cannot have a father? The Secret Doctrine, 1, Commentary on Stanza 2.4. The son of the immaculate celestial virgin, or the undifferentiated cosmic protile, matter in its infinitude? The Secret Doctrine, 1, Commentary on Stanza 2.4. Dot, 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 the Astral Light the great deceiver of man's limited senses? The Secret Doctrine, 1, Commentary on Stanza 2.4. The idea of the breath of darkness moving over, the slumbering waters of life, which is primordial matter with the latent spirit in it, recalls the first chapter of Genesis. The Secret Doctrine, 1, Commentary on Stanza 3.2. The solitary ray dropping into the mother deep may be taken as meaning divine thought or intelligence, impregnating chaos. The Secret Doctrine, 1, Commentary on Stanza 3.3. Sea of Milk. Ocean of Milk, The Secret Doctrine, 1 Comment Stanza 3.4. The fire, heat, and motion here spoken of, are, of course, not the fire, heat and motion of physical science? The Secret Doctrine, 1 Comment Stanza 3.6. In our opinion, the fire and the heat of physical science, this is fire and heat of the occult, that is the second aspect of God. Even in the mind-baffling and science-harassing Genesis, light is created out of darkness and darkness was upon the face of the deep, ch. i. v. 2 and not vice versa. In him, in darkness, was life, and the life was the light of men, John I. 4. A day may come when the eyes of men will be opened, and then they may comprehend better than they do now, that verse in the Gospel of John that says, And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehendeth it not. They will see then that the word darkness does not apply to man's spiritual eyesight, but indeed to, darkness, the absolute, that comprehendeth not, cannot cognize, transient light, however transcendent to human eyes. Demonis Deus Inversus. The devil is now called darkness by the church, whereas, in the Bible he is called the Son of God, see Job, the bright star of the early morning, Lucifer, see Isaiah. There is a whole philosophy of dogmatic craft in the reason why the first archangel, who sprang from the depths of chaos, was called Lux, Lucifer, the luminous sun of the morning, or man Vantaric dawn. He was transformed by the church into Lucifer or Satan, because he is higher and older than Jehovah, and had to be sacrificed to the new dogma. See Boogie? The Secret Doctrine, 1, Commentary on Stanza 3.6. Quan Chayin is identical with, and an equivalent of the Sanskrit Aval Kichwara, and as such he is an androgynous deity, like the Tetragrammaton and all the Logoi of antiquity. It is only by some sects in China that he is anthropomorphized and represented with female attributes, when, under his female aspect, he becomes Quan Yin, the goddess of mercy, 
called the Divine Voice. The Secret Doctrine, 1 Comment Stanza 3.7. The Dragon of Wisdom is the one, the Ka, Sanskrit, or Saka. It is curious that Jehovah's name in Hebrew should also be one, Echod. His name is Echod, say the Rens. The philologists ought to decide which of the two is derived from the other linguistically and symbolically, surely, not the Sanskrit? The one and the dragon are expressions used by the ancients in connection with their respective logoi. Jehovah, esoterically, as Elohim, is also the serpent or dragon that tempted Eve, and the dragon is an old glyph for, astral light, primordial principle, which is the wisdom of chaos. The Secret Doctrine, 1, Commentary on Stanza 3.7. The primitive symbol of the serpent symbolized divine wisdom and perfection, and had always stood for psychical regeneration and immortality. Hence, Hermes, calling the serpent the most spiritual of all beings, Moses, initiated in the wisdom of Hermes, following suit in Genesis, the Gnostic's serpent with the seven vowels over its head being the emblem of the seven hierarchies of the septenary or planetary creators. Hence, also, the Hindu serpent Sesha or Ananta, the infinite, an aim of Vishnu, whose first vahan or vehicle on the primordial waters is this serpent. Like the log oil and the hierarchies of powers, however, the serpents have to be distinguished one from the other. Sesha or Ananta, the couch of Vishnu, is an allegorical abstraction symbolizing infinite time in space, which contains the germ and throws off periodically the efflorescence of this germ, the manifested universe, whereas, the Gnostic of it contains the same triple symbolism in its seven vowels as the one, three and seven syllable deal of the archaic doctrine, that is the one unmanifested logos, the second manifested, the triangle concreting into the quaternary or tetragrammaton and the rays of the latter on the material plane. The Secret Doctrine, 1, Commentary on Stanza 3.7. In the book of Hermes by Mandaroldist and most spiritual of the Logoi of the Western Continent, appears to Hermes in the form of the fire dragon of, light, fire and flame. By Manda, personified, divine thought, says, the light, it is I, I am the Naus, mind or Manu. I am a god, I'm a lot older than the human element coming from the shadows, darkness, or in the deity, I am the germ of thought, resplendent word, the son of God. All that because he sees and hears in you, there is a verb teaches. It, thought, my heart, which is God the Father. Heavenly ocean, ether, is the breath of the Father, the life-giving home, mother, the Holy Spirit for they are inseparable and their fusion is the life, the secret doctrine, 1, taken from the commentary on stanza 3.7. Fire is there in its purest form, and hence is not regarded as matter, but it is the unity of the, the second manifested deity, in its universality. The secret doctrine, 1 comment stanza 4.1. The central, spiritual son, the secret doctrine, 1, Commentary on stanza 4.1. When the son separates from the mother he becomes the father. The secret doctrine, 1, commentary on stanza 4.3. The army of the voice, is a term closely connected with the mystery of sound and speech, as an effect and corollary of the cause, divine thought. The secret doctrine, 1, commentary on stanza 4.4. The army of the voice, is the prototype of the, host of the Logos, or the word of the Sefer Jezirah, called in the secret doctrine, the one number issued from no number, the one eternal principle. The secret doctrine, 1, commentary on stanza 4.4. Fohat is closely related to the, one life. From the unknown one, the infinite totality, the manifested one, or the periodical, manventaric deity, emanates, and this is the universal mind, which, separated from its fountain source, is the demiogos or the creative logos of the Western Kabbalists. The Secret Doctrine, 1, Commentary on Stanza 5.2. Fohat, then, 
is the personified electric vital power, the transcendental binding unity of all cosmic energies, on the unseen as on the manifested planes, the action of which resembles on an immense scale, that of a living force created by will, in those phenomena where the seemingly subjective acts on the seemingly objective and propels it to action. For hat is not only the living symbol and container of that force, but is looked upon by the occultists as an entity, the forces he acts upon being cosmic, human and terrestrial, and exercising their influence on all those planes respectively. On the earthly plane his influence is felt in the magnetic and active force generated by the strong desire of the magnetizer. On the cosmic, it is present in the constructive power that carries out, in the formation of things, from the planetary system down to the glow worm and simple daisy, the plan in the mind of nature, or in the divine thought, with regard to the development and growth of that special thing. He is, metaphysically, the objectivized thought of the gods, the word made flesh, on a lower scale, and the messenger of cosmic and human ideations, the active force in universal life. In his secondary aspect, Fohat is the solar energy, the electric vital fluid, and the preserving fourth principle, the animal soul of nature, so to say, or electricity. The Secret Doctrine, 1, Commentary on Stanza 5.2 force, energy, may be a better name for it. The secret doctrine, one comment stands a 5.2. The zero anachron is also the, boundless circle of the unknown time, from which circle issues the radiant light, the universal sun, or Ormotsd, comma, and the latter is identical with Kronos, in his Olean form, that of a circle. The secret doctrine, one, commentary on stands a 5.2. A bright star dropped from the heart of eternity, the beacon of hope on whose seven rays hang the seven worlds of being. The Secret Doctrine, 1, Commentary on Stanza 5.4. Fire, it says, is the most perfect and unadulterated reflection, in heaven as on earth, of the one flame. It is life and death, the origin and the end of every material thing. It is divine substance. The Secret Doctrine, 1, taken from the commentary to stanza 5.4. Dot, 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 the personal ego and the impersonal self, the new men and parent source The Secret Doctrine, 1, commentary on stanza 5.6. Dot, 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 in occult metaphysics there are, properly speaking, two ones, the one on the unreachable plane of absoluteness and infinity, on which no speculation is possible and the second one on the plane of emanations. The former can neither emanate nor be divided, as it is eternal, absolute, and immutable. The second, being, so to speak, the reflection of the first one, for it is the Logos, or Iswara, in the universe of illusion. The secret doctrine, one comment stands a 5.6. As well said in the Bhagavadgita lectures, the whole cosmos must necessarily exist in the one source of energy from which this light, Fohat, emanates. Whether we count the principles in cosmos and man as seven or only as four, the forces of, and in, physical nature are seven, and it is stated by the same authority that, Pragna, or the capacity of perception, exists in seven different aspects corresponding to the seven conditions of matter, personal and impersonal God. For, just as a human being is composed of seven principles, differentiated matter in the solar system exists in seven different conditions, it bid. So does Fahat. He is one and seven, and on the cosmic plane is behind all such manifestations as light, heat, sound, adhesion, etc. etc. and is the spirit of electricity, which is the air life of the universe. As an abstraction. We call it the only air life, as an objective and evident reality, we speak of a septenary scale of manifestation, which begins at the upper rung with the one unknowable causality, and ends as omnipresent mind and life immanent in every atom of matter. Thus, while science speaks of its evolution through brute matter, blind force, and senseless motion, the occultists point to intelligent L or and sentient air life and add that Fahat is the guiding spirit of all this. The Secret Doctrine, 
one comment stands a 6.2. Oh 5. The space is creator. Dispute between Newton and Einstein. If you deeply thought about the significance of the word? Space? You will have to admit that practically impossible to say about it something definite and really explain what it is. Such words as emptiness, vacuum, infinity, universe, or something of the sort come to mind. Agree it's not easy for a man to talk about what is empty for him, invisibly, unheard, impalpable, haven't tasted and smell, while all around us can touch, see, hear, sentence taste. As a result, in the minds of most people, space has always been a no more than an endless volume of emptiness where there is our world and we, in other words, something non-existent. The thinkers of philosophy and science have spent a good deal of time and effort trying to discover the relations between the space and all the objects in it. Sure, originally the scientists mainly interest in space from a practical point of view. Even in ancient times people had experienced a need to know the distance between the bodies as accurately as possible. A distance measurement is a measurement in the space. For this purpose there is geometry, the basis of which was laid in the a century before Christ by Euclid. He considered the space as emptiness. From his point of view it is isotropy, homogeneous and limitless. For realization of distance measurements Euclid need only three coordinates as opposite to the multitudes following of the Einstein physics, for whom it's not enough three and they brought down on us yet the fourth coordinate, dimension, fifth, sixth and so on. For what are they need? Here and after the scientific views on this question became all more to approach to the philosophical ones. In this scientific philosophical synthesis we view the space everywhere together with other category? Time? For them was contraposed the? Matter? Or otherwise? Material objects? In the history of philosophy there are two concepts describing relation to each other the space, and the time, and objects in it. We name one of them as substantial, and other, as relational. Disagreement with each other of these concepts is directly connected with the scientific dispute of the classic mechanics and relativistic. This scientific debate we can call as the dispute of Newton and Einstein extended through the time. The basis of classical mechanic is the substantial concept according to this the space, and the time, exists by itself, regardless of the objects occupied this space. I. Newton supposed that the space where we live is like the forever existing, unrestrictedly large, fixed box, without sides, the container of the matter. The properties of this box does not change over time and do not depend on how the substance distributes and redistributes in it, the dictionary of the young physicist, space. Isaac Newton. The space of Newton and Euclid is not able to shrink and stretch, that is to curve. Therefore, in this space the shortest distance between two points, is always a straight line and not a curve. In the framework of relativistic mechanics lay a relational concept, hence the similar name. Proponents of this view consider the space as something that existing in it objects produce. The space of A. Einstein can bend, contract and expand, and it is a non-Euclidean or in other words a non-Newtonian. Albert Einstein. In such non-Euclidean space the shortest distance is between points, the segments must constantly bend, and the distances between points must increase than decrease. Einstein connected gravity with the compression of space, and the acceleration or deceleration time with the degree of curvature of space. The more it is compressing and the more weight at this point the slower time passes there. The more extended and less weight at this point, the faster it flows the time. We share the conviction of the first concept, the substantial and, so are increasingly proponents of classical mechanics, not relativistic. We consider that the space does not disappear, if vanish all existing objects in it. In addition, we believe that space is not compressed and expanded. 
these properties are inherent only in the substance. But at the same time, we must acknowledge that the relational concept of relativistic mechanics has lifted on the surface a very important layer of knowledge about the structure of the universe. The only problem is that the proponents of each view describe the universe from its own point of vision. At the same time, classical mechanics and the substantial concept are really talking about the relationship between the space and the objects in it. While the concept of relational and relativistic mechanics tells not about the space, but about what actually exists in it, and is one of its manifestations, namely, about the spirit, energy, ether. The fallacy of relational concept and relativistic mechanics is that they attribute to the space the property of mobility while it is actually stationary. We can say that relativists have based on all things the movable, fluid space, while moving and flowing is the spirit, the second aspect of the absolute, but not the space, matter, substance, first, primal aspect. The merit of the same Einstein is that he came close to understanding that something in the space can move in any desired direction. Yes, that's right, something is flowing in space, and from the flowing of this something are depend all processes and phenomena in the universe. This something, as has just been said, it is the spirit. Besides the views on space of science and philosophy, a special place among all the existing opinions occupies the theosophical course led by Madame Blavatsky and R. Bailey. Helena Petrovna Blavatsky. Master K. H. The Master Moyer. Master Ray Cozy, H. P. Blavatsky. Alice and Bailey. Alice Bailey. Theosophical views on this matter are such that we can attribute them in some extent to the substantial philosophical concept. The difference is that the theosophists not only consider the space secondary to the objects of the universe, but also give it the main role, seeing it as a first principle. While for all the objects, and moving the existing, within the borders of this space, the theosophists withdraw the position of the second plan. For them, the objects are secondary and primary space itself. We present a series of quotes taken from the theosophical literature, particularly from books Blavatsky and A. Bailey. There is one boundless immutable principle, one absolute reality which, antecedes all manifested conditioned being. It is beyond the range and reach of any human thought or expression. The manifested universe is contained within this absolute reality and is a conditioned symbol of it. In the totality of this manifested universe, three aspects are to be conceived. 1. The first cosmic logos, impersonal and unmanifested, the precursor of the manifested. 2. The second cosmic logos, spirit matter, life, the spirit of the universe. 3. The third cosmic logos, cosmic ideation, the universal world soul. From these basic creative principles, in successive gradations there issue in an ordered sequence the numberless universes comprising countless manifesting stars and solar systems. Alice Bailey's, A Treatise on Cosmic Fire, pp. 32-33. Space is an entity and the entire, vault of heaven, as it has been poetically called, is the phenomenal appearance of that entity? A. Bailey, Esoteric Astrology, page 18. The ancient wisdom teaches that? Space is an entity? A. Bailey, Esoteric Astrology, page 19. What is that which was, is, and will be, whether there is a universe or not, whether there be gods or none? Asks the esoteric sense catechism. And the answer made is space? The occult catechism, taken from the secret doctrine by H. P. Blavatsky. Theosophists give the space a reality. In their interpretation, it is something concrete, real, and not empty. In their understanding, the space is not nothing, it is, something. Finally, we should mention one more look at the space, the religious. The uniqueness of this view lies in its imaginary abstraction from what it really dedicated. To this point of the space view leads us the theosophical literature. Actually, the theosophical course, 
just intended to unify and reconcile all the existing religions of the world. Therefore, we can assume that the theosophical literature paves the way for the Redda, on the one hand, in the world of religion, and the other, in the realm of science. Theosophy seeks to give a scientific explanation of religious beliefs, as well as to resolve problems and dispute questions of science with the help of esoteric concepts and information. If you start to study religious tracts, it would seem that it was of space always spoke mystically minded researchers of mysteries of being and seekers of meaning in life. And, of course, they were well aware of what they spoke, but preferred not to call right that what to write about, by the space, and gave for it all sorts of names. Space, this is the matter, the first aspect of God. And we have already spent a lot of time trying to tell the tale of this unknown something. However, we repeat and give the most famous of these names, Creator, God, Absolute, the Almighty, the World Mind, Allah, the One, one of whom about naught may be said, one reality, infinite principle, the lord of the world, the universe, space, Brahman, nothing, eternity, divine unity, the absolute consciousness, the united self-existing reality, the one being, alpha and omega, svabvat, global essence, the divine being, the absolute principle, parabrahman, reality not having a second, comprehensive space, infinite one being, absolutely everything, the absolute container of all things, the one life, in him we live and move and have our being, rootless root, infinite and eternal cause, the unconscious and the unknowable, mila prakriti, mila, the root, prakriti, the matter, all in all, pradana, the one eternal element, allness, causeless cause, eternal breath are unaware of itself, apayan, archer, this list could also go on and on. Mindful of the need to unite the scientific outlook with the religious, also attributed to this list such scientific concept, as a vacuum. Striving of initiates poets and writers ahead of time not to show to immature people all secrets of being and not being, that's the only reason for their presence in the literature the mystical cover, with which they hid from the uninitiated, the very foundation of our existence. Let us try to combine as much as possible, the views of scientists and poets. This should benefit both, and others, bonding, thus, the foundation of the human world view. The space described by Euclid and Newton, it's the matter, the primal essence, the infinite constant principle, the absolute reality. We can really compare this unmanifested cosmic mind with an empty box without walls although in reality this emptiness is not empty. This is the foundation of the universe, its origin, the matrix. This void we can see as a fundamental principle, fabric, on which the manifested universe apply like a pattern. About this space talk Blavatsky and Bailey, calling it the entity. It really is an absolute space, that is constant, fixed and eternal. And empty it's in the state of unmanifestation. Are there anywhere borders of space? Whether it comes in contact with something similar or different from it? If are applicable to it all our human notions of borders? To these questions we have no answers. In relation to space it's pointless to use pronouns that characterize sexual identity, as the division into two sexes, a phenomenon unique to the plant, animal and human organisms. Therefore, the space it's not he or she. The closest thing to it the pronoun it, but this is a convention. To the space in general we should not use the concepts related to sex differences. This can be done only to the spirit and matter, and then symbolically. In the state of manifestation the spirit flowing in the souls fills the cosmic substance matter. Modern scholars have largely rejected the idealistic approach to the questions of the structure of the universe. They reject the creator, God as the main leading and the creative principle of the universe. However, in science everywhere you can find the concept nature incomprehensible, inexplicable, omnipotent, and semantically very reminiscent of religious terms God and creator. 
And when the scientist says, laws of nature, it sounds like the word of God, in the mouth of a true believer. Everywhere you can find manifestations of creative activity of God, creative space. Each chemical element, each elementary particle, is the result of his incessant, work. By observing the physical, chemical, biological and astronomical phenomena of the world, we touch the divine. 06. The spirit, is ether, energy, information. The soul, is an elementary particle. Let us once again look at the diagram of manifestation of this universe. The matter, is the first cosmic logos, that ball unimaginable proportions that appear in the space, that cosmic egg, symbolized in the esoteric by the circle without a point. Within this world and will happen here and after all cosmic processes and phenomena, will develop the life. The second cosmic logos, this is an indication that the spirit was born in the matter, and now they are too. And lastly, the third cosmic logos, this is the matter, giving birth to the souls inside itself with the help of the spirit. The souls are yin and yang. Logos, it's just a name for a particular state of space. Let's talk about the second and third space logos. The moment came when in the first cosmic logos in the empty space, in the matter, the spirit arose, rather, many spirits. The spirit did not come freely, but in the souls. This is a shift of the first logos in the status of the second, and the third, what is going on at the same time. Every spirit that arose in matter, became the basis for the emergence of the soul. And there was an association of spirit and matter in the souls. Father and mother have born. The children. Matter, spirit and soul, mother, father and baby, together join, the very same, holy trinity, the object of religious worship. It is an esoteric view of the process of emergence of the manifested universe. And the scientific understanding of this process is as follows. Once unimaginably long time ago, in human notions, the space changed. In this simple and familiar word, change, hidden all secret sense of how the matter internally transformed to become outwardly visible, manifested. And it is this altered state of matter in the occultism we call the spirit. The matter was to give birth to the spirit, energy, that is in it began to emerge some particular state the essence of which is beyond our understanding. The spirit formed, centers of creation, building units of the universe, touch points by the creator himself inside, power centers. These are different names for the same. Democritus, thinking about the world, supposed their existence and called these power centers by the atoms, indivisible particles. And he was right about their indivisibility. Buddha also mentioned that all things are composed of some, Dharma. Apparently, by that he meant all the same centers of power. Thus, well known to us, elementary particles, chakras, atoms and, Dharma, are synonyms. One could come up with and find still a lot of other symbolic expressions for these amazing formations that arose once in the space and exist since. However, any of them would be powerless to give at least some information about the deep essence of that unknown something. In science, chemical elements are the atoms. Recall the translation of the atom is indivisible. When scientists began to open up and explore the chemical elements, they were the same indivisible elementary units, the existence of which spoke the ancient Greek philosophers. And so they have appropriated the name of atoms. In our series of books the concept of atom is equal to the concept of, elementary particle, and the chemical element is the, chemical element, or just, element. It is difficult to talk about any structure of elementary particles. We're talking about the structure of something, if it incorporates smaller structural units. Particle, is a holistic structure. It's not even the structure, but simply an area of the space the material point, point of contact, of the creator space itself. The spirit, is the foundation and filling the souls. He, is their source. The main synonym for esoteric concept, spirit, 
is another esoteric term, ether, which, according to the ideas of philosophical and theosophical thinkers fills the entire universe. The notion of the spirit is also consistent with such occult terms as Father, Brahma, this, along with Vishnu and Shiva, one of the hypostases of the Hindu triune god, heaven, Phohat, Prussia, breath of heaven, breath of life, Nefesh, light. The transition the space from the state of the first logos in the state of the second and third logos, this is the moment when the particles started to create ether and destroy it. It can be assumed that the spirit is precisely thereby, Einstein's space, that fills the real space, which, as Einstein believed, can be bent. Space itself, matter, the first logos, is not bent it still. But the spirit emitted and absorbed by the elementary particles, is able to flow, which he does. The ether emitted and absorbed by the particles, this is the spirit flows in the space. A hint of what's in the space? Something? The spirit, is flowing we can find in the esoteric literature in the form of references to the prana, a very thin, ultralight, radiant substance that is able to pass from body to body, occupying the entire universe. Another name for the spirit is? She? Anyway, Kai. Let's talk a bit more about what the spirit, is light. From a scientific point of view, the light, is visible photons that are moving from having emitted or reflected their body and getting into our visual analyzers, cause a visual sensation that we call the light. However, the real cause of visual perception is the ether emitted by particles that get into the visual analyzer. Thus, ether, spirit, this is the light in the broad sense of the word. Exactly about this light, that is the ether, spirit. The first book of Moses, Genesis 1 colon 3 says, And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. Elementary particles we can view symbolically as the, building blocks, of that are building, the temple of the manifested universe. Hence, it becomes clear why to describe the stages of human knowledge and the development it has been used the Masonic symbolism. Mason from French is a bricklayer. Elementary particles, these are the same stones from which Freemasons strived to establish the temple, the body of the manifested universe. In a narrow sense, the Masons, are people embarked on the path of initiation, that is in the path of Christ, Buddha and other great teachers. In a wider sense, Freemasonry is a symbol of the totality of existing in the universe the living organized systems. Each one of us, is a builder and stone mason. Any representative of any kingdom of nature, is a mason. Minerals, plants, animals, all are masons, as strange as it may sound. Scientists still are busy looking for candidates for the role of, basic elements, which make up all that is in the universe. We are convinced that the only suitable candidates for this role are elementary particles, the souls. The totality of souls, existing in the universe, along with ether, spirit, created and destroyed in them, forms the soul of the world, anima mundi. At the end of every Christian prayer we use the following expression, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. This we can attribute it to a number of inaccurate phrases. And all because, the concept of Father in this case symbolizes the mother, the matter, the original substance, the first aspect of God. The concept of the Son is a soul. But the, Holy Spirit, it is precisely the Spirit, the second aspect, the light. The matter in this prayer afterward is not mentioned. This is not surprising, given for what period of human history had the formation of Christianity. The concept of matter is synonymous with the concept of mother, that is, feminine. In the harsh patriarchy the feminine principle entirely subordinate and enslaves, hence the neglect of him by the fathers of the Christian church. Therefore more right to say, in the name of the mother, the son, and the Holy Spirit, where the Holy Spirit, the father. Or you can like this, in the name of the mother, the father and the son. But why is in the name of the son, and not of the daughter? Even better, in the name of the mother, the father 
and of their child. What are the spirit and soul? With what can they be compared? First, in no case can't give them the features of something eternal, permanent. The only eternal substance that exists in the universe, it is the very space, the matter. While the spirit, ether, and souls, elementary particles, as already mentioned, are the altered state of space, disturbance in it. The spirit can remotely compare with ripples on the surface of the pond. Although, of course, the spirit does not a ripple. It is ephemeral, immaterial and illusory. A ripple distorts the shape of the water surface, but the water on a run down the waves, remains the water. The same applies to the spirit. It distorts the state of the space, but the space does not stop to be itself. The particles, is also a ripple, but of a different kind than the ether. And yet, in spite of the illusory nature of spirit and soul, for us, creatures built by them, they are more than real. We called the fundamental particles and chemical elements of science, stuff. However, the real materiality has only the space itself. Particles are as ephemeral as the ether. That is why the world of what we call substance and matter, the world of spirit and formed by its souls, is in esoteric literature is the world of mere illusion. Think about, we in the world around us like the universe, it's just a disturbance in the space. And the space itself, this is the only thing that creates us, by what, or whom, we live and move and have our being. And the true and profound nature of this space has been yet closed to the human understanding. You can't assume that the particle and the ether were once created by God, the mother, after which he, she, left them, at rest, and they are in themselves and the creator itself. No. These centers have emerged and continue to exist, thanks to unceasing creativity of the first logos. We'll stop this creative act, we'll stop their existence. Every millimeter of the space, regardless of created by it in itself elementary particles and ether, has a mind, consciousness. The whole universe is reasonable, and not just us humans. But let us return once more to the, dispute of the models of space, Euclidean Newton space and Einstein space. In something relatively the basic structure of the universe, Einstein was right. The something that exists in space, the spirit, is in a mobile state, and can be bent. But as the space is not bent, the shortest distance between two points is a segment of the line. Therefore, should not be questioning the Euclidean geometry. The science is engaged the studying of methods and patterns of measurements of space and matter. But the measurement of the segments with curves should be regarded as erroneous. Science through any technical means, in the laboratory, will never be able to directly see the nature of the ether and elementary particles. It's only indirectly, by studying the interaction of the particles with each other. But the very human mind, the human eye can come close to solving this greatest of mysteries, to the knowledge of the essence of the Creator, creating us in itself and of itself. When you look at the surrounding bodies, constantly keep in mind that there is nothing but elementary particles, souls, of varying quality in the ether, the spirit, penetrating particles, created by them and disappearing into them. There is no spoon? Oh seven. The soul is the third hypostasis. The mechanism of manifestation, creation. By the end it's time to talk about the third aspect of the creator, thinking substance, the soul. In our view, the occult and religious texts and scriptures the most attention is directed to this hypostasis of God and the most information is devoted to it in. About the second aspect of the spirit also is said a lot but still a bit more about the soul. Scientists also say a lot about it, though, and do not realize that they are talking exactly about that. So what is the soul? As many times we repeat, this is the special formation in the body of space, the perturbation in it. This is a sphere in the center of which there is the emergence of the spirit, and in the periphery, its destruction. That's such amazing something this soul 
or rather, the souls, which in the vast, incredibly huge number the nature creates in itself and of itself. But what is the kind of perturbation, what is the true essence of what we call the soul, we don't know. When occult books talk about the third aspect, first, they call the center of force itself that has the ability to create and destroy the spirit. And second, they give the different names for the spirit itself, appearing and disappearing in each particle. So when we talk about the third hypostasis, the soul, at the same time mention and the second, the spirit. And this is quite true, as the second person of God, is the cause of the third. The primary component of the soul, is the spirit that it saturates and hardens, adds hardness. Therefore, we first make a list of synonyms for the soul as a whole. And then again repeat those concepts that characterize the spirit in the soul. As the souls of the universe make the seven basic types at each level of each plan, very often they are given a particular name or definition, combined with the number seven. Soul, third hypostasis, third aspect, the son of the light, used for the naming of the spirit and soul, Jiva, Dianchahan, Sephiroth, Lipika, Beatrice, Luna and Solar, brothers seven brothers, Rishi, seven rishis of the great bear, sisters, the seven sisters of the Pleiades, principles, seven principles, Kimara, Deva, Sura, Azura, Deitus, Aditya, Danava, Ganava, Angels of the Throne, Supremacies, Hierarchies, Beginnings, Cherubims, Seraphims, Demons, Army of the Voice, Legion, Rupa, Arupa, Ea Junior, Not Eternal Germ, Fire, Light, of Brahma, the Sons of the Sun, the Seven Creative Armies, Seven Builders, Seven Supreme Lords, seven truths, the seven great causes of misery, seven days of creation, seven periods or cycles, seven breaths of dragon of wisdom, seven seeds, seven worlds of mere, the seven hierarchies, shimmering seven, mind-born suns, the seven lives, beaming suns of dawn of Manvantara, messenger of gods, sparks, flames, are high, force centers, force, energy, elementary particles, elements, elements, atoms, monads, chakras, bindu, firing vortices, dharma, lacentas, wheels, serpents, dragons, shadow of God, reflection of God, mirror of God, wicks, clots in the ocean of milk, caviar, which is spawned by the fire fish of life, fish grains of life, numbers, sons of the earth and the sons of fire, yin and yang, matter and spirit, Cain and Abel, Shiva and Brahma, creators and destroyers. The composition of this list, we included also the names for the spirit in the soul. But let them even separately. Seven spirits before the throne of God, a whirlwind of fire, snake, biting its own tail, the dragons of wisdom, Lucifer, Kundalini, fire serpent, Fohat, and Takarana, bridge connecting the spirit with the soul ray of light, seven ways to bliss, wheel, circle, breath of dragon of wisdom, sutrima, thread of life, the thread between the silent witness and his shadow, flame, the stream of consciousness, the fabric, which is spun by the mother and father, the world egg, gold egg, hiranyagarbha, senjin, maya, illusion, space of light, svabvat, hierarchies of forms, the universe, the son of necessity, these are concepts and definitions that describe the universe as a whole. This is not all, there is only a modest portion of all the titles that we can find in the esoteric and the scientific literature. You can train yourself to find these synonyms. The son can do nothing of himself, but what he seeth the father do, for what things soever. The father, doth, these also doth the son likewise. The New Testament, the Gospel of John. Ch. 519. 08. Comments to the Book of Zion, Stanzas Zion was taken from Volume 1 of, The Secret Doctrine, of H. P. Blavitsky. 1. The Universal Mind was not, for there were no Ahai to contain it. Stanza 1.3. The Universal Mind, is the Cosmic Consciousness, 
the second aspect of God, our high sense are, these are the souls, serpents, dragons of wisdom, the elementary particles that contain mind, filled with them. 2. The seven ways to bliss were not the great causes of misery were not, for there was no one to produce and get ensnared by them. Stanza 1.4 the ultimate goal of the existence of our universe is the union of information and identification of all with all. All six plans and all six main types of souls should merge together. Thus are born the Mahatma, the great soul. And the more of these creatures will be eventually in the universe, the closer the world would be with the ultimate goal of existence. Bliss, Nirvana, this is the final outcome of this world and each type of soul is conventionally referred as the way to bliss. The spirit flows through the soul, it is the way. On the other hand, all the time, that the universe is moving towards the ultimate goal, accompanied by the inevitable suffering of imperfect beings born in it and dying quickly because of their imperfections. That is why these same seven basic types of souls have another name, the great causes of misery. Experiencing pain, everything in this world is moving towards perfection. 3. For father, mother, and son were once more one, and the son had not yet awakened for the new wheel and his pilgrimage thereon. Stanza 1.5. During Mahapralay there is still no the father, spirit of ether, and son, soul. All of this is potentially hidden in the depths of matter, the original substance. Wheel. This is another name for the soul, wheel, it's the ether rotating in a circle. New wheel, it's a symbol of the new Mahamanvantara, manifested through the totality of the produced souls. Pilgrimage of the sun on the wheel, this is an indication of the period of the next Manvantaric existence of our universe. 4. The seven sublime lords and the seven truths had ceased to be, and the universe, the son of necessity, was immersed in Paranishpa, to be outbreathed by that which is, and yet is not. Stanza 1.6. The seven sublime lords as well as the seven truths, it's the same thing as the seven spirits before the throne of God, or the seven sons, seven basic types of elementary particle souls. During Mahapralaya they are not, that is, there is no universe in the form in which we are accustomed to contemplate it now. 5. Where were the builders? The luminous sons of Manvantaric dawn. In the unknown darkness in their Ahai Paranishpa. The producers of form from no form. The root of the world, the Devantrians Vabvat, rested in the bliss of non-being. Stanza 2.1. You probably already guessed that the builders and the luminous sons of Manvantaric Dawn, are the souls, building elements of the universe. 6, 3. The hour had not yet struck, the ray had not yet flashed into the germ, the Mtripadma had not yet swollen. 4. Her heart had not yet opened for the one ray to enter, thence to fall, as 3 into 4, into the lap of Mare. 5. The seven were not yet born from the web of light. Darkness alone was father mother, Svabvat, and Svabvat was in darkness. Stanza 2.3, 2.4, 2.5. The ray, it's the ray of light, spirit, passing through the souls and animating them. The web of light, it is the spirit that fills the space. The seven, it's all the same seven types of souls the seven rays. 3 into 4, 3, the three highest manifestations, matter, spirit, soul, 4. The four elements, is another classification of souls. 3 into 4, means that the three higher aspects of God manifest through the four elements. 7. These two are the germ, and the germ is one. The universe was still concealed in the divine thought and the divine bosom. Stanza 2.6. The germ is the manifested universe, the totality of building units, vivified by the spirit. The universe presents two major types of souls, yin and yang, matter and spirit. 8. Darkness radiates light, 
and light drops one solitary ray into the waters, into the mother deep. The ray shoots through the virgin egg, the ray causes the eternal egg to thrill, and drop the non-eternal germ, which condenses into the world egg. Stanza 3.3. The non-eternal germ, like the world egg, it's a symbol of the manifested universe. The eternal egg, is the original substance itself, the virgin mother. 9. The three fall into the four. The radiant essence becomes seven inside, seven outside. The luminous egg, which in itself is three, curdles and spreads in milk white curds throughout the depths of mother, the root that grows in the depths of the ocean of life. Stanza 3.4. That is the three fall into the four, we recently discussed. The radiant essence becomes seven inside, seven outside must also be clear. The emergence in the space vivified by the spirit, light, the seven major types of souls. Seven inside, seven outside, seven spirits that manifest them through seven types of souls. The luminous egg, it is a translation of the word Hiranyagarbha, the golden egg. The visible universe. Trinity of the luminous egg, three main hypostases represent the manifested universe. The ocean of life, is the ocean of ether, spirit. But in its heart the root lies, the matter. Milk white curds in the ocean of life, in the ocean of milk, these are the souls, the building units. 10. Dot 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 the radiant child of the two, the unparalleled refulgent glory, bright space, son of dark space, who emerges from the depths of the great dark waters. It is you, the younger, the he shine forth as the sun, he is the blazing divine dragon of wisdom, the Akai's chatter, and chatter takes to itself tri, and the union produces the sapta, in whom are the seven, which become the tri dasha, the hosts and the multitudes. Behold him lifting the veil, and unfurling it from east to west. He shuts out the above, and leaves the below to be seen as the great illusion. He marks the places for the shining ones and turns the upper into a sureless sea of fire, and the one manifested into the great waters. Stanza. 3.7. The radiant child of the two, the unparalleled refulgent glory, bright space, son of dark space, who emerges from the depths of the great dark waters. This is, of course, of the soul, which is a product of the synthesis of matter and spirit. The matter in this case, it's not the type of soul, but namely, the original substance. And the spirit, this is not a particle yang in the information, the light. The spirit, this is the light, the sun of dark space. His jaya in every elementary particle and forms in total the bright space. Eu, the younger, it's the soul. The light moving in every soul is the flaming, divine dragon of wisdom. Eka, is the one, the spirit. Chatter, it's four, four elements. Chatter takes to itself try, within this four elements classification, that is within the universe, there are particles of the three primary colors, blue, yellow and red. These three colors are dry. Classification within the classification. The particles of three colors give birth to a spectrum in which six colors plus the seven, complex. And there are seven plans. Here you have the Sapta, 7, 7 times 7, 49. These 49, this is the Tridasha, the hosts and the multitudes, all the variety of possible combinations of elementary particles in the universe. Sea of fire, it's the same as the space of light, that is ocean of ether, spirit. 11, Father Mother Spinner Web, whose upper end is fastened to spirit, the light of the one darkness and the lower one to its shadowy end, matter, and this web is the universe, spun out of the two substances, made in one, which is Svabvat. Stanza 3.10. Father Mother symbolizes the combination in the universe of the areas where the spirit the Father, is working, that is where it arises, and of the areas where the matter, Mother, is working, that is where the spirit disappears and the space returns to the original state, to the matter. 
the fabric, which is spun by mother and father really, it's the universe, the totality of elementary particles, which we can divide into two main types, the yin and yang. These yin and yang, this is two entities merged together. 12. Thence vab vats end for hat to harden the atoms. Each is a part of the web. Reflecting the self existent Lord, like a mirror, each becomes in turn a world. Stanza 3.12. Svabvat in this case is the matter, thinking substance, where the spirit, the father, is living. For hat, it's the same thing as the spirit, however, considered to each elementary particle the soul. For hat, spirit, fills atoms, particles and thus makes them impermeable with respect to one another. In this way Fahat makes the atoms solid. Fabric which is spun by Svabvat, as already mentioned, it is the universe as the totality of its constituent elementary particles, atoms. The soul is in the occult a reflection, a mirror for the spirit, which is otherwise also known as self-existent Lord. Another name for Fahat rotating in the soul, is the serpent the dragon of wisdom. The serpent, the dragon, is a monkey of God, which repeats all his movements, but not a God in its entirety, but only part of him. 13. Listen, ye sons of the earth, to your instructors, the sons of the fire. Learn, there is neither first nor last, for all is one number, issued from no number. Stanza 4.1. Sons of the earth is one type of souls, the particles yin. Sons of the fire, is the second type of souls, the particles yang. As you will learn later from the law of identification, namely the particle yin, sons of the earth, absorb information, energy, spirit, emanating from the particles yang, sons of the fire, and not vice versa. That is how we should understood an expression? Listen ye sons of the earth, to your instructors, the sons of the fire? 14, from the effulgency of light, the ray of the ever-darkness, sprang in space the reawakened energies, the one from the egg, the six, and the five. Then the three, the one, the four, the one, the five, the twice seven, the sum total. And these are the essences, the flames, the elements, the builders, the numbers, the Arpa, the Arpa, and the force or divine man, the sum total. And from the divine man emanated the forms, the sparks, the sacred animals, and the messengers of the sacred fathers within the holy four, stanza 4.3. Light, is a product of the matter, the ray of ever darkness, where darkness, this is the matter. The reawakened energies, are the smaller branches of one ray, smaller rays, each of which is for hat or serpent, animating its soul. The egg, is the matter. This refers to the eternal egg, not gold. The one from the egg, is the one ray, that is the spirit in the general sense. The twice seven, is the seven plans and the seven colors, forty-nine, the sum of all. The totality of the elementary particles of the universe. The essences, the flames, the elements, the builders, the numbers, the arpa, the arpa, the force, the forms, the sparks, the sacred animals, the messengers of the sacred fathers, all these are synonyms of the soul. The secret father, is the spirit behind every soul, feeding it by himself. The divine man, is the manifested universe, all the totality of souls the messengers of the sacred fathers within the holy four, this means that all souls we can classify with the help of the four elements. 15, that was the army of the voice, the divine mother of seven. Sparks of seven and the servants are subject to the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth and seventh of the seven. They are called spheres, triangles, cubes, lines, and molders for so keeps eternal Nidan, Oihahu? Stanza 4.4. The voice, is synonymous with the spirit. Here he was given the name of the Divine Mother of Seven, because some religious systems personify the spirit as feminine deity. 
in the spirit of many synonyms, and this is one of them. The army of the voice, it is the totality of souls born of the one spirit. Sparks of seven, this is the same thing as the seven spirits, seven suns, seven types of souls. Sparks of seven and the servants are subject to the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth and seventh of the seven, this is the list of synonyms of seven kingdoms of nature. Sparks of seven and the servants are subject, means that the same types of seven souls form the members of the kingdoms. And the seventh kingdom, it is always the case with the number, seven, an indication of the complexity. What does this list, spheres, triangles, cubes, lines, and molders? Here would still have to add the pentagram and the six-pointed star, and so build a list. Spheres, lines, triangles, cubes, pentagram and six-pointed star. Sphere, it's a petal, one plan in the kingdom. It is a symbol of the mineral kingdom. Line, is two plans grouped together as part of a member of another kingdom, plant. Otherwise the line can also be called a segment, that is a section of the line connecting the two points, in this case, two particles, two plans. Triangle, is, respectively, the symbol of the animal kingdom, the union of three souls, three plans. Three petals, is 666. Cube indicates on number 4, four petals, four joint plans, a symbol of the human's kingdom. And finally, the pentagram and the six-pointed star, two superhuman kingdoms. Pentagram combines five plans, and the star of David, six. A conglomerate of elementary particles, is also a particle, only an unstable, using the language of science. 16, 2. The voice of the word, Svabhavat numbers, because he is one and nine. 3. Square without shapes, stanza 4.5. Svabhavat, is the mother father, matter and spirit. Number, is a universe in their entirety of the souls in its composition. Svabhavat numbers, means that we refer to matter and spirit in their primary sense, but as the soul polar opposites, yin and yang. 1 and 9. 1, is 1 spirit and 9, is 3 and 6. 3, 3 primary colors. 6, 6 simple plans. Square without shapes, is a classification of the souls of the elements. 17, 5. Then there are the children, 7 warriors, a, 8th left aside, and his breath is light giver. 6. Second 7. Then that is Lipica generated by three. Rejected one sun. Sons of the sun, innumerable, stanza 4.5, 4.6. Seven warriors. The seven major types of souls. The eighth sun, is the father, the spirit. This is it, rejected one sun. His breath is light giver. The spirit, this is the breath and it animates every part of the world, every soul. Second seven, that is Lipica, it's all the same types of souls. Generated by three, this expression indicates that the triad of aspects represents every soul, elementary particle. Sun, is the spirit of the father. Sons of the sun, are the souls, or the rays of the sun day. 18. The primordial seven, the first seven breaths of the dragon of wisdom, produce in their turn from their holy circumjurating breaths the fiery whirlwind. Stanza 5.1 The dragon of wisdom, is the spirit, ether, energy, spinning in any soul. The dragon of wisdom, this is the same as the holy circumjurating breath. Fire whirlwind generated by the holy breath, is an elementary particle, soul. The primordial seven, the first seven breaths of the dragon of wisdom, are the seven major types of souls that exist at each level of each plan. 19. They make of him the messenger of their will. The Zayu becomes Ferhat, the swift son of the divine sons, whose sons are the Lipica, runs circular errands. Ferhat is the steed, and the thought is the rider. Stanza 5.2. They, 
the primordial seven, make of him, fiery whirlwind, the messenger. Do you remember, Mercury is the messenger of the gods, too? Whirlwind of spirit, born and died in the particles, it is the same spirit, but in the concrete sense. He is the messenger of gods, and he is God by himself. He informs that carries information. Do not be confused by all this fog of occult terminology. And the divine sons and the Lipica, all these are synonyms of souls. The Xayu in this case symbolizes the spirit in a general sense. For Hat, it is the spirit in a particular way. 20. He is their guiding spirit and the driver. Starting work, he separates the sparks of the lower kingdoms and in the joy of wearing quivering in their abodes radiant in forms of these rudiments of wheels. He puts them in the six directions of space and one in the middle, middle wheel, stanza 5.3. What means these phrases, he, Fohat, is their guiding spirit and the driver. He separates dot 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 forms dot 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 puts. Some external manifestation of quality characterize elementary particles that is, the particles or absorb the ether, for hat, or emit it, and with a certain speed. Absorbing particles form, thus around the field of attraction, thereby attracting to themselves the surrounding particles. Emitting particles form the fields of repulsion, which pushes the surrounding particles. So, the characteristics of the for hat, ether, displaying in the particles, determine how they will behave in the environment of other particles. This is the work of Fahat as the driver, the guide and leader of the particles. And sparks, is a synonym of the particles. The sparks of the lower kingdoms, are the particles of the physical plan, which form the mineral kingdom, the lowest of all, that closest to the center of the universe. Wheels, it's the whirlwinds of this ether, rotating, in time, in souls, elementary particles. Wheels, it's the same thing as the dragons, serpents. The rudiments of wheels he puts in the six directions of space, this is a figurative expression, suggesting that each type of elementary particles in the universe tends to occupy its own position relative to the center, and this fact is due to the peculiarities of manifestation of the particles the Fahat, ether. Middle wheel, is an association of particles of different types into one, so there is a seventh, integrated color. 21. Lipica outline the triangle, the first one, the cube, the second one, and pentagram in the egg. This ring, called, do not transgress, for those who descend and ascend, who during the Kalpa moving to great day, be with us. Thus were created the Arupa and Rupa, from one light seven luminaries from each of the seven times seven luminaries. Wheel guard ring. Stanza 5.6. The ring, it is the very sphere of any elementary particle. Perhaps the ring we call, do not transgress, for the reason that the ether within the sphere of each particle, is its own property. And other particles can't pretend to this ether to the moment when it is within a given particle. The souls, particles descend and ascend. Arupa, is a particle yang, rupa, yin particle. Arupa, those that do not create the forms. Rupa, on the contrary, create the forms. This classification is quite understandable. Particles rupa, yin have the fields of attraction, and it is due to this. They produce forms, attracting the other particles. Particles arupa, yan, have the fields of repulsion, and so do not create forms, as repel the surrounding particles. Wheel, is a flow of ether, spirit, moving in the elementary particle, moving in time. Exactly the ether fills the particles and makes them impervious to each other. That is how we should understand the phrase, wheel guard ring, or rather, each wheel protects its own ring. From one light seven luminaries, from each of the seven times seven luminaries, this phrase we should interpret as a sign that the spectrum, that is, totality of six basic types of particles, 
plus complex particles that combine different types of particles, within each of the seven plans unusually large. What means the expression, Lipica outline the triangle, the first one, the cube, the second one, and pentagram in the egg. This is true told at Blavitsky in the, secret doctrine? Dot 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 the, ring b as not, that the Lipica trace around the triangle, the first one, the cube, the second one, and the pentacle to circumscribe these figures, is thus shown to contain the symbol of 31415 again, or the coefficient constantly used in mathematical tables, the value of p, by, the geometrical figures standing here for numerical figures. The Secret Doctrine, Comment. To stanza 5.6. However, Elena Petrovna considered the concept of ring. Do not transgress. From the astronomical point of view, because the meaning of this expression quite different, we said just above that it's the very sphere of the elementary particle. 22. By the power of the mother of mercy and knowledge, Quan Yin, the triple of Quan, Shai Yin, residing in Quan, Yin Xing, Fo Hat, the breath of their progeny, the son of the suns, having called forth, from the lower abyss, the elusive form of Xinjin and the seven elements. Stanza 6.1. You can know the identity of the names of Quan Yin and Quan Shai Yin. The existence in the Chinese pantheon of deities, identity, by the way, the Indian Avalokiteshvara, accurately reflects the idea of the spirit, of the father, of the second aspect of God. The spirit, that's exactly the one something that permeates and saturates the universe, and changes somehow the underlying substance, and is exactly what the other religious systems call the logos, the word, voice. The same concept and we adhere to. Spirit, that sends to our world voice that makes a circle and back to emit its source. Thus, each such round brings information about the changes that have taken place in the universe along the way of the sound. Qin translates as heaven. Quan Yin Xin we can interpret as, the universe, sky, space, where Quan Shai Yin inhabits and keep track of everything going on. That is, the space filled with those who see the sounds of the world is itself the sound. Accordingly, as we have already mentioned, Fo Hat, it is really the spawn of Quan Shai Yin, a product of the spirit. Fo Hat, this is the spirit, but existing in a single particle, the tiny ray of the one ray. Fo Hat, is the son of the father, the one spirit, and soul, particle, these are the sons of mother and father. It turns out that Fahat, is a, the son of the suns. The lower abyss, this is the matter, shadow, primal essence that created everything in this world. The abyss from which there was all. Bottomless, endless basis. The seven elements, it's all the same types of seven souls, elementary particles that built the universe. Fahat, having called. The elusive form of Sinjin, that Fahat, Spirit, working in each elementary particle, has caused a visible manifestation of our world. The elusive form, is a synonym of mere, illusion, commonly called as the universe. 23. The swift and the radiant one produces the seven lacenters, against which none will prevail to the great day, be with us, and seats the universe on these eternal foundations, surrounding Sinjin with the elementary germs. Stanza 6.2. The swift and the radiant one, it is the spirit. The seven lacenters, are the seven basic types of souls. The great day, be with us, the beginning of the end Mahamantara. Mahapralaya. Primary germ, this is the soul, stable elementary particles. 24, of the seven, first one manifested, six concealed, two manifested, five concealed, three manifested, four concealed, four produced, three hidden, four and once and revealed, two and one half concealed, six to be manifested, one lard aside. Lastly, seven small wheels revolving, one giving birth to the other. Stanza. 6.3. There we described the sequence of entry the plans into incarnation. 
6 to be manifested, 1 la decide, 6 simple plans and 1 complex that appears as the sum of all in its final form last, 7 small wheels revolving, 1 giving birth to the other, souls of 7 plans, the higher planes feed by the reef of the lower, give birth, 25, he builds them in the likeness of older wheels, placing them on the imperishable centers, how does Fahat build them? He collects the fiery dust. He makes balls of fire, runs through them, and round them, infusing life thereinto, then sets them into motion, some one way, some the other way. They are cold, he makes them hot. They are dry, he makes them moist. They shine, he fans and cools them. Thus acts Fahat from one twilight to the other, during seven eternities. Stanza 6.4 the older wheels, are the conglomerates, collected from the stable particles, that is directly from the indivisible souls. The fiery dust, this is the elementary particle. Balls of fire, are the conglomerates of souls. Twilight, it's Mahapralaya, the disintegration of the universe. Seven eternities, are the consistent formation of the seven kingdoms of nature. A wheel, this is the same as the rotating ether, nascent, and then disappearing. First of all, a wheel, it is the very soul, as in every particle the ether is born at the same time and disappears. This is a small wheel. But if ether is born in a single particle, and is destroyed in the other, it is also the wheel of ether. We can suppose that a conglomerate of particles forms this wheel and we consider it as the older to the individual soul. The more particles are in the conglomerate, the wheel is greater, that is older. The body of any representative of any of the kingdom, is also a wheel. 26, at the fourth, the sons are told to create their images, one third refuses, to obey. The curse is pronounced. They will be born in the fourth, suffer and cause suffering. This is the first war. Stanza. 6.5. To create their images, is the process of combining particles into conglomerates groups, due to the existence of gravity. As a result of consistent association of the particles the kingdoms of nature are born. In the process of creating the images, that is in the birth of kingdoms, all plans include because the particles with the fields of attraction that can become the centers of attraction, is the part of any plan. It's first. And second, not only the particles with the fields of attraction can subordinate, but also the particles with the fields of repulsion. However, the more upper plan, the more there are particles with the fields of repulsion and the greater the value of these fields, and the smaller percentage of particles with fields of attraction and lower the value of these fields. It turns out that the upper plans, especially the last two, Atmic and Monadic, extremely reluctant to take part in the process of unification of particles, the fields of repulsion prevent. These two plans of the six simple are precisely the refusing one third. The other four lower plans, it's to obey thirds, as their total fields of attraction are more and the fields of repulsion are less. But these two upper plans will still come into incarnation, they will be born in the fourth. This means that their aim and objects, with which they will interact, will be the representatives of the fourth kingdom, a human. The process of forming the superhuman kingdoms is very difficult. It's not easy to create forms that can withstand high levels of energy, because the energy, ether, destroys bonds. Therefore, any person on the way to becoming a superman has big difficulties and suffering. This road is very hard, and not everyone under force. This is the first war, a war between the yin and yang, due to the complete opposite manifestations of their quality. 27. The older wheels rotate downward and upward. The mother's spawn filled the hole. There were battles fought between the creators and the destroyers, and battles fought for space the seed appearing and reappearing continuously. Stanza. 6.6. .6. The mother's spawn, is again synonyms of soul. The matter, space, gives rise to a seed, germ, 
spawn, soul. The souls fill the space. The seed appearing and reappearing continuously, it is the spirit that is born in the souls. Creators and destroyers, are the particles yang and yin. Yan, are creators, because there is a domination of the process of creation of the spirit in them. Yin, are destroyers, as they destruct the ether more than creates. 28. Make thy calculations, O Lanu, if thou wouldst learn the correct age of thy small wheel. Its fourth spoke is our mother. Reach the fourth fruit of the fourth path of knowledge that leads to nirvana, and thou shalt comprehend, for thou shalt see. Stanza 6.7. The fourth fruit of the fourth path of knowledge that leads to nirvana, it's the fourth ray, harmony through conflict, combining all the other six rays. In an article on the seven rays, W. Say the six rays are simple, but the seventh, is the complex. However, do not understand the phrase, seventh ray, as a literal reference to ray's number? In fact, the ray under the number, seven, is simple. While the comprehensive ray, is the number, four, as has just been said. For any person, before getting into a superhuman state by the addition of particles of atmic and monadic plans, it is necessary to reach the state of the fourth ray. The person do it by including into the body the particles, souls, of all six simple rays, that is, all levels of buddhic plan shall be submitted in person. 29. Behold the beginning of sentient formless life. First, the divine, the one from the mother spirit, then, the spiritual, the three from the one, the four from the one, and the five, from which the three, the five and the seven. These are the threefold and the fourfold downward, the mind-born sons of the first lord, the shining seven. It is they who are thou, I, he, O Lanu, they who watch over thee and thy mother. B. H. Me? Stanza 7.1. First, the divine, the one, is an indication of the one absolute out of the state of manifestation. Then, the spiritual, or simply, the spirit, is the second aspect. The three from the one, the trinity, as part of any level of any of the plan there are the souls of only three primary colors. The four from the one, quaternary, the spirit manifests through four elements. And the five, the spirit itself represents the fifth element, ether. The first lord, is the primal essence, space. The mind, is the spirit. The mind born sons of the first lord the shining seven, are the souls, seven rays, thirty, the one ray multiplies the smaller rays, life precedes form, and life survives, the last atom, through the countless rays the life ray, the one, like a thread through many beads, stanza 7.2, the one ray and life, are the synonyms of the spirit, the second aspect of the absolute, the one ray multiplies the smaller rays, spirit manifests through a great variety of souls, elementary particles. Form, it's a soul. Life precedes form, spirit manifests itself in the form of the soul, but not vice versa. Life survives, the last atom, when, after Mahamantara all atoms, souls, will disappear, the spirit remains. Life will be spilled in the space of the one boundless ocean. Through the countless rays the life ray, the one, like a thread through many beads spirit permeates, saturates, fills the souls, small rays. Spirit, as the thread in necklace, penetrates all three and brings all together. 31. When the one becomes two, the threefold appears, and the three are one, and it is our thread, O Lanu the heart of the man plant called Sakpana. Stanza 7.3. The one, is the absolute, the original substance. The one becomes two, the spirit is born in the matter. The spirit is born in a third aspect, in the soul, the threefold appears, and the three are one. The thread, is the basis that holds together and unites. The heart, means the foundation, the substance. The man plant, it is a heavenly man, 
which is the manifested universe. The universe is like a man, exactly, a man like it, for the reason that in the universe and in the human the souls of different quality and different plans unite together. The manifested universe, like a lotus flower, has its roots in the water, that is in matter water, is a symbol of matter, but the flowers, manifestation, above the water, outside. 32. It is the root that never dies, the three-tongued flame of the four wicks. The wicks are the sparks, that draw from the three-tongued flame shot out by the seven, their flame, the beams and sparks of one moon reflected in the running waves of all the rivers of earth. Stanza 7.4. The root that never dies, the root of man plant, this is the original substance, matter, water. The four wicks, four elements, classification of particles according to the elements. The three-tongued flame, there are only three primary colors of elementary particles. Red, yellow and blue. The rest of the existing colors, are the combinations of the main. The sparks, the wicks, all these are synonyms for the concept of soul. The three-tongued flame shot out by the seven, the number, seven, indicates that the particles of three primary colors manifest in seven colors. One moon reflected in the running waves of all the rivers of earth, is one spirit that pervades the entire universe, filling all existing ethereal field. Beams and sparks, souls, the result of creation and the areas of manifestation of the one moon, one spirit. 33. The spark hangs from the flame by the finest thread of fur hat. It journeys through the seven worlds of Mare. It stops in the first, and is a metal and a stone, it passes into the second, and behold, a plant, the plant whirls through seven changes and becomes a sacred animal. From the combined attributes of these, Manu, the thinker, is formed. Two forms him. The seven lives and the one life. Who completes him? The fivefold are. And who perfects the last body? Fish, Sin, and Soma. Stanza 7.5. The spark, is a synonym for the soul. The flame, this is one spirit. The finest thread of fur hat, it is the spirit, manifested in the soul, particle. The seven worlds of Mare, are the seven kingdoms of nature. Mare, is the manifested universe. The first, the second, the fivefold are, are the seven kingdoms of nature, where the seventh, complex, the universe. The first kingdom, is mineral, the second, is vegetable. It, spark, journeys through the seven worlds of Mare, the souls construct the each kingdom of nature. Manu, the thinker, is the one consciousness, woven from the minds of all particles of the representatives of any of these kingdoms. The seven lives, are the seven types of souls, one life, is one spirit. The plant whirls through seven changes and becomes a sacred animal. The plant here it's man plant, and the sacred animal, is the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. And the man plant, and the sacred animal, lamb, are synonyms of manifested universe, which sooner or later destined to sink into oblivion, to plunge into Mahapralaya. Seven changes, is the change of the seven kingdoms, the same as the seven days of creation. The spirit turns into souls, it's called the wheel, spirit rotates in time. Soul, is the small wheel. The plans, the kingdom, are the older wheels. In each of them the spirit also rotates collectively. 34. From the first born the thread between the silent watcher and his shadow becomes more strong and radiant with every change. The morning sunlight has changed into noonday glory. Stanza 7.6. With every change, that is every kingdom, the thread, that is spirit manifests itself with ever greater force, the thread is getting stronger and all the more radiant with each modification. This is understandable because gradually coming into incarnation the more energy intensive plans. 35. This thy present wheel, said the flame to the spark. Thou art myself, my image and my shadow. I have clothed myself in thee, 
and thou art my the hand to the day, be with us, when thou shalt re become myself and others, thyself and me. Then the builders, having donned their first clothing, descent on radiant earth and reign over men who are themselves. Stanza 7.7 .7. As you can see, the stanza Zion also confirms our words that the wheel, is the rotating ether, or spirit. The thread of the firstborn, or otherwise the Ferhat thread is the flow of ether, spirit, which is pouring out into our world through each soul, spark. Thou art myself, my image and my shadow. I have clothed myself in thee, and thou art my Vihan, soul, spark, it is the same flame, the same spirit, but limited by the borders of the sphere, of the soul, particle. That is why the stanza says, Thou art myself. That is soul, is the spirit, the son of the father, his likeness, copy, shadow. To have clothed in something? Means to accept some covers, some shape. The spirit takes the shape of a sphere, the soul. Soul, is a horse, vihan, wagon, and the spirit, a rider. Horse, wagon obeys to the movements of rider. To the day, be with us when thou shalt re-become myself and others, thyself and me. Souls, elementary particles, will exist until the end of Mahamanvantara and will disappear with the onset of Mahapralaya, that is the day, be with us. At this point, the souls will dissolve in the one spirit, and all will become the one. The builders, these are the souls, sparks. The builders, having donned their first clothing, this indicates that there is a directly birth of souls, in their original form. Radiant Earth, it's the very image of the manifested universe, unlike the sky, the symbol of pure space, devoid of any signs of manifestation. Builders. Rhine over men. Means that people are entirely due to the features of manifestation of these builders, elementary particles, as builders? Being by themselves? are at the heart of people. 36, almost five centuries BC. Leucippus, the instructor of Democritus, maintained that space was filled eternally with atoms actuated by a ceaseless motion, the latter generating in due course of time, when those atoms aggregated, rotatory motion through mutual collisions producing lateral movements. Epicurus and Lucretius taught the same, only adding to the lateral motion of the atoms the idea of affinity in occult teaching. The Secret Doctrine, Prologue. 37. Dot 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 an outbreathing of the unknown essence produces the world, and an inhalation causes it to disappear. This process has been going on from all eternity, and our present universe is but one of an infinite series, which had no beginning and will have no end. H. P. Blavatsky, Isis Unveiled, Volume 2. The One is an unbroken circle, ring, with no circumference, for it is nowhere and everywhere, the One is the boundless plane of the circle, manifesting a diameter only during the Manvantaric periods, the One is the indivisible point found nowhere, perceived everywhere during those periods. Catechism of the Occult, taken from, The Secret Doctrine, by H. P. Blavatsky. Fohat is thus the dynamic energy of cosmic ideation, or, regarded from the other side, it is the intelligent medium, the guiding power of all manifestation, the thought divine transmitted and made manifest the dianchons, the architects of the visible world. The Secret Doctrine, by H. P. Blavatsky, Prologue. 09. The Structure and the Quality of Elementary Particles. Yin and Yang. Among all previously listed before the synonyms of the occult term soul we should consider the most scientific of all the notion, elementary particle. In the space, once very, very long time ago elementary particles of varying quality appeared. What is the quality and the structure of them? 1. The structure of elementary particles. Any elementary particle is a sphere. Regardless of the quality, the radius any of them is the same for all existing particles. You should not to imagine the particle as a dense formation with solid walls. No, the particle is immersed in ether. A particle, is a, 
point of contact of creator, it is something. Ether, energy, filling the sphere at any given time, belongs only to this particle. All other particles cannot at this moment in any way pretend to this ether, filling the particle. Every particle has a dual relationships with ether, energy information. A certain amount of ether disappears, destroys, at unit of time in any particle. This process occurs in the central part of the particle, in the zone of destruction. Concurrently, each particle in a unit of time creates a certain amount of ether. Energy ether appears in the central part of the elementary particle, in the zone of creation, and moves towards its periphery. Thus the flow of energy ether, produced in the central part of the sphere, and moving towards the periphery, forms the body of the elementary particle. A zone of destruction does not distinguish between her own ether, arising in it, and moving from the center to the periphery, as well as the ether, which may come into the particle from outside. This zone? Does not care? What ether destroys in it? The main is, with a certain speed to destroy ether that enters into it. As you will find out later, this illegibility of a zone of destruction is the basis of a very curious law of nature, the law of transformation of external quality of particles. In turn, this law is so important and is the reason of so many natural phenomena that its role of a universal scale is difficult to overestimate. We will not go into details, but we give a simple example. Stars emit light only through the action of the law of transformation. In other words, because a zone of destruction in elementary particles can absorb not only their own, and external for them ether. Ether, filling particles, is no different from the free ether, outside the particles. It as though permeates every particle, imbues it like a sponge. Elementary particles like ephemeral spheres suspended there. However, ether filling any particle is its own and other particles can't absorb that ether that fills at this moment given particle. Only the ether that goes beyond the sphere becomes available for absorption by others. In all elementary particles, of whatever quality, energy ether moves from the center to the periphery. The particles, are not closed form. They are open for entry of ether into them from the outside. Ether, which is outside the boundaries of the particle does not belong to the particle and it in no way connected with it. As for ether emitted by particles with repulsion field, it ceases to have anything to do with the particle immediately after being emitted. But ether, that fills the particle at given time, belongs only to it. While moving the particles with the field of attraction they continue to make up for the lack of ether occurring in them, absorbing it in the course of the movement from the surrounding ether field. When moving the particles with the field of repulsion they do not stop to emit appearing in them an excess of ether. 2. The quality of elementary particles. The quality of elementary particle, it's the ratio of created and destroyed in it the ether per unit of time. We can say it in another way, the ratio of the speed of creation and the speed of disappearance, destruction. There is a huge range of values for the quantity characterizing the speed of destruction in the various particles. But the magnitude of the speed of creation of ether can take only three possible values. They correspond to the blue, yellow and red colors. We used to treat the color as a characteristic pertaining only to the photons of the visible range of the frequency scale. However, in fact, the visible photons, it is just one type of elementary particles. And our visual analyzers receive information in the form of visible photons. And they don't use the particles of other quality. But, nevertheless, absolutely every existing elementary particle has red, yellow or blue color, no matter how much it disappears into the ether. Red color corresponds to the highest speed of creation of ether from the possible blue the smallest from the possible, and yellow, the speed intermediate between these two. These are the three primary colors. There are yet three additional, but more about color theory we will discuss in the future. Our visual analyzers detect not only how much the coming to them visible photons create ether, but also how much they absorb. Thus, 
the quality of elementary particle, is the ratio in the particle two units, one of which characterizes the speed of creation of the ether in it, and the other, the speed of destruction. The outward manifestation of the quality of the particle is the presence either field of attraction or field of repulsion, and the value of existing fields due to the ratio in the particle the speed of creation of ether and the speed of destruction. In what follows, we often will meet the concept of quality and to work with it. However, as you can see, in addition to the quality of the particle, there is just the outward manifestation of their quality. And then, and both are very important for the understanding of natural processes and phenomena. Perhaps in the future we will call the quality of the particles as an internal quality of the particle, and the outward manifestation an external quality. Although, we will do this only for convenience and brevity of statement, not more. And when possible, the concepts will be left of their true names. Fields of attraction characterize the particles where the amount of destroyed ether is more than created. The surrounding ether, in which the particle with the field of attraction is immersed, comes into it in the area of contact the ether field with the wall of the particle and ether surrounding the particle fills a rising void and moving in the direction of the particle. Ether flow moving toward the particle, this is a field of attraction. At each point of the surface of particle per unit time fed the same amount of ether. Fields of repulsion present in the particles whose amount of created ether is greater than amount of absorbed. The particle primarily destroys the own ether, that it produces by itself. Staying in the particle after destruction an excess of creating ether emits by particle surface without. This flow of energy emitted by the particle pushes the ether surrounding the walls of the particle. Ether flow moving away from the particle surface, this is a field of repulsion. Each point of the surface of the particles emitted per unit of time the same quantity of ether. The value of the field of attraction is greater, the more ether in a unit of time absorbing the particle from the surrounding area, that is then higher the speed of absorption. Don't confuse the absorption of ether with its destruction. Accordingly, the value of the repulsion field is greater, the more per unit of time, this particle emitted the energy into the ambient ether field, that is then higher the speed of emission. We should not mix such concepts as the emission of ether and its creation. In the future, generally speaking about the fields of attraction and fields of repulsion, we can sometimes use the term, force field. This term is quite popular in the scientific literature. Why invent something new that perhaps will get not accustomed? We should mention that the existing in the esoteric literature, in the same treatise on the Tao, for example, a reference of the yin and yang, refers specifically to the particles with different force fields. Yin and Yang, are two connected drops, black with a white circle in the center, Yin. And white, with a black circle, Yang. Yin, is an esoteric symbol of all existing in the universe of elementary particles, souls. With the fields of attraction. Here, the black color means that the destruction of the ether spirit, in the particle goes on faster its creation. Yang, it's an image of elementary particles, souls, with the fields of repulsion. The predominance of white over black, said that the creation of the ether goes on faster destruction. In the esoteric literature, the light, symbolizes the spirit, ether, and darkness, its absence. Yang, as it said in there, Tao Te Ching, is in heat is a source of rage. Rage in our language connects with the heating, even though our blood in anger, the words anger and fire can be considered cognate. The heating is directly related to the process of emission of ether. Yin grows scanty, that is, loses something. In this case, there is the analogy with the process of disappearance of ether exceeding the creative process. Yin, the particles with the fields of attraction is a black drop with a white circle. Yang, the particles with the fields of repulsion, is a white drop with a black circle. Black color here, is a symbol of destruction of the ether. White, is a symbol of creation of the ether. 
in the books of Alice Bailey can often find the concept of quality. We are talking about one and the same. 3. A size of elementary particle. A size of elementary particles is incredibly small. Elementary particles build the chemical elements. The chemical elements itself, are the tiny formations, compared such as the human body. The size of elementary particles on the scale of the chemical element is similar to the size of a human body on the scale of a planet. 10. The principles of behavior of ether, energy information. Ether, poured in the space, is free ether, if we may say so, in contrast to ether, locked in the particles. Free energy flows from body to body, bathes them, like waves in the ocean. But it and the other in their physical properties are absolutely identical to each other. This means that and free, and locked, equally subordinate to the laws, principles, that controls the behavior of the ether. The number of such basic principles is just two. Here, we are talking specifically about the physical properties of ether, but not on its information content, as ether, is the spirit, and the spirit, that is, information, and for each particle information being born in her is its own. You can substitute the word ether with the concept of, energy. And you can say, for example, not the ethereal field, but the field of energy, or energetic one. The meaning does not change. 1. The principal one in the ethereal field the voids don't occur. All existing in the universe ether seeks to evenly fill each point in space. Hence, the first principle, in the ethereal field the voids do not occur. This expression means that if at any point in space ether is destroyed, so surrounding ether field flows in a given direction, creating a stream. How is it going the movement of ether in the direction of its deficiency? Ether, coterminous with the place where the destruction is, aspires there. As a result, the place where he just was is exempt. And on his place, ether aspires, which coterminous with it. And in its place moves ether, located further away from the place of destruction. And so on. As a result to the place of arising lack from the environment an ethereal flow is moving. This rule also applies to elementary particles. They also have not voids, the space that is not filled with ether. This regularity of behavior of ether is the basis of the mechanism of gravity, attraction to each other elementary particles, and the bodies of all sizes, consisting of them. 2. The principle to in the etheric field areas with the excessive density don't occur ether does not shrink or expand. Its concentration anywhere, in any point of the ethereal field of the universe is the same. The second principle, in the ethereal field areas with excessive density don't occur, means that if at any point in space ether arises, that surrounding field begins to move away from it. We can say that the arising ether pushes surrounding. This principle, like the previous one, applies also to ether in the elementary particles. It is the basis of the mechanism of anti-gravity, repulsion of objects. 11. The fields of attraction and repulsion, the outward manifestation of the quality of elementary particles. If in the particles ether only disappeared, and did not arise, then they would receive per unit of time from the surrounding space only as much as the particle must to destroy. Similarly, if the ether in the particles only appeared and did not destroy, the particles would emit per unit of time as much as they created. However, in reality, the following occurs. Ether arising in the particles the very same particle creating it primarily uses for the destruction. Because, moving from the periphery to the center point, Ether meets on the way a zone of destruction, where its necessary quantity vanishes per unit of time. If the speed of destruction is greater than the speed of creation, all creating ether, is expended. And plus, there is still a lack of ether, which must destroy in the particle per unit of time. This deficiency comes to the particle from the surrounding ethereal field. If the speed of creation is more than the speed of destruction, in the particle an excess of ether arises, and it emits into the environment. 
We think you already guessed that ether coming to particles with a lack of ether, this is known to science fields of attraction, gravitational fields. Accordingly, ether emitted particles, with its excess, this is unrecognized by science fields of repulsion, anti-gravitational fields. Note, ether moves towards the particles with the fields of attraction not because they attracted it to them, but in accordance with the fact that, in the ethereal field voids don't occur. Ether is always moving where next to it there is a gap in the ethereal field. We can say that it is flowing into the particles with the fields of attraction. Alternatively, such particles we can call the absorbing ether. Similarly, ether moves away from the particles with the fields of repulsion not because they push it. In accordance with the principle of, in the ethereal field areas with excessive density do not occur, it always moves away from the place where in the ethereal field superfluous ether appears. It flows from the particles with the fields of repulsion. And these particles we should call as emitting ether. Ether emitted by the particles, or coming to them, these are ethereal flows. Other synonymous names, are power fields, ethereal waves. In any case, it is ether moving in the space. Fields of attraction and repulsion are the only possible species of ether flows. The presence of field of attraction or repulsion, and the value of either, or else, characterizes the quality of elementary particles. Exactly the principles of conduct of ether serve the cause of arising in the universe ethereal flows. The fields of attraction and repulsion of the particles, are the only possible types of the ethereal flows, moving in space. This means that the cause of origin of the ethereal flows is either admission to the particles of ether or its repulsion. A zone of destruction in the particles like imbibes ether, where it is plunged. If the particle absorbing or emitting ether, does not rest in space, but moves, generated by it an ethereal flow will generally repeat the trajectory of its motion. Ether comes to particles from all sides and emits in all directions. As the distance from the particle, the volume of the space surrounding it concentrically increases. And the closer to the particle, respectively, it concentrically reduced. In this regard the nearer to the particle, the higher the speed of the absorbing or emitting ether. Accordingly, it's the further from the particle, the lower its speed. The smaller the volume of space through which ether moves towards the particle, the higher will be the rate of flow. You can compare the speed of flow of ether with the flow rate of water in the water pipe. The smaller the diameter is, the higher the speed of the water is. Similarly, it's closer to the particle, the higher the speed of the emitted or entering ether. The situation is similarly with ether emitted by the particles. Closer to the particle, the speed of the emitted ether is higher, further, below. A particle, is a sphere, and if to move away from it, the volume of space surrounding the particle will grow concentrically. The further away from the particle, the greater is the volume of the ether surrounding the particle. Each particle with the field of attraction absorbs ether from the ambient, ethereal field with a certain velocity. The speed of absorption of ether by particles, this is the initially inherent for this particle the value of the fields of attraction. However, the further away from the particle, the greater volume of ether will surround her. The farther away from the particles, the smaller will be the speed with which ether will approach to this particle, that is the smaller the rate of ethereal flow will be, that is the lower the value of fields of attraction will be. Consequently, the gravity field of the particle has two values, first, the initially inherent, measured at a certain distance from the particle. The same we can say about the field of repulsion. Its value decreases with distance. The further away from the particle, the greater the volume of ether surrounding the particle. Each particle with the field of repulsion emits ether into the surrounding ethereal field with a certain speed. The rate of emission of ether by particle, this is the initially inherent value of the repulsion field. However, the farther away from the particle, the greater volume of ether will surround it. Accordingly, 
the farther away from the particle, the smaller will be the rate at which ether will move away from the given particle, that is the smaller the rate of the ether stream, that is the smaller will be the value of repulsion field. As in the case of the field of repulsion there are two values, initially inherent, and measured at a certain distance. 12. The difference between creation of the ether and emission, as well as between destruction and absorption. We would like to draw your attention to one important point. In every particle flow to opposite directed processes, creation of the ether and its destruction, disappearance. On the other hand, the particles yin absorb ether, and yang particles emit it. We ask you not to mix such concepts as the creation of ether, and its emission, and destruction of the ether, and its absorption. In each particle there are processes of creation and destruction of ether, but not every particle absorbs the ether, and not each emits it. Yin particles absorb and yang particles emit. We can assume that the processes of creation and destruction of the ether have a universal character, while the absorption and emission, this is the characteristics of a particular type of particles. 13. The triple meaning of the concepts matter and spirit. Some concepts in the occult literature have double or sometimes triple meaning. This feature is, for example, for such terms as, night and day of Brahma, inhalation and exhalation of Brahma, evolution and involution. The same we can say about such fundamental categories as the matter and the spirit. On the one hand, the matter, it is a symbol of the absolute as the indestructible whole, the space, where the visible universe just also emerges. And the spirit, is the mental foundation of the universe, the mind of matter, and its changed state. But however, the particles yin, absorbing ether, are called the mother, and the spirit yang particles that emit the ether. To explain the reasons for such names is easy enough. Ether, is the spirit. In the particles yin is low speed of creation of ether, of spirit manifestation, but high rate of its destruction. In the particles yang is the opposite. The speed of creation is high and the rate of destruction is low. It turns out that in the particles yang the aspect of the spirit manifests itself strongly, and in the particles yin, poorly. That is why the particles yang usually we call as the spirit. While the particles yin, matter, because the process of destruction of the spirit and returning to the original state dominates in them. It's the return to the clean, unsullied by the spirit matter. And lastly, we tell you about another meaning of matter and spirit. Conglomerates of the elementary particles of each underlying plan with respect to the particles of overlying plans, act as a material principle, that is matter. At the same time, conglomerates of the particles of overlying plans with respect to the underlying plans, it's the spiritual origin, the spirit. To explain this fact is very easy. The percentage of the particles with the fields of repulsion, yang, from the lower plans to the upper gradually increases, and the percentage of the particles with the fields of attraction yin, reduces. Thus from the lower levels to the top the value of the repulsion fields increases and the magnitude of the attraction fields decreases. As recently mentioned, yin particles in the occult literature we name as the mother, and particles yang, as the spirit. It turns out that each overlying plan with respect to the underlying we should regard as the spirit and the underlying in this case would be for it the mother. Each top level of any plan with respect to the lower level of the same plan is the spirit and the lower level for it is the matter. This means that, for example, physical plan for all other plans, it's the matter, and all others for it is the spirit. Astral is the matter for all plans except physical. Mental, the third, is material for the buddhic, atmic and monadic, and for the physical and astral, the spirit. Buddhic, is the matter for the atmic and monadic, and the spirit for mental, astral and physical. Atmic plan, is the matter for monadic, for others it, the spirit. And finally, the monadic is spiritual for all other plans. 
the mineral kingdom we should consider as the matter in relation to all the other kingdoms of nature. Representatives of the vegetable kingdom, it's definitely more spiritual. And all because in the conglomerates of astral particles which forms the guiding principle of any plant, the percentage of particles yang is larger and of particles yin is smaller. And the value of the fields of repulsion is higher and of attraction fields is less than in the conglomerates of the physical plan. The spirit equates to higher planes and the matter, to the lower. The spirit refers to a thin, that is rarefied substance, and the matter, a dense, in other words, gross. Please note that we attribute these concepts to the substance. Modern esotericist calls by the matter the bodies and objects around, as well as his own apparent dense body. But the spirit for him, her, is the substance of, invisible world, not perceived by any of our senses. In some ways, this view is close to the truth. The particles with repulsion fields have the ability to create the sparseness of the substance, because they continuously postpone the surrounding particles by emitting ether. At the same time, particles with fields of attraction compact the material because they absorb the ether, which can separate the particles. Therefore, the substance in the gaseous state we may consider as more spirit, ethereal. In comparison with the substance in the solid state, which, in turn, to the gas is more material. Though, still, describing the density of matter, the best way to say, sparse or dense matter, and not spiritual or material. However, every time you meet in the literature the reference to material or spiritual spheres, know that the spiritual areas in this case are those that produce the ether, and the material, those that consume it. In the series of books of Alice Bailey, which has a general name, Treatise on the Seven Rays, the matter and spirit just often act from a position of the second and the third of the above meanings. For example, when in their, esoteric psychology, refers to the mutual influence of the rays of the matter, soul and spirit. These three concepts we should interpret in terms of the third meaning. The matter in this case, is the particles of the lowest planes of human being. The physical plane the astral and mental. The soul, is the conglomerates of the particles of the buddhic plan, and the spirit, of the atmic and monadic. The ray, is the same thing as an elementary particle. 14. Shiva and Brahma, Cain and Abel, destroyers and creators. Vishnu corresponds to the Sattva Guna. Brigamuni checked this kicking the Vishnu by foot in the chest. This not put Vishnu out of balance and the Brahma manifested Raja and Shiva Dharma Guna. The Hindu texts narrate so. Vishnu, Sanskrit, comprehensive, in Hinduism is one of the most important and most revered gods, with Shiva and Brahma, he was a divine triad, Trimurti, Vishnu, is the keeper of the universe, majestic and terrible at the same time, but less formidable than Shiva. Vshivite, devotees of Vishnu. Consider him the supreme god, one of his epithets, supreme god. The Hindu concept of the absolute or the ultimate reality, Brahman is sometimes depicted as Vishnu. According to one of the myths from the navel of Vishnu emerged the lotus flower, and seated in the center of the flower Brahma began the act of creation. The very name, Shiva, emerged as one of the euphemistic epithet of Rura, developed to propitiate the terrible god. But here and after the Rudra became an epithet of Shiva. Residence of Rudra is in the north, away from the other gods, correlated with the east, explains the interpretation of the deity as an alien, despite the fact that he was considered as the father of the gods of the storm of Marats, to the staff of the Vedic gods. About the complexity of his inclusion in the main Hindu pantheon indirectly indicates the legend of the destruction by him of Daksha's sacrifice, a legend which, according to some assumptions, was the subject of early Indian ritual drama Natak. According to this legend, Mahabharata, Vishnu Purana, Vayu Purana, when the deity of Aditya the Daksha performs a sacrifice to the Himalayas, having invited to a feast all the gods, Except Rudra Shiva, the last with his horde arranged pogrom and destroy the victim, 
and agrees to restore it only when he will receive a share due to him. Having achieved his Shiva enters into the supreme pantheon, occupying the gradually all the higher place and pushing into the background many of the major. So Vishnu, is the preserver of the universe, Brahma, the creator, Shiva, the destroyer. Vishnu, is Sattva, Brahma, Brahman, Rajas, Shiva, Dharmas. As we have said, the matter, the spirit and the soul, are in doubt concepts in the occult. On the one hand, they serve as the definitions for the global categories as the original substance, the matter, its altered state, the spirit, and elementary particles, souls. On the other hand, matter, spirit and soul, these are concepts that we use to characterize the quality of the particles in their organized systems, representatives of the various kingdoms of nature. The particles absorbing the spirit, ether, referred to as the matter and emitting the spirit, ether, and will be named the spirit. Accordingly, conglomerates of souls, where the particles of the type matter dominate from the point of view of the occult, we should call as the matter. From the position of the Hun, they have a dharmasic nature. Bodies, where the particles of the type spirit dominate, we should call as the spirit. From the position of the Hun, their nature is rajasic. As for the bodies where the particles of both types are equally, we should attribute them to the type of, soul. This is the true sattva, that is a harmony of rajas and dharmas. Thus, the trimurti of Hinduism, Shiva, Brahma and Vishnu, the three of the Godhead, which embody the force center in terms of their quality. The particles and the bodies formed by them, dharmas, rajas and sattva. Vishnu, is the deity of harmony the Bodhisattva. Brahma and Shiva are consistent with such Christian characters as Abel and Cain. Or could it be otherwise, is the yin and yang. Brahma, is Rajas, Abel, Yang. Shiva, is Dharmas, Cain, Yin. Brahma, it's an evolution, exhale, death, Manvantara. Just this creative act of the spirit forms the universe. That is why Brahma, creator. Shiva, is an involution, inhalation, night, pralaya, dissolution. This is, the destruction of the creative impulse. That is why Shiva, the destroyer. The proof that exactly the Shiva is the Cain is the fact that Rudra Shiva captures part of the sacrifices of Vishnu and Brahma with the battle. The idea of sacrifice in Hinduism, in this case resonates with the idea of sacrifice in the Old Testament. There Cain and Abel brought the sacrifice to the god, and Cain kills Abel because God had preferred Abel's incense smoke. Shiva also produces the sacrifice of himself to fight. Incense smoke of sacrifice, is ether, the manifested word, the spirit, and it lacks to Shiva, Cain, so he takes it from Brahma, Abel, and Vishnu. So after all, it's the case with the particles yin. They created ether a little, so they absorb external. Let's talk more about Cain and Abel. Eve, Mule Prakriti, mother, gave birth to two sons, Cain and Abel. Cain and Abel brought gifts to the god, Cain, fruits, Abel, sheep. And the god preferred the Abel's gift. What does all this mean? Cain and Abel, are the souls, particles, arisen in the body of Eve, in the primordial matter, yin and yang. For all their properties, they, are the exact opposite of each other. Calling of Cain, is the earth. This alone indicates that the soul, called Cain, immersed into this element. So there is, yin particles in the heavenly bodies are the most. What means, the God had preferred the gift of the Abel and Cain's one did. Incense smoke, fragrance, pleasing to the God, it's the word of God spirit, nascent in every soul. Particles able generate a bunch of incense smoke, give birth to a lot of spirit. In particles came the word of God is born poorly, at the end they do not emit it at all, and absorb. Cain killed Abel out of jealousy. The God said to him, what did you do? The voice of thy brother's blood is crying to me from the ground. And now you are cursed from the earth which hath opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from thy hand, Genesis, 
Chapter 410. Of course, the murder in reality was not. It is an allegory. The voice of brother's blood, is the word of God, born in Abel and coming through him, the emitted spirit. Because the particles Abel give birth to a lot of the spirit, and Cain, to a little, recent absorb its brother's voice, that is, the word of God is gone out through Abel. It is through the souls of Cain the excess cash of Abel flows down into the earth, which has opened its mouth, that is, returns to the matter gave birth to it. Remember stanza Zion. In stanza 4.1 can read. Listen, ye sons of the earth, to your instructors, the sons of the fire. Sons of the earth, are the particles yin, matter, shiva, cane. Sons of the fire, are the particle yang, spirit, brahma, abel. Sons of the earth, that is yin particles literally. Listen. Or, take heed, to the sons of the fire that is yang particles, because they have to absorb the ether emitted by them. We remind you that ether, is information. And now a few words about the destroyers and creators mentioned in stanza 6.6, .6. there were battles fought between the creators and the destroyers, and battles fought for space. Also, in the comments to the stanza 7 Eplovitsky speaks of the creators and the devourers, and the builders and destroyers. All these epithets refer to the fiery lives, which are also sparks, monads, atoms, force centers, elementary particles. Creators, builders, are the yang. Eaters, destroyers, are the yin. Atom. It creates and kills, it is self-generating and self-destroying, it brings into being, and annihilates. The Secret Doctrine, 1. Spontaneous Generation of the Atom elementary particle, is a creation of ether in it, self-destruction, is a disappearance, destruction, of ether. There is everything that we talk about the functions of any elementary particle. 15. 7 plans, these are the totalities of the elementary particles. In esoteric literature, particularly in the books of E. Blavatsky and A. Bailey, it's often mentioned such concept as the plans. What is it, what are they and how many they are all? A plan, it is the totality of souls, elementary particles, occupied within the space during the initial period of the universe is approximately the same location. Under the same location of the particles should here understand the being within the same spherical area of the space. In comparison, for example, with our solar system, this spherical region has unimaginably huge size. In addition, within a plan, the particles each of the three primary colors have the similar magnitude of the force field. The particles belonging to the same plan can be anywhere in the space, but they will still belong to a particular plan. Besides this within the same plan the particles of each of three main colors are characterized the similar in size the force fields. Though nevertheless, initially, the particles belonging to the same plan, occupied in the universe the same sphere of space. Every plan, is the range of values for amount of ether, disappearing, destroying, in the particle of the particle per unit of time. This means that within the same plan there are the particles as with the more values of the speed of disappearing ether, and with the less. But in general, the difference in values is not very high which makes it possible to attribute such particles to the same plan. Even though the fact that within the plan there are the particles of three different colors, red, yellow and blue, they are all characterized by the similar speed of destruction ether. Repeat once more. As you already know, the particles, in addition to the disappearance of the ether in them, yet are doing it. Therefore, Within each plan, there are the particles with the same values of disappearing ether, but with different, of the created. Three particles within a certain plan may have the same value of disappearing ether, but at the same time one is blue, the other, is yellow, and the third, is red. Depending on the quality of elementary particles in the universe there are six simple plans and one comprehensive, in total seven. Each simple plan combines elementary particles with the approximately same magnitude of disappearing ether. 
Let us enumerate all existing in the universe simple plans in order of decreasing the magnitude of amount of disappearing ether at forming it particles. 1. Physical plan, 6th, 2. Astral, 5th, 3. Mental, 4th, 4. Buddhic, 3rd, 5. Atmic, 2nd, 6. Monadic, 1st. From the physical plan to the monadic in the particles gradually reduce the amount of ether vanishing per unit of time. In other words, the speed of destruction of ether decreases. If we consider the listed plans in the form of scale, each division, pointing to the certain value of the rate of destruction of ether matches three types of particles having different speed of creation. These three types of particles correspond to the three primary colors, blue, yellow and red. Esoteric sources indicated that plans are not 6, and 7. We say that plans are 6. How to explain this discrepancy? It's very simple. There is no discrepancy. Plans are really only 7, not 6. Only 6 of these plans that just be called are simple. Seventh plan, is comprehensive, log oic. This is the only plan, which is a mixture of the particles of all six simple plans. It consists of organized systems formed by souls, elementary particles, of varying quality. The simplest representatives of the log oic plan are the chemical elements of the vegetable kingdom. And why is not the mineral, for example? Yes, because the chemical elements of the mineral kingdom contain the elementary particles of only one plan, physical. How to determine where one plan ends and the other begins? We consider that theoretically make it pretty easy. First, you need to establish the scale of the speed of destruction of ether for all existing particles in the universe. Thereafter, this range we should divide into six equal parts. That part of the range, where the speed will be the highest, corresponds to the sixth, the physical plan. The lowest speed of destruction corresponds to the monadic plan, the first one. The remaining four plans locate between these two. 16. Seven rays, seven brothers, seven sephiris, seven rishis, seven sons, seven spirits, seven principles, all these are the seven types of the souls, elementary particles. Seven rays, seven brothers, seven sephiroth, the seven rishis, seven sons, seven spirits, seven principles. The list is longer, and in what follows, we present the other synonyms. We not by chance have collected these expressions and lined up in a row. They all represent the same thing, seven qualitatively distinct each other emanations of God. If to express a more familiar language, it is nothing like the seven colors of the rainbow. However, it should also be noted here that, in the rainbow, that is in the spectrum, seven colors and not six. The seventh color, as in the case of the seventh plan, is a comprehensive, combining six simple. Although if we will be completely accurate, only three main colors from six simple, red, yellow and blue, we can consider as truly simple. Three additional, orange, green and purple are themselves combinations of the main colors. However, three additional colors, orange, green and purple, can also be attributed to a number of simple, together with the main colors, as compared with the seventh color, complex, they are much easier. The seventh color, it's a rainbow, spectrum, all six colors together. As for the clearly expressed blue stripe in the rainbow, it's reason, the blue color of the atmosphere. Available oxygen in the ozone status and oxygen in the molecules of water are an additional source of blue photons. Admixture to the blue of infrared lightens the flow and makes the color blue, that is light blue. This explanation is brief, see more in the other books of this series Esoteric Natural Science. Devoted to questions of physics, for example, ethereal mechanics, or optics. The most detailed demonstration of the meaning of what are the seven rays, we can find in the pages of the works of writer occultist Alice Bailey, a disciple of one of the Himalayan Mahatmas, Jhil Kul. 
the cycle of her books just wears this name, a treatise on the seven rays. The great breath digs through space seven holes until it occurs them to circumdurate during Mantara, Secret Doctrine I, 147. Seven holes in Tila, are also one of the names of the seven rays. Holes in space, a very appropriate way, as if we are really talking about these holes, windows through which the flows of the spirit stream out into the world. Water of life, that is the spirit, pours through the holes of the space, into this world and the flood it in such way, that is generates. So where from this expression, the seven rays, has gone? And what is the ray? 3. The hour had not yet struck, the ray had not yet flashed into the germ, the emtripadma had not yet swollen. 4. Her heart had not yet opened for the one ray to enter, thence to fall, as 3 into 4, into the lap of mare, stands as 2.3 semicolon 2.4. 3. Darkness radiates light, and light drops one solitary ray into the waters, into the mother deep. The ray shoots through the virgin egg, the ray causes the eternal egg to thrill, and drop the non-eternal germ, which condenses into the world egg. 4. The three fall into the four. The radiant essence becomes seven inside, seven outside. Dot. Stanza 3.3 semicolon 3.4. Matter I Padma, the matter, however, as well as the darkness, water, mother deep and virgin egg. All these words are synonyms of the first aspect of the Creator, the original substance. From the agency of light, the ray of the ever darkness, sprang in space the reawakened energies. Stanza 4.3. Light is the spirit of the second aspect of the Creator, a product of the Mother, her firstborn Son. The ray of the ever darkness? Is the spirit, he is light, fire, ether, energy and information. Just a ray, is a soul, a private, a concrete manifestation of the total, one spirit. Why do we use the word ray? Probably, it's because in real life the light moves in the form of rays. And the ray, is a form of the path traveled by the light particles. Perhaps the word ray we use also because the movement characterizes the light, the spirit, namely, by the circumduration in time. In each elementary particle, the soul, it at first appears, and then disappears. In general, in the occultism, the movement, is one of synonymous names for the spirit. The spirit, light, rotates. Perhaps this is why the light moving in the souls is called by the ray. And every soul, this is a concrete, separate, ray of light, spirit. In the Alice Bailey's, esoteric psychology, is another name used for the rays, a, stream of energy, emanating from the God Almighty. Or there is another he called the, line of force, or simply, the force. So, when you find in the works of this author these expressions, keep in mind that this is the same thing as the soul. Then come the sons, the seven fighters, the one, the eight left out, and his breath which is the light maker, stanza 4.5. The seven fighters, this is one of the synonyms to refer to the seven rays, seven types of souls. Eighth son, eighth fighter, this is just the spirit itself taken in the generalized sense, which manifests itself in every of the remaining seven sons. The spirit himself is the son of the mother, her firstborn. However, it's taken generally, considered as a whole. It does not form a shape, that is does not form the elementary particles. That's why it was told that he had left aside. Dot 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 his breath which is the light maker, in fact, the very spirit. This is the breath and the fact that gives light. So, the seven rays, seven brothers, seven sephiroth, seven rishis, seven sons, seven spirits, seven principles, this is nothing like seven types of souls, seven types of elementary particles, which we can found at any level of any plan. With regard to specific physical reasons that particles of red, yellow and blue colors are combined to form three additional colors, orange, green and purple, 
and together they formed the six colors of the rainbow. We describe them in detail in the book devoted to the optics series Esoteric Natural Science. In the articles, relating the color theory and mechanism of the currents of the spectrum. Here we only mention that only moving particles can make the form of a rainbow. We say a few words about the inclusion of the concepts, seven Rishi, and, seven Sephiroth, into the list of synonyms for the seven types of souls. Rishi, sometimes, Psi, SKT. Psi, Seer, Sage, Sages in Hinduism, to whom the gods opened the Vedic hymns. Already in the Rig Veda we find seven main great Rishi. Some of Rishi are repeated in the number of Prajapati, of which was also first seven, then eight or even ten. To the very ancient features of the seven Rishis it belongs their identification with the seven stars of the Great Bear, based, perhaps, on the harmony of the words Rishi and Chaber al Greek. T. Lat. Ursus. Hence there is the tradition that the Rish is whoopy for the bears. Their number, seven, usually placed in connection with a number of different categories of priests mentioned in the Vedic texts, Wikipedia, the seven Rishis. The existence of the seven categories of the priests, or else the seven types of Rishi, is nothing but an indication for the existence of different groups of souls. Priest, is the one who communicates with God. Any soul, elementary particle, we can regard as a kind of bridge, a connection link between the internal plan of the Creator, and this manifested world. Hence the use of the image of the seven rishis as a symbol of the seven major types of shower, or the seven rays, in another way. 17. Conformity of seven rays to seven colors. Three main rays, one, will, two, love, and three, active intelligence, correspond to the three basic colors that exist in the universe, red, yellow and blue. As is known, one of these three colors, each of which indicates the amount of created ether per unit of time, speed of creation, characterize all the existing elementary particle souls. Ray 1 corresponds to red, ray 2, yellow, ray 3, blue. Besides the three major rays, there are four additional. All four are synthetic. Three of them consist of two colors, rays, and the fourth, of the six, three major and three additional ones. Five ray, concrete knowledge or science, corresponds to the green. It consists of the second and third rays, of yellow and blue colors. Six ray, devotion or idealism, is orange. It consists of yellow and red, of the second and the first rays. Seven ray, order and ceremonial magic, is a purple color. It consists of red and blue colors, of the first and the third rays. For ray, harmony through conflict, it's a synthetic ray, a spectrum, a synthesis of all six colors. It is composed of red, orange, yellow, green, blue and purple colors, which is nothing else than the one, two, three, four, five and six rays. And in this synthetic foray the forming it rays colors do not blend, each retains its identity. The quote from, Esoteric Psychology, Volume 1, Alice Bailey, A. The Three Rays of Aspect. We shall now express the ray purpose in the form of an ancient teaching preserved on leaves that are so old that the writing is slowly fading. I now translate it into modern language though much is lost thereby. The first purpose of deity ray I. Will or power. Behind the central sacred sun, hidden within its rays, a form is found. Within that form there glows a point of power which vibrates not as yet but shines as light electric. Fierce are its rays. It burns all forms, yet touches not the life of God incarnate. From the one who is the seven goes forth a word. That word reverberates along the line of fiery essence, and when it sounds within the circle of the human lives it takes the form of affirmation, an uttered fear to a word of power. Thus there is impressed upon the living mold the thought of the hidden, inexpressible ray name. Let dynamic power electric light, reveal the past, destroy the form that is, and open up the golden door.
This door reveals the way which leads towards the center where dwells the one whose name cannot be heard within the confines of our solar sphere. His robe of blue veils his eternal purpose, but in the rising and the setting sun his orb of red is seen. His word is power. His light, electric. The lightning is his symbol. His will is hidden in the counsel of his thought. Naught is revealed. His power is felt. The sons of men, reacting to his power, sent to the utmost bounds of light a question, why this blind power? Why death? Why this decay of forms? Why the negation of the power to hold? Why death, O mighty Son of God? Faintly the answer comes, I hold the keys of life and death. I bind and loose again. I, the destroyer, am. This Ray Lord is not yet in full expression, except as he causes destruction and brings cycles to an end. The monads of power are much fewer in number than any others. Egos upon the power ray are relatively not so few. They are characterized by a dynamic will, and their power within the human family works out as the force of destruction, but in the last analysis it is a destruction that will produce liberation. We shall see as we continue to study first tray egos and personalities that death and destruction are always to be found in their work, and hence the apparent cruelty and impersonality of their reactions. Form does not count with first ray types their energy produces death to form, but ushers in great periods of cyclic prolea. The first ray is the controller of the death drama in all kingdoms a destruction of forms which brings about release of power and permits, entrance into light through the gateway of death. The intent of the lord of the first ray is to stand behind his six brothers, and when they have achieved their purpose, to shatter the forms which they have built. This he does by passing his power through their bodies, and their united effort leads to abstraction and a return to the center whence the initial impulse came. The first ray purpose therefore is to produce death, and some idea of that purpose may be gleaned if we study some of the names by which the ray lord is called, the lord of death the opener of the door the liberator from form the great abstract of the fiery element producing shattering the crystallizer of the form the power that touches and withdraws the lord of the burning ground the will that breaks into the garden the ravisher of souls the finger of god the breath that blasts the lightning which annihilates the most high the qualities and characteristics of this lord who brings release may be gathered from the following six aphorisms which, an ancient legend says, his six brothers gave to him, as they begged him to hold his hand still they had had time to work out their purposes. 1. Kill out desire when desire has fulfilled its work. Thou art the one who indicates fulfillment. Quality. Clear vision. 2. Seek out the gentle way, O Lord of power. Wait for thy brother on the path of love. He builds the forms that can withstand thy power. Quality. Dynamic power. 3. Withhold the hand until the time has come. Then give the gift of death. O opener of the door. Quality. Sense of time. 4. Stand not alone, but with the many join thyself. Thou art the one, the isolated. Come forth unto thine own. Quality. Solitariness. 5. Lead thine own forth but learn to know thine own. Hate not attachment but see its plan and purpose. Quality. Detachment. 6. Through thee the life pulsates, the rhythm is imposed. The life is all. Love life in all its forms. Quality. Singleness of purpose. The six qualities enumerated above express the force of this ray as it makes its presence felt in the fourth kingdom in nature. The effects in other kingdoms differ, but we shall confine our attention to the standpoint of humanity. The purpose of the first ray, and its main work is to produce cessation and the death of all forms in all kingdoms in nature and on all planes. The energy of this ray lord brings about the death of an ant or of a solar system, of an organization, a religion, or a government, of a race type or of a planet. His will or purpose works out through the law of periodicity. The second purpose of deity ray. Love wisdom the word is issuing from the heart of God emerging from a central point of love. 
that word is love itself. Divine desire colors all that life of love. Within the human hierarchy, the affirmation gathers power and sound. The word in the beginning was. The word hath dwelt and dwells with God. In him was light. In him was life. Within his light we walk. His symbol is the thunder, the word that cycles down the ages. Some of the names of this ray lord which convey his purpose are as follows, the displayer of glory the lord of eternal love the cosmic magnet the giver of wisdom the radiance in the form the master builder the conferrer of names the great geometrician the one who hides the life the cosmic mystery the light bringer the son of God incarnate the cosmic Christ the legend tells us that the six brothers summarize his qualities in the following aphorisms, 1. Send forth the word and speak the radiant love of God. Make all men hear. Quality. Love divine. 2. Let the glory of the Lord shine forth. Let there be radiant light as well as radiant love. Quality. Radiance. 3. Draw to thyself the object of thy search. Pull forth into the light of day from out the night of time the one thou lovest. Quality. Attraction. 4. When light and love are shown forth then let the power within produce the perfect flower. Let the word that heals the form go forth. That secret word that then must be revealed. Quality. The power to save. 5. Salvation, light, and love, with the magnetic power of God, produce the word of wisdom. Send forth that word and lead the sons of men from off the path of knowledge on to the path of understanding. Quality. Wisdom. 6. Within the radius of the love of God, within the circle of the solar system, all forms, all souls, all lives revolve. Let each son of God enter into this wisdom. Reveal to each the oneness of the many lives. Quality. Expansion or inclusiveness. The third ray which is one that has a very long cycle, having been in manifestation since AD. 1425, has a direct effect upon the fifth root race, the Aryan, and has connected with it a set of curious phrases which express its purpose. The third purpose of deity Rei. Active intelligence or adaptability let the warden of the south continue with the building. Let him apply the force which will produce the shining living stone that fits into the temple's plan with right exactitude. Let him prepare the cornerstone and wisely place it in the north, under the eye of God himself, and subject to the balance of the triangle. Let the researcher of the past uncover the thought of God, hidden deep within the mind of the chimeras of love, and thus let him lead the Agnishvatvas, waiting within the place of darkness, into the place of light. Let the keeper of the sparks breathe with the breath divine upon the points of fire, and let him kindle to a blaze that which is hidden, that which is not seen, and so illumine all the spheres whereon God works. I would call attention to the fact that all I can do here is to put into words certain ancient symbols, and so emphasize the process, adopted by the early initiate teachers, of enunciating a word or sound, which produces a symbolic form which in its turn, is capable of translation into words. These must in their turn be comprehended intuitively and adapted to individual need, and thus be assimilated into the life practice. Otherwise these ancient and interesting ideas, these interpretative names, and these aphorisms, conveying the power of qualities, are worse than useless and serve but to increase responsibility. The capacity to see objective significances and then apply them to life is an expression of the true esoteric sense. If one studies these tabulations and phrases with care, they will be found to convey indication as to one's individual ray, life tendencies and purpose. If the appeal the various statements make an enter particular ray evoke an intuitive understanding on the part of the student, so that he recognizes himself his ray energy and aspects of his latent and deeply desired spiritual nature, then these communications I and making here as to purpose, name and quality will be profitable and useful. Some of the names of the Lord of the Third Ray indicate his use of force and his real nature. They are as follows, the keeper of the records. 
the Lord of Memory the Unifier of the Lower Four the Interpreter of that which is seen the Lord of Balance the Divine Separator the Discriminating Essential Life. The One Who Produces Alliance the Three-Sided Triangle 24 Books of Esoteric Philosophy Copyright Copyright 1998 Lucy Trust the Illuminator of the Lotus the Builder of the Foundation the Forerunner of the Light the One Who Veils and Yet Reveals the Dispenser of Time the Lord of Space the Universal Mind the Threefold Wick the Great Architect of the Universe and many others terms which indicate relation to light, to time, to space, to the manifested logos to matter and to the, power which evokes the form. If all these names are studied in connection with modern developments or modern culture and science, it will become apparent how potent and influential in our day and time is this particular ray life, and how his energies, having produced the tangible objective worlds, are turned to the manifestation of our modern civilization, with its material emphasis, its search as to the nature of time and space and that mental unfoldment which it is the glory and the destiny of our particular race to demonstrate. The qualities which characterize this ray lord might be enumerated in the following phrases. We must bear in mind that the seventh or synthetic characteristic of each of the rays is denoted by the ray name and is not specifically stated in the other six qualities. His six brothers, sons of the one father, chanted these injunctions to him on the day of his renewed activity on what we call the day of creation, 1. Produce the dual form and veil the life. Let form appear, and prove itself divine. All is of God. Quality. The power to manifest. 2. Conform the shell to that which dwells within. Let the world egg appear. Let ages pass, then let the soul appear. Let life emerge within a destined time. Quality. The power to evolve. 3. Let mind control. Let the clear shining of the sun of life reveal the mind of God, and set the shining one upon his way. Then lead him to the central point where all is lost within the light supernal. Quality. Mental illumination. 4. God and his form are one. Reveal this fact, O sovereign lord of form. God and his form are one. Negate the dual concept. Lend color to the form. The life is one, the harmony complete. Prove thus that to our one. Quality. The power to produce synthesis on the physical plane. 5. Produce the garment of the Lord, set forth the robe of many colors. Then separate that robe from that which hides behind its many folds. Take off the veiling sheaths. Let God be seen. Take Christ from off the cross. Quality. Scientific investigation. 6. Let the two paths converge. Balance the pairs of opposites and let the path appear between the two. God and the path and man are one. Quality. Balance. Thus the three major rays sum up in themselves the process of creation, of energizing, through the urge of the divine will, and the work of the four minor rays, as they are called though with no idea of the being lesser or greater, is to elaborate or differentiate the qualities of the life, and so produce the infinite multiplicity of forms which will enable the life to assume its many points of focus and express through the process of evolutionary manifestation its diverse characteristics. b. The four rays of attribute. The fourth purpose of deity ray of harmony, beauty, art color and yet no color now is seen. Sound and the soundless one meet in an infinite point of peace. Time and the timeless one negate the thoughts of men. But time is not. Form is there found, and yet the psychic sense reveals that which the form is powerless to hide, comma, the inner synthesis, the all-embracing prism, that point of unity which when it is duly reached reveals a further point where all the three are one, and not the two alone form and its soul are merged. The inner vision watches all the fusion, knows the divine relation and sees the two as one. But from that point of high attainment, a higher vision blazes forth before the opened inner eye. The three are one, and not alone the two. Pass on, O pilgrim on the way. In reading these words, 
the student must bear in mind that the antechamber has been left behind and man stands, when he has allowed a fourth ray to do its work and can therefore function on the fourth or buddhic plane, within the temple of the Lord. He has found a measure of light, but in that light he now sees light, and visions a greater revelation and brilliance. This now becomes the object of his search. He has mastered the uses of duality and has learnt to at one soul and body into one instrument for spirit. Now he passes on his way to achieve the greater synthesis. The Lord of the Fourth Ray has many names which warrant careful study and much consideration. In less than a hundred years this Lord of Harmonizing Power will have more influence and will offset some of the Saturn disruption of the first decanate of Aquarius. In the meantime a study of his names will produce a simplification of his efforts and build up a body of constructive thought which will facilitate his work when he is again in active manifestation. He is always, however, more or less in power where the human family is concerned, for there is a numerical alliance between the fourth ray, the fourth creative hierarchy, or the human monads, and the fourth kingdom in nature. His power is always consequently active. The perceiver on the way the link between the three and three the divine intermediary the hand of God the hidden one the seed, that is the flower the mountain whereon form dies the light within the light the corrector of the form the one who marks the passing of the way the master the dweller in the holy place the lower than the three, the highest of the four the trumpet of the Lord. The aphorisms connected with this fourth ray are not easy of comprehension. They require an exercise of the intuition and are conveyed by six short and excessively brief commands uttered, curiously enough, late in the creative period and at the time when the fourth creative hierarchy came into incarnation, 1. Speak low the word. Speak low. Quality. Power to penetrate the depths of matter. 2. Champion desire. Give what is needed to the seeker. Quality. The dual aspects of desire. 3. Lower the thread. Unfold the way. Link man with God. Arise. Quality. Power to reveal the path. 4. All flowers are thine. Settle the roots in mud, the flowers in sun. Prove mud and sun, and roots and flowers are one. Quality. Power to express divinity. Growth. 5. Roll and return, and roll again. Cycle around the circle of the heavens. Prove all is one. Quality. The harmony of the spheres. 6. Color the sound. Sound forth the color. Produce the notes and see them pass into the shades, which in their turn produce the sounds. Thus all are seen as one. Quality. The synthesis of true beauty. This instruction on the rays is of deeper significance than can as yet be comprehended. Careful systematic study and a sane refraining from the forming of rapid deductions will be the wisest way in which to approach its consideration. It is not possible for me to deal with the definite human psychological applications at this early stage. I am occupied with starting a general outline, with the impartation of ideas, with the grounding of a few basic concepts in the consciousness of the reader, and with an attempt to clothe this most abstruse and difficult subject in such a form that some new rhythm of thought may be set in motion, and some new realizations be grasped and held. These concern at present a prototypal cosmic process and will lead eventually to an understanding of the part an individual may play in a stupendous cosmic whole. We begin with the universal and end with the particular, which is ever the truly occult method. However, all that I am positing about array life may be equally well posited in enter human life, but it should be borne in mind that the pure array type does not as yet exist, for there is not to be found that perfect form, mechanism or expression of the ray quality nor that absolutely purified appearance in the human family, except in such rare cases as the Buddha, or Christ, and in another field of expression, an Alexander or Julius Caesar. Leonardo da Vinci was an analogous expression. The rays concern energy and consciousness, and determine expression, but where the matter utilized and the vehicle informed is as yet imperfectly evolved, there is then limitation and the, tuning out automatically of much of the energy. 
the effect of ray force, working through imperfect forms, must be distorted and curtailed and misapplied. Let me illustrate. I have said that first ray energy works out as the destruction of forms, it must be remembered that a pure destroyer is utterly unknown, and mercifully for the race this is so. It is a beneficent condition that as yet a first ray ego is so handicapped and limited by the form nature and the quality of that form nature that it is unable to make adequate or intelligent use of its destructive force. First ray personalities are oft destructive, as well you know, but the energy generated is insufficient to work much harm. Again, pure love is incapable of expression today, its flow being impeded by the form nature. A consideration of these two cases will help the reader to appreciate the situation. But the time is near at hand wherein there will be a fuller expression of ray purpose, type or quality, and therefore a truer appearance. This is owing to the imminent appearance, or manifestation, of certain great lives who will embody the energy of rays 2, 3, 5 and 7. They will thus constitute focal points for the inflow of these four types of divine energy and, this will produce a tremendous stimulation of their corresponding and responding units of life. These four beings, who will appear as human beings in the field of the modern world, may be looked for before the end of this century and their united effort will inaugurate definitely the new age, and usher in the period which will go down in history as the time of glory for the fifth through race. Each of these four masters, for that they will be, is also subjectively the focal point for a triple inflow of energy from the center in the body of God which is symbolically spoken of as, the heart of the Sunday. For each ray is in its turn a triple manifesting entity as is the solar deity himself. Love. Will be their outstanding characteristic and through that attractive magnetic force the new forms will come into being which will permit of pure ray types, and thus of more truly expressive appearances. A great deal of the destructive energy extant in the world today is due to the presence on the astral plane of a first ray disciple of the planetary logos. His work it is to clear the way for the manifestation of these other four major disciples, who are primarily builders, they will enter on their work when the task of the wreckers of form has been accomplished. I should like here to give a suggestion, for it is necessary that some of the methods of the hierarchy should begin to be understood. The work of what in the West is called, the Christ principle, is to build the forms for the expression of quality and life. That is the characteristic work of the second aspect of divinity. The work of the Antichrist is to destroy forms and this is essentially the work of the first expression of divinity. But the work of the destroyer is not the work of black magic, and when ignorant humanity regards Antichrist as working on the black side, their error is great. His work is as beneficent as that of the building aspect, and it is but man's hatred of the death of forms which makes him regard the work of the destroyer as, black, as being against the divine will, and as subversive of the divine program. The work of the representatives of that mysterious power which we call cosmic evil, and their responding representatives, is indeed worthy of the word black, but it is not applicable to the work of Antichrist. It might be added that the work of the black forces wells up from below, whilst the work of the destroyers is impelled from above. The symbols of these two ways are the sword and the cross. After these preliminary remarks, which are intended to indicate the magnitude of the subject, we shall now proceed to an analysis of the three rays which still remain to be considered. The fifth purpose of Deity Ray V. Concrete knowledge or science The thunders crash around the mountain top, dark clouds conceal the form. The mists, arising from the watery sphere, serve to distort the wondrous. Found within the secret place. The form is there. Its note is sounding forth. A beam of light illuminates the form, the hidden now appears. Knowledge of God and how he veils himself finds consummation in the thoughts of man. The energies and forces receive their secret names, reveal their inner purpose, and all is seen as rhythm, a returning on itself. The great scroll can now be read. God's purpose and his plans are fixed, and man can read the form. The plan takes form. 
The plan is form. Its purpose is the revelation of the mind of God. The past reveals the form, but the present indicates the flowing in of energy. That which is on its way comes as a cloud which veils the sun. But hid behind this cloud of immanence is love, and on the earth is love and in the heaven is love, and this comma the love which maketh all things new must stand revealed. This is the purpose back of all the acts of this great Lord of Knowledge. Before enumerating the names of this great life, I should like to point out that the fifth ray is one of unique and peculiar potency in relation to the human kingdom. The reason is that the fifth plane of mind is the sphere of his major activity and it is on this plane that we find the triple aspects of mind, 1. Abstract or higher mind. The embodiment of a higher triad. 2. The concrete or lower mind, the highest aspect of the lower self. 3. The ego or solar angel, the pure son of mind, who expresses intelligence, both abstractly and concretely, and is the point of unification. This life has also much power today in connection with the fifth through trace and with the transference of the consciousness of humanity into the fifth or spiritual kingdom. Students would learn much if they contrasted the building power of the higher mind with the destroying power of the lower. Just as the personality has no other function in the divine plan than to be a channel for, and the medium of expression of, the soul, so the lower mind is intended to be the channel for the pure inflow of higher mind energy. This fifth ray is a being of the intensest spiritual light and in his manifestation on this fifth plane, which is peculiarly his, he symbolizes the three aspects in a way achieved by no other ray. Through his quality of higher mind, this ray is a pure channel for the divine will. Through the septenary grouping of the solar lives on the mental levels whereon they appear, he brought into functioning activity seven corresponding reflections of the seven centers of deity, as far as our planet is concerned, a thing which none of his six brother rays have done. This statement means little to you, but the tremendous sacrifice and effort thus involved are paralleled only by the life of the Buddha, and this is one of the reasons why. In this fifth race, love and mind must eventually and mutually reveal each other. Some of the names given to the Lord of this ray are as follows, the revealer of truth the great connector the divine intermediary the crystallizer of forms the threefold thinker the cloud upon the mountain top the precipitator of the cross the dividing sword the winnower of the chaff the fifth great judge the rose of God the heavenly one the door into the mind of God the initiating energy the ruler of the third heaven the guardian of the door the dispenser of knowledge the angel with the flaming sword the keeper of the secret the beloved of the logos the brother from Sirius the master of the higher offense this fifth Thray has so many names, owing to his close connection with man, since man was originally created, that it has not been easy to choose those which are of the most use in enabling the student to form an idea of the fifth ray characteristics and mission, but the study of the six aphorisms, and the qualities which they indicate, will show how potent and important is this ray lord. These six aphorisms were chanted by his six brothers at that momentous crisis wherein the human family came into existence and the solar angels sacrificed themselves. Esoterically speaking, they, went down into hell, and found their place in prison. On that day souls were born. A new kingdom of expression came into being, and the three highest planes and the three lower were brought into a scintillating interchange. One. God and his angels now arise and see. Let the mountain tops emerge from out the dense wet mist. Let the sun touch their summits and let them stand in light. Shine forth. Quality. Emergence into form and out of form. 2. God and his angels now arise and hear. Let a deep murmur rise and let the cry of seeking man enter into their ears. Let man listen. Let man call. Speak loud. Quality. Power to make the voice of the silence heard. 3. God and his angels now arise and touch. Bring forth the rod of power. Extend it outward toward the sons of men, touch them with fire, then bring them near. Bring forth. Quality. Initiating activity. 4. God and his angels now arise and taste. 
Let all experience come. Let all the ways appear. Discern and choose, dissect and analyze. All ways are one. Quality. Revelation of the way. 5. God and his angels now arise and sense the odor rising from the burning ground of man. Let the fire do its work. Draw man within the furnace and let him drop within the rose red center the nature that retards. Let the fire burn. Quality. Purification with fire. 6. God and his angels now arise and fuse the many in the one. Let the blending work proceed. Let that which causes all to be produce the cause of their cessation. Let one temple now emerge. Produce the crowning glory. So let it be. Quality. The manifestation of the great white light. The Shekinah. A. A. B. There is much of practical usefulness to the reader in a study of these qualities. When he believes himself to be upon a particular ray, they will indicate to him some of the characteristics for which he may look, and perhaps demonstrate to him what he has to do, what he has to express, and what he has to overcome. These qualities should be studied from two angles, their divine aspect and their reverse aspect or the form side. This ray, for instance, is shown to be the revealer of the way, and it should be remembered therefore that this fifth ray reveals the way down into death or into incarnation, which is the death-like prison of the soul, or it reveals the way up and out of darkness into the pure light of God's day. I mention this as I am exceedingly anxious that all who read this treatise should make application of this teaching to their daily lives. I am not interested in imparting weird or unusual items of information and end these matters for the delectation of an unhealthy mental appetite. The stocking of the memory with occult detail which serves no useful purpose only strains the brain cells and feeds the pride. The sixth purpose of deity rave I. Devotion or idealism this ray which is just going out of manifestation, is of vital interest to us for it has set its mark upon our western civilization in a more definite way than any of the others. It is for us the most familiar and the best known of the rays. The mantra in which defines its purpose is unlike the others and might be expressed somewhat as follows, the crusade is on. The warriors march upon their way. They crush and kill all that impedes their way, and aught that rises on their onward path is trampled underfoot. March towards the light. The work goes forward. The workers veil their eyes from pity as from fear. The work is all that counts. The form must disappear so that the loving spirit may enter into rest. Naught must arrest the progress of the workers with the plan. They enter upon the work assigned with pain and with song. The cross is reared on high, the form is laid thereon, and on that cross must render up its life. Each builds a cross which forms the cross they mount upon the cross. Through war, through work, through pain and toil, the purpose is achieved. Thus saith the symbol. It will be noted how this purpose, when applied by man to himself, works his release. When applied by man to man, it has produced the corrupt and awful story of man's cruelty to man. In the above mantra you will find the clue to the sixth ray purpose as it appears in the human kingdom and a close expansive study, note that paradoxical phrase, of the underlying ideas will reveal a little of the larger purpose. The soul is and should be pitiless to its form and its problem. The soul can, however, comprehend the need for pain and difficulty in the world, for he can extend a knowledge of his own technique with himself to the technique of God with his world, but he does nothing knowingly that could possibly increase the world's pain or sorrow. Some of the names for this beneficent yet somewhat violently energized Lord of the Ray are as follows. The negator of desire the one who sees the right the visioner of reality the divine robber the devotee of life the hater of forms the warrior on the march the sword bearer of the logos the upholder of the truth the crucifier and the crucified the breaker of stones the imperishable flaming one the one whom naught can turn the implacable ruler the general on the perfect way the one who leads the twelve curiously enough. This sixth ray lord has always been a loved enigma to his six brethren. This comes out in the questions which they addressed to him on one occasion when they met, under the eye of the lord, to interchange their plans for united. 
divine, harmonious action. They asked these questions in a spirit of heavenly joy and love, but with the intent to throw some light upon the somewhat obscure quality of their loved brother. 1. Why is desire red? Why red as blood? Tell us, O Son of God, why thy way is red with blood? Quality. Power to kill out desire. 2. Why do you turn your back upon the sphere of earth? Is it too small, too poor? Why kick it as a ball upon a playing field? Quality. Spurning that which is not desired. 3. Why set the cross from earth to heaven? But earth can be a heaven. Why mount the cross and die? Quality. Self-immolation. 4. Why battle thus with all that is around? Seek you not peace? Why stand between the forces of the night and day? Why thus unmoved and calm, untired and unafraid? Quality. Endurance and fearlessness. 5. See you not God in all, the life in all, and love in all? Why separate yourself and leave behind the loved and the well-known? Quality. Power to detach oneself. 6. Can you arrest the waters of the sixth great sphere? Can you stem he flood? Can you recover both the raven and the dove? Can you, the fish, swim free? Quality. Overcoming the waters of the emotional nature. This outgoing ray of devotion to the ideal and the incoming ray of magical order or organization are largely responsible for the type of man's consciousness today. Man is essentially devoted, to the point of fanaticism, to whatever may be the goal of his life's attention. This goal may be to achieve discipleship, or to raise a family, or to get money, or to achieve popularity, or any other objective to which he consecrates his time and energy. But whatever it may be, to it he devotes all that he is or has. Man also is essentially and inherently a producer of law and order, though this quality is only just beginning to make its presence felt. This is because mankind is, at last, becoming mentally centered, and hence we have in the world at this time the many and varied attempts to straighten out affairs along business, national, economic, social and other lines, to produce some system and order and to bring about the rearranging of all energies with the objective unrealized consciously as yet, of inaugurating the new age. Owing, however, to defective mental control and to an almost universal ignorance as to the laws of thought, and in addition, to a profound lack of knowledge as to man's own nature, man works blindly. The ideals sensed are not correctly interpreted by the mind nor applied in such a way that they are of general and appropriate application. Hence the confusion and the chaotic experimentation going on, and hence also the imposition of personal authority to enforce an individual's idea of the ideal. The need today is for sound teaching as to the laws of thought, and the rules which govern the building of those thought forms which must embody the ideas sent forth from the universal divine mind. Men must begin on the subjective planes of life to work out the needed order. When this is realized, we shall have every important group of men engaged in world affairs, or in the work of government in all its branches, aided on the mental plane by trained thinkers so that there may be right application and correct adjustment to the plan. This time is as yet far away, and hence the distortions and misrepresentations on earth of the plan as it exists in heaven, to use the Christian phraseology. It was the realization of the present world need for illumined thinkers and subjective workers which prompted those who guide so to direct the incoming spiritual energies that the formation of the esoteric groups everywhere came about. It led also to the publication of the mass of mystical and oriental literature on meditation and allied topics which has flooded the world today. Hence also the efforts that I, a worker on the inner side of life, am making to teach the newer psychology in this treatise, and so show to man what is his equipment and how well suited he is to the work for which he has been created, and which he has as yet failed to comprehend. The force and the effect of the seventh ray influence will, however, reveal to him the magical work, 
and the next 2500 years will bring about so much change and make possible the working of so many so-called miracles that even the outer appearance of the world will be profoundly altered, the vegetation and the animal life will be modified and developed, and much that is latent in the forms of both kingdoms will be brought into expression through the freer flow and the more intelligent manipulation of the energies which create and constitute all forms. The world has been changed beyond belief during the past 500 years, and during the next 200 years the changes will be still more rapid and deep-seated, for the growth of the intellectual powers of man is gathering momentum, and man, the creator, is coming into possession of his powers. The seventh purpose of deity Ravi. Ceremonial order or magic let the temple of the Lord be built, the seventh great angel cried. Then to their places in the north, the south, the west and east, seven great sons of God moved with measured pace and took their seats. The work of building thus began. The doors were closed. The light shone dim. The temple walls could not be seen. The seven were silent and their forms were veiled. The time had not arrived for the breaking forth of light. The word could not be uttered. Only between the seven forms the work went on. A silent call went forth from each to each. Yet still a temple door stayed shut. As time went on, the sounds of life were heard. The door was opened, and the door was shut. Each time it opened, the power within the temple grew, each time the light waxed stronger, for one by one the sons of men entered the temple, passed from north to south, from west to east and in the center of the heart found light found understanding and the power to work. They entered through the door, they passed before the seven, they raised the temple's veil and entered into life. The temple grew in beauty. Its lines, its walls, its decorations, and its height and depth and breadth slowly emerged and entered into light. Out from the east, the word went forth, open the door to all the sons of men who come from all the darkened valleys of the land and seek the temple of the Lord give them the light. Unveil the inner shrine, and through the work of all the craftsmen of the Lord extend the temple's walls and thus irradiate the world. Sound forth the word creative and raise the dead to life. Thus shall the temple of the light be carried from heaven to earth. Thus shall its walls be reared upon the great plains of the world of men. Thus shall the light reveal and nurture all the dreams of men. Then shall the master in the east awaken those who are asleep. Then shall the warden in the west test and try all the true seekers after light. Then shall the warden in the south instruct and aid the blind. Then shall the gate into the north remain wide open, for there the unseen master stands with welcoming hand and understanding heart, to lead the pilgrims to the east where the true light shines forth. Why this opening of the temple? Demand the greater seven. Because the work is ready, the craftsmen are prepared. God has created in the light. His sons can now create. What can else be done? Naught. Came the answer from the greater seven. Let the work proceed. Let the sons of God create. These words will be noted by many as of deep significance and as indicating a wide intention, during the coming cycle, to open the door wide into the temple of the hidden mystery to man. One by one we shall undergo the esoteric and spiritual counterpart of the psychological factor which is called, a mental test. That test will demonstrate a man's usefulness in mental work and power, it will show his capacity to build thought forms and to vitalize them. This I dealt with in a treatise on white magic, and the relation of that treatise to the magical work of the seventh ray and its cycle of activity will become increasingly apparent. A treatise on white magic is an attempt to lay down the rules for training and for work which will make it possible for the candidate to the mysteries to enter the temple and to take his place as a creative worker and thus aid in the magical work of the Lord of the temple. The names whereby this ray lord is known are many, and their meaning is of prime significance today. The work of the future can be seen from a study of these names.
the unveiled magician the worker in the magical art the creator of the form the bestower of light from the second lord the manipulator of the one the watcher in the east the custodian of the seventh plan the invoker of wrath the keeper of the magical word the temple guardian the representative of god the one who lifts to life the lord of death the one who feeds the sacred fire the whirling sphere the sword of the initiator the divine alchemical worker the builder of the square the orienting force the fiery unifier the key to the mystery the expression of the will the revealer of beauty. This ray lord has a peculiar power on earth and on the physical plane of divine manifestation. His usefulness to his six brothers is therefore apparent. He makes their work appear. He is the most active of all the rays in this world period, and is never out of manifestation for more than 1500 years. It is almost as if he whirled in and out of active work under a very rapid cycle and his closest relation, symbolically, is to his brethren of the second and fifth rays in this world period. He builds, using second ray cooperation, through the power of thought, thus cooperating with the lord of the fifth ray and on the physical plane, which is his own essential and peculiar sphere. In another world period his relation with the other ray lords may undergo change, but at this time his work will be more easily understood when he is recognized as aiding the building lord of the second ray and utilizing the energies of the lord of concrete thought. The aphorisms embodying his qualities run as follows, and were esoterically whispered into his ears when he, left the most high place and descended into the seventh sphere to carry out the work assigned. 1. Take thy tools with thee. Brother of the building light. Carve deep. Construct and shape the living stone. Quality. Power to create. 2. Choose well thy workers. Love them all. Pick six to do thy will. Remain the seventh in the east. Yet call the world to enter into that which thou shalt build. Blend all together in the will of God. Quality. Power to cooperate. 3. Sit in the center and the east as well. Move not from their dot send out thy force to do thy will and gather back thy forces. Use well the power of thought. Sit still. Quality. Power to think. 4. See all parts center into the purpose. Build towards beauty, brother lord. Make all colors bright and clear. See to the inner glory. Build the shrine well. Use care. Quality. Revelation of the beauty of God. 5. Watch well thy thought. Enter at will into the mind of God. Pluck thence the power, the plan, the part to play. Reveal the mind of God. Quality. Mental power. 6. Stay in the East. The five had given thee a friendly word. I, the sixth, tell thee to use it on the dead. Revive the dead. Build forms anew. Guard well that word. Make all men seek it for themselves. Quality. Power to vivify. Thus we have studied a little the work of the seven rays. The teaching has had to be conveyed symbolically and its understanding necessitates an awakened esoteric sense, to comprehend it all is not as yet possible. The chants of the sixth initiation have the guidance of those units of consciousness in whom their particular ray vibration and color predominate. The vast importance of this fact is often overlooked, even when theoretically acknowledged by aspirants to initiation. Hence the importance of determining the ray of the ego and of the monad comma something of vital moment after the third initiation. A majority and a minority always exist in every department of life. So it is in the work of the Logos, for at the end of the greater cycle, Manvatara, the majority will find their way to the synthetic love ray, a small minority will find their way to the power ray. This minority are destined for an important function. They will constitute the nucleus which, in the next solar system, will constitute the majority, finding their synthesis on ray 1. This is a great mystery and not easily understood. Some hint towards its solution will be found hidden in the real meaning of the words exoteric and esoteric. The fact should be remembered that only five rays dominate at any one time. All manifest, but only five dominate. A distinction should be made between the rays dominating in 
a solar system and those dominating in a scheme, or a chain. To this reference has been made in a treatise on cosmic fire. Three rays out of the seven synthesize. One ray out of the three will synthesize at the culmination. For the first solar system the third ray was the synthetic ray, but for this solar system the second ray is the synthetic ray, and for the next solar system the first ray will perform a similar function. Two rays are largely the goal of human endeavor, the first ray and the second ray. One ray is the goal of the devil or angel evolution, the third ray. All these three rays contact the two poles, and the attainment of the goal at the end of the cycle marks the achievement of the solar logos. This again is hidden in mystery. The seventh ray and the first ray are very closely allied, with the third ray linking them, so that we have the relation expressed thus, 1, 3, 7. There is a close association also between rays 2, 4, 6 with the fifth ray in a peculiar position, as a central point of attainment, the home of the ego or soul, the embodied plane of mind, the point of consummation for the personality, and the reflection in the three worlds of the threefold monad. Ray I. Will, demonstrating as power in the unfolding of the plan of the logos. Ray E. A. Adaptability of activity with intelligence. This ray was the dominant one in the past solar system, it is the foundation or basis of this system, and is controlled by the Mahakahan. Ray V. Ceremonial ritual or organization. This is the reflection on the physical plane of the two above, and is likewise connected with the Mahakahan. It controls the elemental forces and the involutionary process and the form side of the three kingdoms in nature. It holds hid the secret of physical color and sound. It is the law. These three rays together embrace and embody all. They are power, activity and the law in manifestation. Ray. Love and wisdom, the synthetic ray which is the goal for this system, holding all in close harmony and relation. Ray of. The expression of harmony, beauty, music and unity. Ray of I the ray of devotion to the ardor of aspiration, and of the sacrifice of the personal self for the good of all, with the object in view of harmony and beauty, impelled thereto by love. These two groups of rays might be related to each other as follows, rays 1, 3, 7 are the great rays connected with the form, with the evolutionary process, with the intelligent functioning of the system, and with the laws controlling the life in all forms in all the kingdoms in nature. Rays 2. 4. 6 are the rays connected with the inner life, expanding through those forms. The rays of motive, aspiration and sacrifice. Rays preeminently of quality. Rays 1. 3. 7 deal with things concrete and with the functioning of matter and form from the lowest plane to the highest. Rays 2. 4. 6 deal with things abstract with spiritual expression through the medium of form. Ray 5. Forms the connecting link of the intelligence. 18. 49 Fires of Brahma. In occult literature we can find the following expression, 49 Fires of Brahma. What is its meaning? The Fire of Brahma, this is the third hypostasis of the Absolute, the Soul, an elementary particle. Where we took the figure, 49. It is more logical way to explain the figure 49 as the product of 7 by 7. At the same time one of these 7s, a number of plans that exist in the universe. The second 7, is the number of colors, or, in other words, the number of basic types of souls, existing at each level of each plan. As already mentioned, the number of colors in the spectrum, 6, 7 instead. The seventh color a comprehensive, result of the combination with each other the particles of six simple colors. The multiplication of the seven plans for the seven colors gives, in the end, 49 fires of Brahma, 49 basic types of, fires of Brahma, elementary particles. The particles are able to form spectra only while they are in motion. The particles are really at rest anywhere in the space, do not form a spectrum. At resting position, 
the particles do not form additional colors, orange, green, purple. This is the first. The second, only the moving particles are able to get into our visual analyzer. And the third, our visual analyzers as markers of colors use only photons in the visible range. And that's not all. Take, for example, the spectrum formed by visible photons. The visible photons in the spectrum are not characterized by the same value of the disappearing ether. That is why the affiliation of the particles to any spectrum we can't regard as one of the two factors underlying the classification of 49 fires of Brahma. The visible spectrum is not only of all. The number of spectra, even within the same plan, for example, the same physical, is large. Our bodies just are not able to perceive the other spectra, except the visible. But, by the way, the particles that form our human consciousness, consisting of particles of buddhic plan, receive all the particles in contact with them, any quality, any plan, in other words, can see each particle, which join. The particles not only buddhic, but any other plan possess this ability. Thus, the expression, 49 fires of Brahma, can be regarded as an indication of the ability to classify all existing in the universe elementary particles. Two values perform by the best way the function of classifying factors, the speed of destruction of ether, that forms the basis of classification of plans, and the speed of creation. 49 fires of Brahma, it is the totality of existing in the universe the elementary particles of varying quality as well as the chemical elements that combine all sorts of particles. Of course, that, the types of elementary particle, is a relative concept. It's like divisions supported on any scale, between which there are myriads of intermediate values. There is an assumption that the expression, twice seven, which we can meet in the standard Zion, it is not nothing but a double seven, that is all the same two sevens seven planes and seven colors. Here is the exact text of the quote, then the three, the one, the four, the one, the five, the twice seven, the sum total, stands a 3.3. 3. 19. The classification of the particles by elements. The ancient Greek philosophers believed that only few, basic elements, build the earth. Impedocles of Akragant, who lived about 430 BC, has identified four of these elements, earth, air, fire and water. Aristotle introduced another fifth element, ether. An elementary particle, is a soul, a force center, and spirit, is an ethereal cloth created by this center and disappearing into it. Ether, spirit, has a relation to any particle so we can exclude ether from this classification. There remain four elements, earth, fire, water and air. As for the elementary particles, each of them depends on the quality that we can attribute to one of these four elements. H. P. Blavatsky calls the Brahma in their, secret doctrine, by the four-faced Brahma. The stanzas of, Book Zion, say that, the three fall into the four, stanza 3.4. Four-faced Brahma and the four, into which the three fall, these are the four primary elements, the four elements of which we are speaking. Of course, the four-faced Brahma, and the transformation of the three in four, is nothing more than a symbolic image, by which to a limit is full the esoteric literature. The number three points us to the hypostasis of creator, matter, spirit, soul and thus gives us the basic information about the basic building blocks of the universe. However, just the number 4 indicates that not all the elementary particles are identical and there are various types of them. The classification of particles by the elements, we can use in two ways, absolute and relative. 1. The absolute version of the classification absolute version of the classification can use for all existing particles in the universe. In this case, to the elements earth and fire are in the first place, the particles of the lowest level of the physical plan. To the elements water and air are, above all, the particles of the top level of the monadic plan. 
particles of all other plans are intermediate options between the extreme couples of the elements. In the absolute version of the classification the four elements represent the extreme types of existing elementary particles. To the elements earth and fire, refer the particles with a high speed of destruction of ether. To the elements water and air, refer the particles with a low speed of destruction of ether. To the elements earth and water refer the particles with a low speed of creation of ether. To the elements fire, and, air, refer the particles with a high speed the creation of ether. Thus, in particles of the element, earth, ether disappears with a high speed, and creates with a low. In the particles of the element, fire, as the speed of destruction ether and creation is high. In the particles of the element, air, the speed of destruction is low, and the speed of creation is high. In the particles of the element, water, as the speed of disappearance and creation is low. In the particles in the first place their own ether disappears, ether created by them. The particles of the element, earth, and close to them by quality in a small way, meet their needs, for the lack of ether at the expense of their own created ether, as per unit of time they create a little ether, and disappears into them a lot. The particles of the element fire and close to them by quality, completely provides them with ether, because it disappears in them a lot and creates a lot. The particles of the elements of water and close to them by quality little need for ether of the surrounding field, as though they create a little but do not need much ether, because they it disappears in them with very low speed. Eventually, the particles of the element air and close to them by quality, as well as the particle elements of water, do not feel the need in the surrounding ether as they create a lot, and destruct a little. The particles of the element earth and the water, have the fields of attraction. Ether, moving to them from the ambient ethereal field. The particles of the element fire and air has the fields of repulsion, ether, coming into the surrounding ethereal field. 2. The square of the elements four elements are the pointers of extreme variants of existing particles in the universe. One can imagine this classification graphically as a square, each angle is one of the elements and each of the existing particles we can position on one side of the square. The square of the elements, is the classification of elementary particles. The horizontal sides of the square, it's the ranges of the speed of creation the ether in the particles. The vertical sides, it's the ranges of the speed of destruction the ether. Blue, yellow and red lines are totalities of the particles, depending on the speed of creation of ether in them, that is totalities of the particles of three primary colors. The vertical side of the square is a range of values of the speed of destruction of the ether. The number of such values can be infinite. The horizontal, is the speed of creation. It has in total three possible values corresponding to the three primary colors, blue, yellow and red. Blue corresponds to the lowest speed of creation of the ether, red, to the highest and yellow is intermediate between blue and red. The number of the particles of the clear types as a percentage is negligible. The overwhelming majority of existing in the universe particles has intermediate quality. This means that the value of the rate of creation of ether we can locate anywhere on the sides ranges between earth and water or fire and air. In the ranges of values of the speed of destruction of ether the particle we should attribute to the element to which it is displaced. Take, for example, a particle of, earth water, which locates on the side of the square between the corners of the earth and water, and closer to water. The quality of this particle may better suit to the element water. The external manifestation of the quality of the particles is more convenient to compare along the lines corresponding to the colors. On the side of the square, earth water, the line corresponding to the blue color, all particles have the field of attraction. At the same time the value of the field decreases from the earth to water. On the side of the square, fire air, the line corresponding to the red color, all particles have the field of repulsion. Its value increases from fire to air. 
and finally, along the line connecting the centers of the sides, earth fire, and, water to air, line corresponding to the yellow color, from below and to the middle of the line the particles of the fields of attraction, and from the middle to the upper, the fields of repulsion. The particles are exactly in the middle of the line are neutral. The particles of the bottom half of the, yellow line, and of the upper half of the, blue line, have equal magnitude of the fields of attraction. However, the quality of the particles of both ranges is completely different. The particles of the upper half of the, blue line, destroy ether with a lower speed than the particles of the lower half of the yellow line and create with a more speed. But as a result the particles of both lines show outside the same quality, the fields of attraction. And the fields of attraction and those and other are equal. Similarly, the particles of the low half of the, red line, and of the upper half of the yellow line, have equal magnitude of the fields of repulsion, although the quality of those and others are different. The particles of the upper half of the, yellow line, destroy ether with a lower speed compared with the particles of the lower half of the, red line. However, the speed of creation of the, upper yellow, is less than of the, lower red. 3. The scale of the elements. The scale of the elements, is a linear version of the classification of particles according to the elements. The particles of the lower half of the scale of the elements of the fields of attraction, and the particles of the upper half, the fields of repulsion. Particles of intermediate quality we can characterize by the same magnitude of the fields of attraction or repulsion. However, their quality is different. The particles of the lower half of the, yellow line, and the upper half of the, blue line, have equal magnitude of the fields of attraction. But the quality of the particles of both ranges is completely different. The particles of the upper half of the, blue line, destroy and create less ether compared with the particles of the lower half of the, yellow line. As a result, the ratio of the destroyed and created ether in the particles of both ranges is the same. Similarly, the particles of the lower half of the, red line, and the upper half of the yellow line, have equal in magnitude the fields of repulsion, although the quality of these and other is different. The particles of the upper half of the, yellow line, destroy and create less ether compared with the particles of the lower half of the, red line. However, the ratio of the destroyed and created ether in the particles of both ranges is the same. The particles of the lower half of the blue line, are the particles of the element earth. The particles of the upper half of the blue line and lower half of the yellow together are the element water. The particles of the upper half of the yellow line and the lower of red, it's fire. Finally, the upper half of the red line, this is elementary particles of the element air. You can make such global classification. And at the same time as you will see further, in any plan you can select the ranges for the speed of destruction the ether, within each of which the particles are the three primary colors can be classified into four elements, in the same way as within the whole universe. 4. The relative version of the classification The relative version of the classification exists for comparing the quality of the particles within the same plan. Suppose we evaluate the quality of two particles. They have a small difference in the amount of disappearing ether. And an amount of created ether in these particles is identical and corresponds to the red color. If you use the relative classification, the particle that per unit of time creates less ether, will be closer to the element fire than to the element air. The relative version of the classification we use in astrology to characterize the qualitative and quantitative composition of the solar photons of different ranges that fall to Earth. 20. 7 Hierarchies. The hierarchy, is a concept which relates to all the same 7 builders, 7 principles of the universe, 7 brothers, 7 rishis, etc. that is to the 7 main types of souls. The builder, this is the monad, atom, particle, power center, etc. As you know, in the manifested universe there are seven plans. Moreover, the seventh is the entire universe as whole. At any level of any plan originally there were three types of monads, 
particles. They correspond to the three primary colors, blue, yellow and red. The blue create the spirit with the lowest speed, red, with the largest. Yellow, have the intermediate speed. The blue, are yin. The red, are yang. The yellow on the lower plans act as yin, absorb the spirit, and on the upper, yang, emit. We can divide every plan into small ranges. Within each of these ranges from upper to lower the speed of absorption of the spirit, the value of fields of attraction, increases, in the particles yin, and the speed of emission rate, the value of the field of repulsion, falls, in the particles yang. If the source of particles, any hot body, emits these three basic types of particles, and they move, of course, by inertia, then provided the same initial momentum, making them to move, they will move with a different speed due to that each of these particles will have its own force of repulsion, making it to move forward. It is because the difference in the speed of the particles of different types, they are arranged in a spectrum, a rainbow. This is because the particles of the violet end of the spectrum move more slowly and of the red, faster. As a result, the violet ones better attracted by the action of the force of attraction of the chemical elements of the material through which they pass, after what there is a spectrum. Hence, the hierarchy, it is the totality of the particles of the same color that permeates all six, actually, seven, plans. Elementary particles of the same hierarchy have the same color. In other words, are on the same ray. 21. A memory of the elementary particle, a consciousness of the atom, Akashic records, karma. The fabric of the space, the great void, the absolute, and the primal substance, it's the internal plan, from which the spirit proceeds, which is the basis of what is happening here as part of the manifested universe. Everything that exists, everything that happens in the universe, all the rising soul, all this is secondary to the internal plans. The internal plan, spatial fabric, this is the most sacred things for which we pray, and that is our foundation and generating start. The internal plan, this is it, something, in the occult with it, relate not the male origin, but namely female, the mother, the spirit, the altered state of the matter together with the mother in the esotericism we call by the creator. The souls, elementary particles, atoms, monads, it's a kind of portals, gates, the windows the creator into our world, the world of the manifested universe. Through these doors the creator communicates with the world that creates. Elementary particles, are the points of transmission and gathering of information, and information, that is the spirit, energy. The internal plan, spatial fabric, this is a fundamental principle and the store of all sorts of information about everything that ever was, is, and will be performed in this universe, and that it was within this fabric and what happened with it yet before this version of the universe arose. Before anything seen in the world of this manifested universe, it is already present on the internal plan. The internal plan, it's a world of ideas. And this world manifests by means of the four centers, souls, and ether, energy, spirit, flowing through them. There are not two dimensions, separately for the internal plan, and separately, for the manifested universe. All are in the same volume of space. It is also present here and the internal plan, and here, the phenomenal world. Internal plan permeates, integrates and imbues its creation, the visible universe. I exist, supporting this whole world by one part of my soul f. Bhagavad Gita, 1042. One part of myself, in this case, is ether, spirit, coming from internal plan. Ether, its, directives of God, its instructions for manifested world, its word, the logos. This coded signal by which information is sent from the internal plan into the world of creation. Ether, is information, ether, is the force, energy. This information gets absolutely every elementary particle. Proof of this is the fact that ether arises, creates, 
in absolutely each elementary particle. This impulse like the signal of locator is sent to the world. It exists here until it disappears in some elementary particle, the same or different. Any elementary particle, is its own window on the universe. The ether, appearing in every elementary particle, is the information just for it and about it. It's like a view of the universe from the point of view of exactly this particle. In this information contains the entire history of the existence and movement of this particle within the boundaries of the universe. What particles it contacted and when, in the composition of what bodies and the beings entranced. This information, which arises in the particle as nascent ether, this is its consciousness. Any elementary particle, is an atom, truly indivisible elementary unit of genesis. Just about this consciousness of the atom and tried to tell us Alice Bailey in the book with the same title? The consciousness of the atom. Although in the book she does not say about the synonymity of the concepts atom and, elementary particle, it is alleged here. And the atom in her book, it's likely the atom of physicists and chemists, that is the one where many elementary particles are collected, here, in this book, we call it a conglomerate of the particles or by an unstable elementary particle. But somehow, in her work is present extremely important idea of the ability of atom to recognize that happens to him, to feel the reality and make a conscious and purposeful choices about where and what kind of particles, other atoms, to stay. Life history of any elementary particle is available to the whole creator, the whole spatial fabric. Another name for the consciousness of the atom, is Akasha. In Sanskrit Akas are translated as space, sky. The Sanskrit word Akasha is synonymous with ether, energy, information, force. The Akashic records, it's the information about every existing elementary particle, written by the creator, spirit, on the spatial basis. And these chronics, this consciousness manifests into the world of this universe as ether energy, arising in any elementary particle. Ether, disappearing in a particle, it's like its report for the internal plan, information about what is happening with the particle at the moment. This is a view of the universe from the standpoint of this particular soul. Karma, it's a cause and effect relation, it's also one of the indications of the existence of the gyre of information. When ether is destroyed in a particle, it in such way, gets, on the internal plan, carrying information of what happened to the particle. And in the end it becomes the cause for the consequence, for the arising in the particles of ether, which is nothing other than the information. Information is embodied and manifested until it is replaced by new information. New ether, which is dissolved in the particle. Any elementary particle is a twisted in space and time, flowing ether, spirit, energy force. Movement in time, means that ether, energy, is born in the particle, exists some time in the world and then disappears, is destroyed, or in the same particle, or in others, which absorb this ether. Ether rotation in the particle, as such, does not exist. Gyre of the ether, energy, it's a figure of speech, referring specifically to the movement in time. The radius of all existing elementary particles is the same. Ether is born in the central area of the sphere of the elementary particles, in the zone of creation, with certain speed, which depends on the internal quality of the particle. Thereafter, it is uniformly radiated in all directions from this central point and moves linearly until it reaches the surface sphere. A zone of destruction, it's an area where ether disappears is destroyed? This surface zone anyway, what kind of ether to destroy, that arose in this particle or entering from the side? Ether destruction occurs in it with a certain speed corresponding to its internal quality, as in the case of the creation speed. It turns out that ether in a particle passes a certain way in a straight line from the center to the periphery, before to destroy in the area of the surface. As you can see, there is not happening of the real rotation of ether. Rotation in this case should be taken not literally but figuratively, as well as, for example, 
the vibrational processes which often are not real fluctuations in space but the cyclic changes of some process. An elementary particle, soul, it's the flowing in the matter spirit. And every moment of time some region of space, matter, belonging to the concrete consciousness, spirit, is an area of particular certain I. All other particles involved by other consciousness, spirits, the particle perceives to it as, not I. We can say that all other particles for a given particle are strangers, outsiders, other than it. The spirit forming a given particle, it is its consciousness, its I. The spirit that is concentrated in a given area of the space, and it is the soul. For this particle, soul, is its own private chronicle, its own record, history, ongoing since its inception and are recorded by the matter. The matter, where impulse, spirit, manifests, is the soul. The soul, is the spirit, they are, in fact, are one and the same. Spirit is taken not in a general sense, and in particular, in relation to a given region of the space, to a given elementary particle. It is the soul, the consciousness of this given elementary particle. Thus, all of the definitions that we use in respect of the spirit, in principle, are to the same extent suitable for the soul. The spirit, is light, fire, energy and electricity. And the soul, is light and fire, and energy and electricity. Each spirit is considered not in general and in the specific senses flowing information about everything that has happened to this elementary particle from the first moment after the beginning of its existence. Elementary particles are able to move in the space in any direction, to change their location in every possible way. So information, the consciousness of some particular elementary particle, does not belong to any particular fixed area of the space. No information. It's the emerging spirit, the altered state of the matter. Apparently, this greatest architect and builder, the matter, space, itself at every moment of time it knows and decides what is each formed by it the single spirit, that is the soul. After all, exactly the matter, this is the reason and the source of any spirit. After all, the spirit, it's just the certain way modified matter, no more. Do not be confused by the fact that in the occultism as in detail the spirit and the soul are discussed. They are, in a way, the fictions. There is nothing but the matter, the substance. She. The cause of all, of all visible phenomena. All the sources are in it, all the roots. All spirits, all souls, are nothing more than the names for what happens to the mother, and that happens to her. Thus, Namely the matter is the cause of emergence in it of the unimaginably big number of areas of the altered state, information fields, the spirits in the specific sense, that is the souls. It creates and forms these elementary particles, these information fields inside itself, and directs by them, determines their quality, plays with, them makes them each moment of time. Just the matter sets for the particles the rules of the game speaking the language of science, determines the laws of nature. Because the nature, it's the matter, the absolute, the original substance. Consciousness, which is the soul, the spirit in a specific sense, it's, figuratively speaking, the drawing created by the matter inside itself, who is both an artist and canvas and palette and brush. How else to explain that every elementary particle, is an inexhaustible source of the spirit? energy, information, which forms the particle itself. Atom is truly inexhaustible in the sense of energy. However, the truly endless atom. This is an elementary particle, not atom of physicists or chemist. The latest is just even possible to, scoop to the bottom. Not every atom, elementary particle, emits its energy information to the outside, only the particles yank. While the particles yin not only emits the energy information, but also have to absorb another emitted by the particles yang. Any particle has the ability to aware its location in space, in the overall scheme of genesis. It really understands where it is currently located and what kinds of particles surround it. 
it is aware of the quality of all particles around at the moment, that is they emit the energy information or absorb it, and with what speed. That is, the particle actually knows and remembers where and when, at what time and in what combination, in which company of the particles it stayed and there was. At the same time, the particle does not know anything about those particles, with which it does not contact or whose ether does not reach it, we are talking about the particles yang, because exactly they does not emit the ether. It is interesting to feel yourself in the midst of the elementary particles of various types. An amazing feeling covers you when you realize that everything that surrounds you, that's all. Nothing but the sentient tiniest lives, spirits, souls, consciousness. Everywhere around you there are the forces, information, energy, electromagnetic fields, which nothing more than the enumeration of synonyms. Fiction and non-fiction is full of images of forces, energies, existing in everything and everywhere affecting, influencing each other, which are transmitted from person to subjects and biological organisms and back. Movies and TV shows are literally overflowing by the similar ideas. Magic, magic rituals, it's an area of knowledge that allows understanding what the souls are around you, and gives information about how to contact with these souls and to interact. Any object in our environment consists of chemical elements. Chemical elements consist of elementary particles, souls. A soul, is the spirit, information considered in relation to this area, to this elementary particle. People from time immemorial feel and imprint in their oeuvre, as well as just in a common sense thinking. The idea of transferring something invisible from body to body. The most commonly for naming of this transferring invisible something it's used the concept of force in the last centuries has become extremely popular the word energy. But whatever the concept, the essence and meaning of the idea remain the same. So the concept of soul and of the ability of different souls to interact with each other for a long time very close and clear a large percentage of people living on our planet. Let's summarize our arguments on the subject of memory, consciousness of the soul. The basic nature of the spirit, information energy, ether, is everywhere the same. In any elementary particle, the soul, is born and is disappeared the same something, one of the names of that is the spirit. The general nature of the spirit is the same, but there are differences. But these differences relate to the particles, but not to the basis of the spirit. First, the spirit is born and is disappeared in the particles at different speed, that is the cause of differences in the quality of the particles and in its external manifestation, the fields of attraction or repulsion, and their magnitude. But these differences are of the particles and not the spirit therein. A second point concerns the content of the spirit, is born in each particle, the information about all the information energy contacts of the particle from its birth. But this information? feature of the spirit is no way connected with its inner nature, which makes it that it is. Please note, that these two factors and are the cause of the differences that we, ourselves being nothing more than clusters of elementary particles, feel, sense, perceive are contacting with other particles, or rather, with their emitted spirit, energy, information. We perceive, 1, a particle absorbs the spirit, ether, or emits, and at what speed, so we appreciate the quality of the particles, too, directly the history of the particles transmitted as part of this same spirit, that is, all contacts with other particles from the moment of emergence of the particle. Can you imagine how much information we and everything around us pass through ourselves? Each particle, this is a sensitive mechanism, which responds sensitively to their surroundings and etheric flows that act on it pass through it, and in which he is involved. Of course, we do these, etheric blows, as a rule, do not observe visually. But our thoughts and feelings, that's a real indicator as to what ethereal, information, waves we perceive at the moment. We live in an ocean of information waves, energy, fields. 
and a totality of four bodies that form the human body is actually quite nice to know how to navigate in this sea of flows. Take, for example, the same olfactory analyzer. How many smells, flavors it keeps in its memory? An infinite number of variations. And all of this data bank is stored, updated and used without any special effort on the part of human? I? The particles that form the body of the buddhic plan. Working with smells, it's a concern of the mental plan, its average levels. Why do we make such a conclusion? Because the sense of smell was formed in the animal kingdom. Each scent, its stored information, memory, of a combination of any number of information, etheric, waves of a certain quality received to the brain through the nose. Of course, not the ether waves of the smelled molecules of substances. Fly? Into our brains. No, the transfer of information occurs due to movement along the nerves of the elementary particles, assimilated the information in the olfactory bulbs. Reaching the brain particles transmitted the imprinted information to the particles in the chemical elements of the brain cells. And this information becomes available to the particles of the mental plan, which are work with it. And these processes are constantly occur in our bodies. Everything in and around us is involved in an endless cycle of perception, storage, processing and transmission of information in other words, the spirit, ether. And the only tool of all this, is an elementary particle soul. It is the storage medium of everything with anything came in contact, and in what was involved. We kindly ask you not for a moment forget that, in spite of the fact that people analyze and give the names to all, for example, the same souls, particles. However, this analysis and this naming bring us a little to comprehension the true meaning of things. Sometimes even the opposite, separates. An example of how sometimes the naming might confuse people can serve as lists of synonyms for each of the three aspects of God. The names are many, the heart is one. However, the analysis is absolutely essential to human beings in order to correctly navigate in the around world and to survive in it the best way possible. 22. The law of identification I with, not I. Why do we incarnate? 1. The main part of the law let us ask the following series of questions. Why does an emergence of organisms in which are combined elementary particles souls, of different plans occur? Why on the earth do the kingdoms of nature appear? Why, year after year, century after century, millennium after millennium it happens a formation of various types of organisms of living beings, minerals, plants, animals, people, superhumans? What causes the particles to seek to each other in search of what we call the incarnation? We want to ask you a basic question, why are we born? Why is it people, for example, all this endless process of generational change? Why doesn't stop the process of birth of more and more new organized systems organisms? How does function all this mechanism of life? In order to adequately answer these questions, we must begin with the fact that only particles yin, absorbing the spirit who is also the information, are able to consistently perceive other information, the spirit, even outside of the state of transformation of inherent quality, the so-called recovery of Kundalini. While the particles yang, emitting the spirit, are capable of a similar perception of extraneous information, energy, spirit, only in cases when there is a transformation of their quality, that is, when they receive the excess spirit, ether, information. The methods of transformation, evolution, are described in detail in the book Ethereal Mechanics. HTTP colon slash slash smashwords.com slash profile slash view slash Danina, HTTP colon slash slash true. This book exists on the Russian now, but in the next two months will be translated into English. Since the particles yin do not emit the spirit outside the transformed state, therefore, the main source of external energy information for any particle yin, are the particles yang. 
However, in the body is the all particles, and the yin and yang, have access to the information of each other. Let us formulate a law that will help us answer all the questions posed above, and which is the basis of building the logoic plan. That is the comprehensive and unifying together the particles of different simple plans, which, you know, are six. We will call this innovation by the law of identification? I? With? Not I? Or you can say a little differently. The law of identity? I? And? Not I? Choose to your taste, the names are equal. And the I and, not I, in this case, are synonyms of soul, an elementary particle. It's a consciousness, spirit, manifested in the matter. The only difference between them lies in the fact that I is a soul, a particle of which is said in the first person. While, not I, it's all the other souls, considered in relation to it as external. Any of the existing elementary particles can be viewed from the perspective of I. And then all the other particles will act in relation to it as a non-I. We can assume that this is all the conventions explained by the features of the observer's position, and no more. A hint to the existence of this law, you can find in the works of Alice Bailey, which she performed under the leadership of the Tibetan master Jhul Kul. In particular, the reference of the happening identification of I with, not I, can be found in the pages of the second volume of Esoteric Psychology. The author, A. Bailey in addition to the law of attraction, the law of repulsion, and the law of transformation of the quality, of which we in detail tell in the book, Ethereal Mechanics, and that lie at the heart of physics, chemistry and astronomy, this law of identity is as versatile as these three. Although it does not manifest itself directly and visually accessible, but the consequences of its actions each of us can feel on self. It is responsible for the state of consciousness of elementary particles, and is the basis of science psychology, which is still very poorly developed, in comparison to the kind of real development it can get in the future. Any elementary particle stores information about everything that happened to it from the very beginning of its existence. This memory of particle, is its karma, its chronicle, the record. Lipica which are known in the occult as chroniclers of Genesis, it is the elementary particles, the souls, of which we speak sir. If any particles absorb the energy, information, emitted by other particles, so it captures a memory of it, takes over the spirit of this particle, writes a chronicle of it. After such absorption occurs what is called an extension of consciousness, of the particle swallowed the information, the absorbing particle begins to identify itself with the particle whose information it absorbed. A particle whose information this particle has perceived becomes to the first one like a part of that. It does not make a distinction between itself and another particle, previously alien to it. Not I? Becomes the part of I. Information, this is the spirit, and each turn of the spirit in the soul, the particle stores information about the location of a particle in the space, and of its surroundings. And the spirit that lies at the heart of every soul, and which records information on the spatial basis, makes no distinction between himself, that is, the spirit, information, of the own particle and the spirit of other particles, which spirit was absorbed by its particle. That's the uniqueness of the universe. This law indicates that everything around is the whole one and comes together, in general, from a single source. Pay attention to this expression. To take over the spirit. Very often in the creative world of art speak about the perception of some image, some idea. It just refers to the process of absorption of external spirit. This amazing law is as unique as laws of mechanics. But we should not mix the action of the laws of attraction and repulsion on the one hand and the law of identification with the other. These laws are devoted to different moments of genesis. And common between them is that all they manifest themselves in elementary particles. 
The desire to incarnation should not be confused with the pursuit of the particles get closer to each other, with gravity. And a weak will to materialize should not be equated to the tendency of the particles to repel each other, that is with anti-gravity. If after absorption of the energy, the contact of the particles was interrupted the particle which has absorbed information ceases to receive it, it will consider it as a loss of self. It from now will never forget about happened union with another particle, whose ether she took, and all of the remaining time of its life, until the next Mahapralaya, it will remember about the incident contact, as it now considers a particle whose information it absorbed as part of itself, and it will seek to the former connection. Although, as you'll see on later, it's not as easy as it might seem. The loss occurred one day contact with the outside energy information is considered by the particle as a loss of the former integrity. It seems unreal, strange that these invisible, tiny particles of the being can experience something like this. This seems unbelievable but it is true. Their sense of loss is the basis and the reason of so familiar to us the feelings of loss, loneliness, longing for the lost. This situation is the root of our sadness and desire to unearthly reunion, restoring the interrupted contact with the same source of information gives the particles that absorb this energy, joy. Even just the thought of a possible perception of some lost energy is happy for the particle. Particle will be happy of the contact with any energy, however, as you will see later, there are exceptions. Similarly, Absorbing particle saddens communication gap with any energy. However, the elementary particles in the universe are myriads of myriads. And so the contacts with the new energies drown the pain of the break old ties. Meetings and partings, joy, sadness, all are as we, the people. This is not surprising, because we are made up of elementary particles, souls. Accordingly, the particles yang in this endless melodrama of meetings and farewells are a bit aloof. This especially applies to the particles yang of three upper plans, buddhic, atmic and monadic, fourth, third and second, where the particles yang are numerically dominant over yin particles and where the value of the speed of emission of energy, information ether, is highest it increases from the lower to the higher plans. Just the particles yang emitting, the ether, in the greatest measure is to the incarnation. At the very least, they will not ever be able to become the centers of attraction, collecting around. The mother particles, in contrast to the particles yin, for which a similar process, forming, is their essential feature. In any, the smallest conglomerate of the particles there is the transformation of all the particles in its composition. This means that into the particles enters the external ether moving from the periphery toward the center. Moreover, those particles yang, emitting ether, which are located on the periphery are able to transmit their information, spirit, to the particles near the center. Thus, all particles in the body begin to identify themselves with those particles yang, which are located with respect to them closer to the periphery. Some conglomerates of particles, exchanging by particles yang or simply by acting on one another with the ether emitted by them, inform each other about themselves. Now you can imagine the scale of happening in the universe of the exchange of information and the striving to the identification of the I with the, not I. 2. The rule of subordination of the matter, particles yin, to the spirit, particles yan, and of the lower to the higher, in the conglomerates. In the processes of identifying the particles yin, matter, are the lead, guided, that is, they are identified, while exactly the particles yang, spirit, guide them, that is identify them. This rule is very clear, and excluding from it can be only the case when the particle yin moves by inertia, and, therefore, has the field of repulsion, that becomes yang on the move. After that it collides with a stationary particle yang and passes to it by this way its information only in this case, the particles yin can subdue yang particles, to identify them with themselves. In all other situations, when the yin does not emit the energy and absorb, is it yang, a source of information, 
identifying origin and yin, is the receiver, identified origin. Exactly this rule is dedicated all the second volume of, Esoteric Psychology, written by Alice Bailey. Now as regards for submission of lower to the higher. This part of the rule refers to the particles not in the free state, but as part of conglomerates, bodies. We can assume that the whole manifested universe, it is also a great body, and it also subordinates to this rule. Within the universe the lower plans are subject to the highest, as in the lower plans the percentage of particles yang is smaller and the value of fields of repulsion is less. While the yin particles in the composition of these plans are more, and the value of their fields of attraction is more too. Within the universe the ether is moving from the periphery to the center, and, therefore, to a great measure the particles of the lower plans are identified with information of upper ones than the reverse. In conglomerates of particles, for example, in the composition of chemical elements, those particles yang, emitting information, that are farther from the center, that is above, are able to identify with themselves all the underlying particles. And not only yin but yang too. The reason is that in the composition of any body the transformation of the particles by gravity takes place. The total gravity field directed towards the center, is the reason that in all particles forcibly enters redundant ether, moving from the periphery. Particles yang which are closer to the center, to receive it. For them, by such ether, information, is the one that is emitted by overlying particles yang. So is the identification of all the particles in the conglomerate. As for the particles yang, they always transmit into the world their own experience, their chronicle. However, if on their memory, on their I, on their consciousness ever influenced the energy of other particle yang, this extraneous information is also woven into the records of the particle and then it will be as part of its own chronicle broadcast the information of that other particle. And the information of that other particle becomes an integral part of apprehending its particle. That is, the particle, received information, does not distinguish itself from the perceived one. 3. The rule of dependence the degree of identification from the element of the particle but here come into effect clarifying moments for the law of identification. Yes, of course, the rule of most value of the strongest, the closest and the latest energy contacts acts always, and it can't be cancelled. However, the law of identification itself is manifested differently for the particles of not same quality. The fact is that the particles are related to different elements have different ability to the identification with the information, the spirit, of other particles. For example, Strongly marked yin particles are identified with the external energies so powerfully that have about themselves even more weak view than for others. You can call this clarification of the law of identification by the rule of dependence the degree of identification from the element of the particle. The higher is the speed of destruction, disappearance, of the ether energy in the particle and the slower is the speed of creation, the more the particle will identify itself with the outside external ether, not with its own, created by itself. And vice versa, the smaller is the speed of destruction of the ether and the faster is the creation, the worse such particle can be identified with the others. From this we can draw a simple conclusion that the law of identifications to the greatest extent manifests itself in the particles of the element, earth, because they have the highest rate of destruction of information as compared with all other existing particles, and the speed of creation of ether is smallest out of the possible. They are followed by the particles, water, then the fire, is, and finally, air. Exactly in this consequence decreases the ability of the particles to be identified with external for them sources of energy information and increases the ability to retain itself, and thus the information they carry. The particles of the elements earth and water out of the transformation state are yin absorb the energy. At the same time, the particles of the elements fire and air are always, in any state belong to the yang, 
emit energy information, spirit. Particles yang, are the particles in which the spirit, energy, is dominated. Yin, are the particle with a predominance of matter, with a minor manifestation of the spirit. Yang, this is the spiritual origin of the manifested universe, and yin, the material. Yang, is a spiritual particles, and yin, material. The struggle for survival, the instinct of self-preservation, is the prerogative of the particles yin. So manifests itself the material principle of the world. While the particles yang, spiritual origin, help the organisms to overcome the aspiration to blindly obey the instinct of self-preservation. Particles yang to a much lesser extent are afraid of losing their momentary energy contacts, to leave the body, of which they now are the part. In the occult, religion and cultural background it is accepted strongly blame the material principle. However, this is precisely wrong approach. Matter, particles yin, is good in the same way as the spirit, particles yang. Some of its properties are brought us the discomfort sometimes. However, this does not mean that you should fling it aside and refuse. For example, just because of the matter, yin, we are able to receive information about each other and communicate. The spirit, yang, in contrast to the matter, is self-sufficient and is not capable of understanding the external to it, only under certain conditions. Only the combination of yin and yang gives us the true fullness of being. This is not good and not bad that some particles, yin, more inclined to identify with the other particles, whose energy information they absorb, compared with other particles, yang. You should not use in this case similar categories. It's just there, it's the features of these particles, that's all. All the laws of nature, are the law of our original substance, creating this world and filling it, these are its rules. They may not be good or bad, they just are. And the only thing we can do, is to study them possibly good and do not neglect them but use on our own. Interesting that existence of the organism, its life is provided at first just the particles yin, their greatest adherence to the law of identification. But the cause of death, of destruction of the body, are the particles yang, gradually accumulated in the body and destroying it. However, the destruction of the body is not due to weak adherence the yang particles to the law of identity, and because of the law of repulsion. The particles yang with emitted by the methyl literally loosen the connection between the chemical elements and molecules. 4. The rule of most value the strongest, the closest and the latest energy contacts for any particle the strongest, the closest and latest energy contacts have the greatest significance and value compare with any other energy relations, not as much strong, close and late. This means that any particle which has absorbed the energy of someone else, is afraid most of all to lose energy connection, and it regards these contacts as the most important and significant, with the particles yang, which have the largest fields of repulsion, that is emit ether with a higher speed. The largest fields, it's compared with others, with which it is linked at the moment due to the absorption of their energy information and which are closest located to it at the moment. At the same time, the particle is less worrying about the loss of connections that existed once before, and connections with the particles yang, which are more distant from her, and ties with the particles whose fields of repulsion has a lower value. Exactly this rule, the rule of most value the strongest, the closest and the latest energy contacts, is the basis of self-preservation instinct of any organism. For this reason, it is often that, even though the occurred physical contact of two different organisms and sharing of energy information, they can start to fight with each other. Importance of occurred contact with each other in these organisms is less significant compared to the value of the existing links between the particles comprising each of the organisms. Declare unto easier for each of the organisms. Own skin is more expensive? This rule of most value the strongest? The closest and the latest energy contacts is at the heart of such a large-scale phenomenon on Earth, as the struggle for existence. 
to organisms, even though their areas and identification to each other will fight for the conditions that support the existence of the integrity of each. Predator, clutching his teeth into the victim, of course, is also identified with it. However, the need of its own organism in food and inability to obtain it by any other way but to kill another being, overshadow the sympathy for the victim. The main thing for it, is to save its own life. Therefore, the arised identification does not prevent the predator to kill in order to be saturated, and to allow its existence. Now think and remember, unless people do not exactly in the same way? Well, yes, exactly. After all, we're animals, intelligent, but the animals. Although often we manage to block in ourselves these powerful impulses of self-preservation. You may ask, but that people can sacrifice themselves to save others? Yes, people behaviors differ from animal programs. Although not every person is able on the deed. Only in the event that human consciousness had or has contact, was identified, with particles of higher plans. Because of this the person has an aspiration not only in the world of matter, but in the world of the spirit too. The world of matter in this case. It's the world of three lower plans, and the world of spirit, is an area of three highest plans. That is, man in this case is enlightened, aware of the fact that there is not only dense forms of life, but thin too, and that with the death this person will exist in other worlds. For any particle that can take someone else's information, priority is always the one that received the latter. Absorbing it particle will identify itself with this information. However, in any organism, such as a chemical element, which is the smallest organism, there is its own, permanent, not disappearing source of information, in the form of present in it particles yan. This means that for any particle yin as part of any organism the latest perceived information, is its own. And any incoming in it outside information, unless it has been passed by the accumulated particles yang, which themselves become part of the body will play a secondary role. 5. The rule of avoidance of negative information and fight with it, and aspiration to the positive fear of particles to lose the most important to them energy contacts often takes on the character of struggle with those other organisms that are for the particles direct or indirect threat. Negative information, this is information about the organism or from its side, carrying the danger for the organism, perceiving it. A threat, it is a danger or separation of the particles from the conglomerate, of which it is part, or separation of its smaller conglomerate from the bigger conglomerate, for example, from the chemical element of the body, or the destruction of the conglomerate. A direct threat, it's a danger of the power effects on the body that will cause its destruction. An indirect threat, this is the danger of involving the body in situations that entail its destruction from the third forces, for example, the shortfall in food for animals, lack of heat or its excess, as for plants and animals. The fighting of conglomerate of particles, of the body, with other organisms can take many forms. In this, there is the entire history of our planet. It's a constant war of all with all. This may be as a direct power struggle of individuals, and avoidance of the body of the particles and conglomerates that are capable of causing it harm, disrupt its integrity. At the same time the organisms want to be as close as possible to that which contributes to their prosperity, security and well-being. Predator is committed to its victims. Animals and plants coexist side by side, when it suits them. Animals form groups if it leads to increased survival rates. Parents stay with their cubs and support them, because it increases the species as a whole, they see the joeys as part of themselves, because they are genetically transmitted to them their own information. We can continue for a long time and refine the list, in which we will give examples of cases where organisms tend to live together. As you can see, there is a very interesting feature, any free particle absorbing the ether has nothing against to be identified with absolutely any source of information. Any perceived information will be for it near and dear. However, the same can't be said of the particles within the conglomerates. That body, 
in which it now resides, is of paramount importance for 6. Rule of attraction like with like the particles, in more than half of the cases, are part of conglomerates, unstable elementary particles, if to use the terminology of nuclear physics. The largest species of the conglomerate, is a chemical element. Neutrons, protons, are small aggregates as compared to the chemical element. Particles yin are always the part of any body except for those times when they move freely in the space. However, cases of their movement, it is only a transition from one conglomerate to another. As for the particles yang, then they themselves do not form the bodies, and in their composition are with a difficult. It depends on the speed of their emission of energy, ether, on the value of their field of repulsion. Those whose speed is small, small size of the field of repulsion, is easy enough to tolerate staying in the conglomerate, as their rate of emission of ether is inferior to the total rate of energy absorption by this body. Particles yen of three lower plans can often be found in the bodies, that can't be said about the particles yang of three highest plans. Moreover, from the lower to the higher plans, this probability decreases. What are we all talking about? But to the fact that in nature there is an unimaginable quantity of conglomerates in which the particles yin are combined with particles of yang. These bodies represent in the same time the sources of information, due to the presence of the particles yang, and receivers, due to particle yin. Our human eye, our consciousness, which belong to the fourth plan, buddhic, is also composed of such unions of particles. Being a part of the human body. Our eye, a conglomerate of particles of the fourth plan, remembers everything that happened with the person at the time when this consciousness was upon the head, that is while the person was alive and sentient being. And the particles yin and yang can memorize. But the main role in the process of remembering, especially external information, it is still played by the particles yin. Free yang particle remembers only what happens to it directly. To memorize the external information can only those yang, which are part of the bodies, due to the transformation by gravity. The same thing, are involved in the process of remembering everything that happens to the human body, make the associations of particles of remaining three plans, mental, astral and physical. Particles yin in their composition absorb any energy information that reaches them during the life of this human body whether external or internal, coming from the particles yang of other bodies as part of the same organism. When a person dies, physically or spiritually, the body shell of buddhic plan is detached from the head and leaves the body. However, in this buddhi, body shell the information about what happened to it during the lifetime of a given organism remains. And this information is stored as by particles yin and by yang. Why, it was said just that. Memory of particles yin is deeper. Generally, the larger is the speed of absorption of the ether by the particle, that is the greater its field of attraction, the greater its ability to memorize. However, only particles yang have the ability to transfer the information, which they own. The particles yin are also can this, but only in one case in a state of inertial motion in collisions with other particles. The particles of any plan that absorbed in the process of life in this human body information from other bodies, internal and external, then, after the separation, will be associated with them, and will seek to re-emerge with them. To reabsorb their information that will restore their lost sense of the former unity. They will seek again to incarnation to connection with the carriers of the same information that they took in previous incarnations. This is how another rule acts under the law of identifications, the rule of attraction like with like. And the question here is not about the law of attraction. Magnetic attraction? Of which is said much in the books of Alice Bailey, in particular, in, Esoteric Psychology. This is precisely the tendency of particles identified with someone information, to reunite with the source of this information. Magnetic attraction, of Alice Bailey, this is the aspiration to incarnation. And it should not be seen as a direct reference to magnetism, 
of which tells the story the human science, and which, by the way, is nothing other than the gravitational interaction. Let's sum up a little in our reasoning and thinking about this extremely interesting law of the universe. This topic is very complex and pervasive in order to be able to just like that, all at once, in one article to cover all its details and illuminate all the nuances. The law covers every inch of our phenomenal world. That law of identification, along with the laws of attraction and repulsion, is the main controlling factor in the universe. Absolutely everyone obeys to them. So far, science has recognized and realized the effect of only one of them, of the law of attraction. And it stays on the verge of recognizing the second, the law of repulsion. However, before the recognition of the third, the law of identification, it is still far as it is even unaware of its existence. Any elementary particle as part of any plan is involved in the processes of identification. Either as identifying, emitting information, or as identified, absorbing information. Take a look around. How many subjects, how many bodies are around you, the living and non-living, as defined by science? And each contains both these types of particles. This means that each body is involved in the identification of, either on one side or the other. Maybe you are a mystically minded person who is interested in everything the unknown, the mysterious, such as extrasensory perception, clairvoyance and clairaudience. Or you are a religious person, and often pray, crying out to God for the satisfaction of your desires and needs. Or you are a man of the scientific mindset and you just interested in the mechanisms of memory, storage and transmission of information. So, the mechanism of extrasensory perception, it is nothing like the mechanism of prayer, speaking by the language of science, the mechanism of transmitting the information energy, spirit. Information, it's the energy, ether, spirit. It is emitted by the particles yang. Information can be distributed directly without elementary particles. Also, any free particle, including yin, is the source of certain information, and, going from a conglomerate to a conglomerate, the particles thus transmit information. And conglomerates themselves, moving in space and touching, share information. From this we can draw a simple conclusion, no one action, any thought do not go unnoticed. The more powerful is the source of energy information, the better you will be seen and the faster will be noticed. It follows the simple conclusion about the necessity of healing the body, because only a strong organism can shine brightly without damage to itself and without discomfort. All of the above rules, clarifying the law of the identifications, with the main part, underlie the mechanism of the endless incarnations and reincarnations of living beings. Here it should also include and chemical compounds, the mineral kingdom. The particles absorbing the energy ether, always identify themselves with the particles which emit this energy information, spirit. And let's list the rules. 1. The rule of subordination of the matter, particles yin, to the spirit, particles yang, and of the lower to the higher, in the conglomerates. Two. The rule of dependence the degree of identification from the element of the particle. 3. The rule of most value the strongest, the closest and the latest energy contacts. 4. The rule of avoidance of negative information and fight with it, and aspiration to the positive. 5. The rule of attraction like with like. The law of identifications with its complementary rules explains why life on earth is there. Why not stop and how the transmission of hereditary information occurs? And also explains the reasons for the behavior of living things, how they relate to themselves and to other beings. It reveals the reason for the existence of self-preservation and of the struggle for existence. A lot of useful information we can learn from observing the world around us, while bearing in mind about the processes of identification of particles. 23. The Dive into Nirvana. Atonement, Ascension, Salvation, East of the Buddha after reaching enlightenment plunged into Nirvana. Jesus Christ, 
after transformation, reached the same status, the nirvanic. They both came to the same, they have reached the ascended state, were rescued. They accomplished the plan of God, each in his particular case. They reached perfection. What is the perfection for God? And why is it so important for everything in the universe? Perfection? Means the fulfillment or completion. Buddha and Christ completed the construction in themselves seventh, the comprehensive plan, logoic, which combines six simple plans. All the main types of elementary particles, souls, were represented in their bodies. This means that after their bodies were repeated in miniature the cosmos and became a microcosm. The particles of different plans side by side with each other and exchange information. Lower plans are identified with the upper, upper, with the lower. No more suffering particles of different plans because of separation from each other. All six plans are together. In the bodies of the Mahatma's energy formed a channel. The channel of light, which is carried out by the interaction of the matter, lower plans, with the spirit, upper plans. This channel is in the body of any living being, past the stage of initiation. When the energies radiated by the different bodies are merged together, occurred, identified with each other. However, only in the body of the Mahatma is the union of bodies belonging to six different plans, while in people only four plans, physical, astral, mental and buddhic, are united together. In the body of the Mahatma the matter and the spirit are equal. This is the true sattva, in perfect harmony. Joining by Mahatmas in their bodies of two particles of higher plans, atmic and monadic, leads to the earth, or to any other inhabited planet where there is a similar process. New energy, which, from the point of view of science, have a greater value than that of the lower plans. If you speak the language of the occult, these energies have thinner, more powerful vibrations. These new energies carry on earth are a new quality of life, change the physiology of creatures, assimilating them, change their way of life. And everything the Mahatma touches, even all, of what he, she, thinks, is beginning to bear the imprint of the new vibrations. He, she, seemed to blows new life into everything. He, she, reports to all around the new, more powerful impulse, stronger aspiration. By his, her, presence in the world he, she, clears all and ennobles, makes switching from their own narrow self-interest to a more spiritual motives and motivation. Mahatma, that combines all six simple plans in the body which completed the process of initiation, that is was the identification with each other all the elementary particles, devoid of suffering of a separation. All combined in him consciousness does not want more at the same time in different directions, to the matter, to the lower plans, and to the spirit, to the upper plans. All is merged, all is together and do not need to be torn between the pairs of opposites. Much about that has been written in the books of Alice Bailey, about the sufferings of the human soul, the human consciousness striving simultaneously in different ways. The poem, Bhagavad Gita, is devoted to this theme. The battle of Arjuna, Arjuna, white, light, it's the suffering of the human eye, forced to choose between two opposite ways, both of which are equally dear to him and necessary. Hence, there are all the suffering and pain of soulful anguishes and searchings for a human being. Every initiation carries a quieting, but the final one, which marks the achievement by the being of the state of the Mahatma, the great soul, gives a person the greatest possible sense of perfection and joy of the achieved. It is finished, that Jesus proclaimed, going up to the final point, to the apogee. It was his personal apocalypse, revelation. Earth has teamed up with heaven, matter with spirit. There arose a channel through which the energy information circulates in both directions. East has merged with the West. Nirvana means peace and tranquility the extinction of suffering and agonizing. This is true peace. Alice Bailey is well aware of the true meaning of what nirvana is, and a lot of it written. 
and help you pass her information on the nature of what is the revelation of the sons of God, which is so colorful and faithfully as wrote by the Apostle Paul in the New Testament. Dot, 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 19. For the creation waits in eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed. 20. For the creation was subjected to frustration, not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope. 21. That the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the freedom and glory of the children of God. 22. We know that the whole creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up to the present time. 23. Not only so, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption to sonship, the redemption of our bodies. Romans 8, 19-23. The Revelation, Apocalypse can be understood as a revelation of matter for occurrence into it the Spirit. This is the opening of the channel connecting the lower plans with the upper highest. But of the matter is opening. The spirit plunges into the matter, which leads to the ascension of the matter into heaven. Yes, the appearance on the earth of the kingdom of superhumans the whole universe is really waiting for and everything of God, every creature will feel the power of the grace that comes from these holy beings, from Mahatmas, from superhumans. By combining the matter and the spirit, lower plans with higher, they thereby put an end to the war, which is in heaven from the very beginning of the world, between the warriors of light, Lucifer, the spirit and the warriors of darkness, devil, matter. 24. Apocalypse, is a personal decision of everyone. Agni Yoga. Baptism by fire. The main task of each particular person and of humanity as a whole, is to achieve the state of Bodhisattva. Bodhisattva, from SKT. Bodhisattva, it's a creature with an awakened consciousness. Body? Means, enlightenment, awakening. Sattva, purity, is a guna, quality, of goodness. Sattva, it's the harmony of rajas and dharmas, spirit and matter. Body, it's a term that comes from the verbute, to wake up, realize, see, understand. Buddhi, is translated as mind, spirit. All this, taken together, indicates that at the Bodhisattva the spirit, ether, is manifested in harmony, half as much as the elements, elementary particles, of spirit, rajas, and half as much as the elements of matter, dharmas. Just to the attainment of a state of bodhisattvas all existing spiritual practices are devoted. Yoga, for example, is directed exactly at it. In Buddhism, the process of becoming a bodhisattva called the enlightenment, in Christianity, the transfiguration. In the book of Alice Bailey, Esoteric Psychology, Volume 2, of it is spoken of as the great way of liberation or enlightenment. But regardless of the religion the essence of what is happening with the person is the same. The human body is exposed to the new light, the new energy. It is no accident the people have taken the path of spiritual self-improvement and successfully moving ahead on it, referred to as the saints and enlightened. And the bodies of such people literally begin to contain more light, energy. The spirit, is. Light and body, is the light. Enlightenment, transfiguration of the person thus increases in the organism the rajasic element, that is shifts compared to the normal state of the ratio of yin yang in the side of yang. This does not mean that yang, rajas, begins to dominate. No, just in comparison to the ordinary people the holy person has yin less, and yang more. And he, she, is closer to their harmony. Yin makes the body to dense, inert sluggish, although durable. Yang, by contrast, gives sparseness, leads to excitation, hyperactivity. However, excess of Yang can destroy the body, to make the connection between the chemical elements fragile. The aim of any person, is to balance and stabilize both qualities, to come to their harmonious parity. The practice of the, middle way, is also teaches that, the balancing of the pairs of opposites, at ordinary people the quality in predominates, though different types in varying degrees. 
they do not even know what heights in terms of increasing the body's own energy can be achieved, and absolutely no harmful effects on health, in contrast to the methods associated with drug use. The only sure way of energizing, it's vegetarianism with a gradual transition to a state of prana eating plus physical activity. And along with it, different ways of knowing the world, combined with service to the benefit of the common good. All we need is love, best words for everyone. A man should cultivate the spiritual origin and at the same time to pacify and transform the material. Is not about that we hear the conversations in the intelligent environment and is not to this encourages us the thinking part of human society? It's raising the energy level of the organism, becoming a Buddha, finding in the heart of Christ. After all, the Buddha, and Christ, they are symbols of the spirit, its synonyms, and not that other, as energy. A usual part of humanity is a prisoner of the matter, yin. Yin, Tamas guides their actions and thoughts. Three lower plans, physical, astral and mental, that's the focus of yin. In these three plans the particles yin prevail, and yang particles are lacking. Here it is, the symbol of the beast, 666, where each six, is a particle of one of the lower plans. These three plans just symbolize the matter in the universe. While the human mind in relation to them, it is the spirit because in the buddhic plan the particles yang prevail. To the human eye of buddhic plan need to subdue the influence of this lower origin, that is, the bodies, shells, consisting of the particles of these three plans. This submission marks the third initiation. In the future, if the human guide, the human body, would be well adjusted, it will be used, will bower, any higher consciousness, the fifth plan, admic even more saturated by the spirit than buddhic. The merge and the influence of the particles of the fifth plan, this is the fourth initiation. Finally, the further evolution turn of creatures that have passed this initiation will lead to that beings, consisting of particles of higher, the second plan, monadic, will pay attention to them, which will result in the fact that they will be led by the creature, bowering his head. So there is a birth of Mahatmas, the great souls, the masters. There is a sequential addition of bodies consisting of particles of higher and higher, of more spiritual plans. Accordingly, in the being, passing through a series of such consecutive individualizations connections, initiations and identities, more and more increases the percentage of yang and decreases the percentage of yin. That is, such being increasingly closes to the ideal to the harmony of yin and yang, to sattva. The human body in the course of this evolutionary process is becoming more ethereal, more spiritual, because the ether, is also one of the synonyms of the spirit. Thus is born the son of God, the perfect man, the likeness of God. Similarity, because in the universe there is an equal number of particles yin and yang, in which the substance tends to harmony. The number of particles of both types is also seeking to balance. Descent bodies consisting of particles of higher plans to merge with the bodies of the lower plans, to assign them and guide them, is a dive spirit into matter. Or, in other words, the fall of Lucifer. Both of these expressions are very well known in occult literature. If you remember, in heaven, or in the universe, originally conducted the war between Rupa and Arupa, Yin and Yang, where Lucifer, it's the spirit, synonym of Yang and Arupa. And Rupa and Yin, it's the matter. The armies of Lucifer, Arupa, Yang, did not want to take shape, are reluctant to participate in their creation, which is not surprising, because they are characterized by fields of repulsion. Arupa themselves do not form the conglomerates of particles and into the conglomerates includes with hard way. They contribute likely to the destruction of most forms, not creation of them. But God wants to combine all the plans, that is make the matter has teamed up with the spirit, even despite the opposition of Arupa, Yang. The meaning of, war in heaven, is the polar opposite of all the properties and qualities of the particles of these two basic types. Dive spirit into matter, that is, 
adherence to the human body the bodies consisting of particles of highest plans, in which composition yang predominates, leads to the ascension the matter to heaven. In the language of science, the matter literally becomes easier, and organisms are less attracted to the heavenly bodies, to which they belong. Ease of the matter is achieved through its transformation. First, the staying the particles in the conglomerates, for example chemicals, always leads to their transformation. Therefore, the particles yang are transformed themselves, by gravity. The particles yang themselves ignite, just joining the chemical elements consisting of particles of the lower plans. With them is the fact that in occultism is called the ignition of lights, or rise of Kundalini, or in other words, the transformation, transfiguration or transmutation. Speaking in a scientific way, the heating, the temperature rise. And secondly, and most importantly, the particles yang with their fields of repulsion, that is emitted by them the spirit, transform the surrounding particles. They heat the body, to which are joined, all the particles in its chemical elements. There is the transformation of the anti-gravity. This is the most important, ignition of lights, which occurs in the body, and lights. These are transformable particles in the body. As you can see, there is a double transformation, of gravity and of anti-gravity. And all of this leads to an increase in overall temperature of the chemical elements of the body of a human being. But do not imagine it literally, as a flaming fire. We are talking about a small increase in temperature. It's changing the external quality of particles, their fields of repulsion grows and fields of attraction are reduced. The Agni Yoga is dedicated to this process of raising the Kundalini that from the standpoint of Christianity is called, Baptism by Fire. Agni Yoga, it's learning to the process of Baptism by Fire. It can be assumed that the Baptism of Fire, it's the rise of Kundalini, energizing of the shells of the body. Bodies at Vas remain just in such state. The matter within their bodies occultly rises, is saved. Particles yin within their bodies literally become easier because it reduces their weight gravity field. The body becomes lighter, rises, soars. The large energizing of the body may give rise to such phenomena as walking on water, levitating. And all because of the fact that the mass decreases and anti-mass grows? and the gravity of the planets can be overcome only with the help of anti-gravity, the fields of repulsion. Bodhisattva wins the matter, or rather, establishes a parity of matter and spirit. Lower plans combined with the higher, and in such body the war waged since the beginning of creation stops. There comes a true peace, nirvana. When the matter, interpreted as the lower plans, ceases to dominate, this is the salvation. Exodus, Easter. If you start from the biblical texts, that Egypt, in this case would symbolize the material principle, the people of Israel, is the human consciousness, and, escape from Egyptian slavery, is the end of the dominance of material principle over the spiritual. Apocalypse, Revelation, it's a symbol of opening the way to salvation for the human soul. Apocalypse, it's a story that is Easter. Baptism by fire, passed in symbolic form. Revelation of Street. John the Evangelist, is an analogue of Agni Yoga, a story about the essence of the, fires of the body, rise of Kundalini. Everyone should realize this occult apocalypse in itself. And the apocalypse, is primarily a private matter of everyone. Of course, these individual processes for each in total have and the general planetary significance so we can talk about the apocalypse of global scale. When the process of transformation, spiritualization of humanity gains momentum and strength, a lot of people come to this bright path of ascension. It is possible that the dark part of humanity, not wanting such a change will be for some time to counteract the light ones, eager for the spiritual life. But sooner or later everything will stabilize and everyone in the world is gradually realizes the full benefits of such change. Mankind is transformed into superhumanity, and the face of the planet will change drastically. 
when the process is more or less complete, it will be possible to talk about the transition to the stage, which is named in the Bible book of Revelation, the Millennial Kingdom of the Saints. 25. The Concepts of Time of Newton and Einstein. The Parallel Worlds. Time, according to the views of Isaac Newton, in all points of space flowed and flows equally, that is in which a region of space we place any clock, it will count down the time with one and the same speed. According to the ideas of Einstein, space and time are not absolute. In keeping with his views, they have the property of variability. Einstein connected the gravity with the compression of space, and the acceleration or deceleration of time, with the degree of curvature of space, the more it is compressed and the more the mass at this point, the slower time passes there. The more extended and less the mass at this point, the faster the time flows. Einstein postulated the non-simultaneity of processes in different parts of the universe. Time as the value tracking the overall progress of the processes of unification into one of the elementary particles of the six plans is an absolute value, the same for each point of the universe. Celestial bodies are born from the compound of the particles of the physical plan. In the future, they are colonized by the particles of overlying five plans, beginning from the astral. Time as the counter of radioactive decay may stop. However, the time as the value indicating the level of evolutionary development of life in the universe will not stop until the Creator's plan will not materialize. There is simply no force capable to prevent it. In absolute time invariant for all points of the universe, we, the people, select segments of any size, the length. So there are, time units. Time, this is not the fourth dimension of space. By measuring the value of segments, areas and volumes of space, it has nothing to do. The space has a total of three dimensions, three coordinates, and no more. All other dimensions, are figment of the imagination of people. We, the creatures that live on the surface of one of the planets that exist in the universe, associate the concept of time with the rotation of the planet on its axis, days and it's moving around the star, the sun, years. Lifetime is too small, and the science still gains strength. This explains why we do not use as a time interval the period of revolution of our solar system around the galaxy nucleus or around nucleus of supergalaxy around the central celestial body of the universe. Within each of the three coordinates, dimensions, we can move indefinitely. The time, of course, can't be considered as a fourth coordinate, fourth dimension, that can be used with respect to the bodies in space. We are not able to move freely, there, here, between the future and the past. In reality, there is not a separate future, past and present. Time, it's a chain of successive changes of position of the elementary particles and their conglomerates, scattered in space. In reality, the past and future do not exist, there is only the present. We get information about the world, and our eye fixes it. This stored memory is precisely the past. We plan in our mind our own and others work, we assume what happens in the world around us. These thoughts can be seen as the future. However, in the creative space that exists independently of elementary particles, there is no future, no past no present. And yet they are in the it, simultaneously as the, ideas of the creator. Eternal now, not embodied in reality by elementary particles. Time can't slow down or speed up. Let no one mislead you such metaphors as, passage of time, running of time, course of time. Time, it does not a flow and not a river, washing over us in space. Of course, all these comparisons are very beautiful, but our scientific thinking must resist the urge to take them literally. Time, like space, is absolute, and at any point in space is the same. It is a reflection of a single course of the processes occurring in the universe, associated with the movement, association and separation of the elementary particles of the same or of different quality. 
If we consider the universe as a derivative of a single monolith, space, then we must immediately characterize everything that happens within this universe. In space there are some corners not participating in the single process of manifestation. Also, in the space there are some areas, not following the one laws of the universe. This is the meaning of phrase, at the same time. Everything is shown in accordance with a common plan. No sum of their own, time courses, twists in time, where there are very different laws. However, it should be recognized, everything humans have ever dreamed of, everything they imagined, has the real implications. Perhaps, speaking of multi-temporal universe, people who say it are not perceived information about the universe today, but of that which once existed in a period of some Manvantara. Or, our space is not one in the world, and while at the same time as here, there are such laws of nature, which we now know in other spaces are quite different laws. In this case, in our universe is one time, and in the manifested universe of other space will be another. So, the time, it is not a spatial coordinate. In addition, to determine the position of the elementary particle in space we do not need a fourth or fifth, nor the second, nor any other extra coordinate. For this purpose, to us quite enough of three coordinates, dimensions. If we wanted to put in graph another coordinates, they simply had no place to enter. Where put the coordinates and why? Y. X Z. Furthermore, there is no some other space wedged in that, in which we live. How is it possible to imagine? A number of modern scholars believe that the introduction of additional spaces, built as nesting dolls, in our space, will solve all the existing problems in physics. Not at all. This innovation further complicates the picture of the universe. These built in one to another spaces are called, parallel worlds. Fantastic literature abounds with them in different variations. The space, is a, fabric of the universe. We call the space by emptiness. Properties of the space can be considered virtually unexplored. We study the elementary particles. And the space itself, is unknowable absolute. You can definitely say about it that we do not know about it anything. Even if it is assumed that two spaces coexist somehow in one volume, each of them must be fully occupy this volume. However, they must be absolutely united. It could not be. Probably you should already feel the absurdity and irrationality of such reasoning. Let's summarize and accept the assertion that the nature of space is holistic and indivisible. If to speak about the parallel worlds, we must say, that they exist. But this term does not refer to the space is divided against itself. The term, parallel worlds, is most consonant with the concept of plans. Plans, is the real world spheres of space populated by elementary particles. Plans exist in the universe, in parallel, with our world. During our lifetime, we do not perceive them visually, but, nevertheless, they do exist. 26. Pralaya and Mahapralaya, Manvantara and Mahamanvantara. Day and night of Brahma, inhalation and exhalation. The day, be with us. The judgment day, the end of the world. In occult literature can be found the following concepts, Pralaya, Mahapralaya, Manvantara, Mahamanvantara. What is their meaning? All these terms we can meet in Hindu literature. Pralaya, from SKT. Pralaya, destruction. Accordingly, Mahapralaya, from SKT. Mahapralaya, great destruction. Manvantara, from SKT. Manvantara, is period of Manu. Mahamanvantara, from SKT. Mahamanvantara, great period of Manu. What is the difference between Pralaya and Mahapralaya and between Manvantara and Mahamanvantara? As you can see, the words Mahapralaya and Mahamanvantara contain the root Maha, which translates from Sanskrit as, a great, big. During Mahapralaya spirit and souls are absent, because Pralaya, is peace, relief from the manifestation. 
manifestation, its manvantaras, and an manifestation, is pralaya. It says here as about pralayas, and about mahapralayas, about as manvantaras and mahamanvantaras. What's the difference? Pralaya, it is breath of Brahma. Brahma, is the spirit. And manvantara, it is breath of Brahma. Inhale and exhale Brahma, it is constantly flowing process of creation and destruction of the spirit, of the impulse of creation. This process occurs in every elementary particle at every moment of time until there is this universe. While Mahamanvantara lasts. And stop only with the onset of Mahapralaya. This is the difference between simple Pralaya and Mahapralaya. During Mahapralaya disappears all the manifested universe. Pralaya, it's the term which refers only to the disappearance of the spirit in a particular particle. Exactly the same differences between Manvantaras and Mahamanvantara. Mahamanvantara is the emergence of the entire manifested universe. While Manvantara, its exhalation, the birth of Brahma, the emergence of the spirit, of the impulse in the particles. In esoteric writings, for example, in the books of A. Bailey, E. Blavitsky, and Den. Rerek you can find such expressions as, Day of Brahma, and, Night of Brahma. What is it? It is natural to assume, by analogy with the human way of life, that the day of Brahma, it's a period of activity, and the night, is a rest time. But what do we call by the day and night of Brahma, by Manvantara and Pralaya or Mahamanvantara and Mahapralaya? The answer, apparently, you can call by the day of Brahma as the Manvantara and Mahamanvantara, and by the night of Brahma, and Pralaya, and Mahapralaya. The same can obviously be said of the exhalation and inhalation of Brahma. Exhalation. This is the day of Brahma, and inhalation it's the night. With the help of inspiration and expiration can be characterized the common period of the manifestation and unmanifestation of God. It's about Mahapralaya and Mahamanvantara. And private, specific act committing within a single soul, elementary particle, it's Pralaya and Manvantara. At the same time, the night of Brahma, his inhalation, it's a period or a moment of residence of the space in a state of non-being. Accordingly, the day of Brahma, exhale, it's a period or a moment of being, of the manifestation of the universe. During Mahapralaya the manifested universe is missing. There is no ether, spirit, or elementary particles, souls, there is only pure space, matter. There is no one chemical element. Celestial bodies also there are not, and so there is not the usual process of the development of life on planets. The space is empty. But this emptiness does not mean that it stops those underlying processes of consciousness, of mind, of which presence we guess, but know absolutely nothing. The concept of being refers only to the manifestations of God's space, to two of its hypostases, to the spirit and soul, and their combinations. The space itself, the matter, exists always and does not disappear. In the state of Mahamanvantara in the space appears all of what it dreamed and thought in its sleep, at night, in a state of pralaya. It is likely that only this Mahamanvantara marked by the presence of ether and elementary particles. It is possible that in the next Mahamanvantara familiar to us now the face of this manifested universe will change beyond recognition, and all the laws of nature will be quite different. The end of Mahamanvantara and the beginning of Mahapralaya is marked by the process of dilution, the disappearance of all that was displayed during the Mahamanvantara. For example, this Mahamanvantara, during which we now exist, will complete of disappearance of the ether and elementary particles. And with them will disappear and all that exists. The transition of the universe from manifested state to unmanifested from Manvantara to Pralaya is called in the stanzas of the books Zion the Great Day, Be With Us, and in the Bible, Last Judgment, or, Day of Judgment. It is the ring called, Bas Not, for those who descend and ascend, who during the Kalpa air progressing towards the Great Day, Be With Us.
stands a 5.6. The swift and the radiant one produces the seven lacenters, against which none will prevail to the great day, be with us, stands a 6.2. In the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel. The New Testament, the epistle to the Romans sound Paul the Apostle. Otherwise day, be with us, judgment day can be called, end of the world, as the light, is synonymous with the spirit, and stop the manifestation of the absolute is to be linked to the disappearance of the spirit, that is, light. This is, the end of the world. How many times the Muhammad Vidara has already been and prolayers replacing them, no one knows. At least no one is in this world. If you use computer terminology, it can be compared the Mahapralaya with restart, after which will be presented a new version of the universe. Remember when we described the structure of elementary particles? There we talked about the zone of destruction, an area on the periphery of any particle, where is the destruction of the ether, spirit. So, Pralaya, from SKT. Destruction, this is the destruction, dissolution, disappearance of ether, spirit. 27. Evolution and Involution. Fall of Lucifer. Evolution, from Lat. Evolutio, is a deployment and involution, from Lat. Involutio, is a clotting. Usually, these two terms are used mainly for describing and disclosing the nature of processes and phenomena taking place in the history of life of the biological forms. However, in reality it is something more and both of these concepts can be seen in a global sense, in relation to absolutely any form of life. The main living form, which lies at the base of all, it is an elementary particle, the soul, using the language of occultism. And the processes of evolution and involution occur in each particle. Evolution, it's the same thing as the exhalation of Brahma, the birth of the spirit, ether. Involution, is the opposite process the inhalation of Brahma, the destruction dissolution, of the spirit, ether. Involution and devolution are in the same list of pairs of opposites, which is based on the unity and struggle, of yin and yang, matter and spirit, of the particles with the fields of attraction and the particles with the fields of repulsion. These two words, evolution and involution, should be used in this context. However, they can be given some different meaning and be used for describing of some other processes, in the same time, closely related to ones that have been mentioned at the beginning. You can call by the involution the processes of rapprochement and unification of the particles or their conglomerates, bodies, because in them there is a process of involution. Clotting, destruction of ether which finds expression in half of the existing particles in the form of fields of attraction. The process of gravity, attraction, can be called by the involution. Although still gravity, it's rather a consequence of the existence of involution. Just because the gravity is caused by an involution, it, gravity, can be viewed as an involution process. About the same thing can be said about the evolution and anti-gravity. We can call the process of repulsion, anti-gravity, by the evolution, leading to the expansion of bodies, to increasing the distance between the particles and to their distance from each other and from the crowd. Although, as in the case of gravity, it is not true completely identify with each other the evolution and anti-gravity, and the second here, evolution, is the cause of the first, repulsion. And so, in general, the repulsion of particles and bodies and expansion of bodies, this is certainly an evolutionary process. You can look at the involution and devolution from a slightly different point of view. In this case, the involution and devolution are two phenomena that demonstrate the two sides of the building process of the seventh plan, log oic. Both conditions exist simultaneously. However involution preceded the onset of evolution. We can assume the evolution of the second rate to the involution. Evolution would have never started, if not previously started the involution. Involution, is the process of connecting with each other the elementary particles. At the heart of the involution is the mechanism of attraction. The cause of involution, 
are the particles with the fields of attraction. An example of the involution, is the formation of central body of our universe. Evolution, in turn, is completely dependent on the involution. At the heart of it is the mechanism of the transformation of the external manifestations of the quality of the particles. The cause of evolution, are the particles having the field of repulsion. Although the cause of involution, particles fields of attraction, but in the process of unification of the particles involved not only them, but also particles with repulsion fields. That is to the particles with the fields of repulsion refers an esoteric concept of Lucifer. Light carrying, of the particles with the fields of repulsion, is the emission of light by them, that is the ether, spirit. Hence such esoteric expression as, the fall of Lucifer, should understand not only as a process of involution of particles with repulsion fields, but as the fact that these particles are involved in the common process of merging O elementary particles, along with particles with fields of attraction. As part of each plan are the particles with the fields of repulsion. As a part of the upper three plans they predominate. The synonym for, the fall of Lucifer, is, dive spirit into matter. In, the esoteric literature by the, spirit, are called the particles with the fields of repulsion, and by the, matter, the particles with the fields of attraction. Dive the spirit into matter. It's a compound of the particles with the fields of repulsion with the particles with the fields of attraction, that is their involution. The result is? Ascension the matter to heaven? The separation of particles from the fields of attraction together with the particles with repulsion fields of the total number of involution ones and therefore connected to each other and distancing them from the heavenly bodies. Ascension the matter to heaven, this is the evolution. Moving away from the total number of particles, that is evolve, representatives of any of the four kingdoms. For example, the evolution of minerals, is the eruption of volcanoes. But it's not only this. The evolution of plants, is their growing up, that is from the center of the planet. Animals are able to run and jump, that is break away from the surface of the planet. Human evolution still has more technical focus. For example, it's a flight into space. The evolution turn of the body, an organized system, can be described as the process of gaining independence from the total conglomerate of elementary particles that gave rise to the organism. The topic of evolution is presented in the language of human thinking and language by the images of flight, gaining of wings, separation, elevation, spin off from the crowd. Synonyms of the expression? Ascension the matter into heaven, are? Easter? Exodus? Ascension? Salvation? 28. The Tree of Life Esoteric symbolism of the kingdoms of nature. The number of beast. 666, the Star of David, the Christian Cross and other symbols. Six simple plans of the universe take part in the formation of seventh, complex, log oic. Taken together all seven plans, six simple and one comprehensive, log oic plan, can be named the Tree of Life. Using the Kabbalistic symbolism, the whole manifested universe is formed by ten sephiroth of which three higher are the three main hypostases of creator, matter, spirit, and soul, and seven lower are the seven basic types of souls in every level of each plan. Existing in this world, we thus, eat fruits, of this tree. You can speak figuratively, that every elementary particle, is, the fruit of the tree of life. At first in the universe the celestial bodies arose, it's the mineral kingdom. In the formation of it was attended the elementary particles only physical plan. Chemical elements of the mineral kingdom became the basis to which fixed the elementary particles of all other plans in the process of building by them the logoic plan. The particles of the underlying plan always serve as a basis for the particles of overlying plan. Each kingdom of nature therefore is called by the kingdom that its representatives substantially improve the evolutionary rates and thereby begin to dominate over representatives of the previous kingdom. 
vegetable kingdom arose on the basis of the chemical elements of the mineral one and the guideline of plants became the elementary particles of the astral plan. The animal kingdom flourished on the basis of vegetable under the guidance of the particles of the mental plan. By the basis of the human kingdom became the animal kingdom, and its guiding principle, are the particles of buddhic plan. Superhuman kingdom that will develop on the basis of human one, will take the particles of two plans, atmic and monadic. After that in the universe, there would be a huge number of such creatures could be considered that the purpose of the creator to this manvantara has achieved, the kingdom of God exists as a reality. All the planets and many of the moon in a certain period of their existence make their contribution to the formation of the logoic plan, are involved in the creation of the tree of life. And now let's talk about the esoteric symbolism of the kingdoms of nature. This is completely new information. Until today, yet nowhere among the people is not mentioned that the kingdoms of nature can be described by any symbols. A representative of any kingdom, is a product of combining of the elementary particles of different plans. Chemical element, the representative of the log oik plan, is the basis on which are strong particles of all plans. Each kingdom of nature is marked by the accession of the particles of one more, overlying plan. In order to show that the particles of different plans are connected in the whole one, it's used the symbol of the flower, lotus. Each petal in the flower, is a symbol of the elementary particles of any plan. One, one petal lotus, is a something middle between two astrological signs, Aries and Taurus, a symbol of the mineral kingdom. One single petal tells us that in the composition of any chemical element of the mineral kingdom are united the elementary particles of different levels of only physical plan. Two, two petal lotus, is the symbol of infinity, eight, is a symbol of the vegetable kingdom. Three, three petal lotus, 666, number of the beast, mark of the beast, is a symbol of the animal kingdom. In the human mind is firmly rooted the fear of biblical prophecies. But all is not as bleak as it seems at first glance. Bible in general can't be taken literally. It is written in parables, is permeated by allegories is saturated by images. For example, consider what is the, mark of the beast, or otherwise, number of the beast, it is nothing like an esoteric symbol of the animal kingdom. Draw on the paper trefoil, three petal lotus, here's before you the number of the beast, three sixes, six hundred and sixty six. Each petal of the trefoil, this is a six, six to the chemical elements components of some departments of the brain of animals join the particles of the mental plan. As a result, in the animal kingdom are combined elementary particles of three plans, physical, astral and mental. And each petal, that is every six, it's a symbol of one of the three plans. Four, four petal lotus, it's the Christian cross, the swastika, it's a symbol of man's kingdom. The Christian cross and swastika, are the same things. Their images are a bit different from one another. But in general, they represent the same meanings. The Nazis adopted the swastika as its symbol, and under its auspices were doing evil. However, the Christian cross also stained with blood, remember the Crusades and the Holy Inquisition. As you can see, the symbols are not with it. Selfish. Militant people are able to denigrate anything. To the chemical elements in the neurons of the cerebral cortex of people join the elementary particles of the buddhic plan. As a result, in people come together the particles of four plans, physical, astral, mental and buddhic. Five, five petal lotus, pentagram, five pointed star, the symbol of the first of superhuman kingdoms following after humanity. In bodies of representatives of this kingdom are combined together the particles of five plans, physical, astral, mental, buddhic and atmic. Six, six petal lotus, star of David, is a symbol of more advanced beings. Representatives of this kingdom on the earth are Buddha, Christos and other ascended masters about whom we hear so much. 
in the bodies of representatives this kingdom besides elementary particles of enumerated above five plans there are also the particles of sixth plan, monadic. The kingdom of superhumans is engendered on the earth and exists for a long time in our solar system, but not on earth, and in the borders of universe. And it displays in totality what in Bible is named the God's kingdom, or otherwise the heavenly kingdom. 29. Various versions of universe. Very often, plunging into the thoughts about this manifested universe, we can be unhappy and disappointed by dictates of the laws of the spirit, soul and matter. Distant goals of the creative space are incomprehensible for people. We do not know where it came from, what constitutes, where is located and whether it is appropriate in relation to this something in general, any discussion about the boundaries and whereabouts. Why is this space, which we are part, follows the path of creating a, holy trinity, that is, matter, spirit and elementary particles, the souls, which are the result of combining the first two. This way is such difficult and thorny. Organisms, the result of combining the particles of different quality and different plans, appreciate in the first place only their own existence. Why the space could not create beings already in the form that would be needed. What for all this violence, all these births and deaths, pain and suffering? Yes, they are, but for what all this? Why the space could not do, creating a phenomenal world, without all this? Maybe this manifested universe, is not the only variant and were, and will be different? Why space ventured all this epope with the existence of particles of different quality? Fields of attraction and repulsion, these are the mechanisms of convergence with each other and further away of particles and chemical elements. But why the space, if it is able to create ether ad centers of power, needs these fields for the connection and disconnection of the particles? Why, for what it's all invented and exists, and who is the author of this cruel world? Is it impossible to do without all of this imperfection? But as a rule, to replace these puzzled thoughts the ideas come about the nature of space itself. Maybe this version of the manifested universe is not forever. Maybe this variant with all its laws of involution and devolution, attraction and repulsion and the devouring by one kingdom another, it is really just one of the options? And were another universe is before, and others will be after that? and the space is just playing with itself. Maybe these games, are the only thing for which it exists. The only occupation, which is available to it. Maybe these games, a natural activity of this something, an act of ceaseless enjoying the fact that it first creates and then destroys. We accept the laws of the universe as a given. We even there is no doubt in the fact that everything is as it should be. But it may be, that space having played enough, this version of the universe, erase all existing elementary particles and then, come up with, something new. What if in the new version of the universe will not be anything familiar, no chemical elements and elementary particles, or celestial bodies, no plants, no animals, no people, no women, no men, no kids. Someone will say, but how is that possible? but it tells in us the familiar, well-established world view. We do not know all capabilities of this space. We do not even guess. 30. Limitless Ocean. Sometimes, when we get tired of the everyday vanity, we begin to dream about some boundless ocean. The ocean in this case, it's just a symbol. Best reflects the essence of this ocean clear, cloudless blue of the evening sky. You want to sink in it, dissolve, absorb it, to breathe, to sail into it, to become part of it. The word ocean best reflects the presence in the emptiness of some an uncharted, unknown, mysterious, entailing depth. In this heavenly ocean, perhaps, is there anything that only possible, as well as the abyss that we simply cannot imagine? There is bliss, peace and tranquility. But at the same time there is a power. A gust and speed. And in all of this there are greatness and goodness, and omniscience, and an understanding of absolutely everything, 
and the absence of any mysteries, taboos and ignorance. This is alluring infinity, the true home of all of us. And with that is the eternal exciting journey. From what can be compared to a universe that appears before human consciousness after death, and rarely in life? Countless souls, elementary particles, at the same pace, like ocean waves, rolled on you, merged in a single hole and washed plunging into this ocean consciousness. And it becomes part of that ocean, ceasing to feel their self and dissolving into the one impersonal. And dive into that one, great bliss, with which not all earthly feelings and experiences can be put on a par. 31. The ether, is the cause of firmness of elementary particles. By themselves elementary particles devoid of quality, that is do not destroy and do not create ether, ephemeral, as if they are not there for each other. This means that all of the elementary particles of the universe can be combined with each other and they, would feel. Of course, in reality, this process of connecting with each other centers of power, deprived of quality, never happened. But this thought experiment helps to understand their nature. Elementary particles can't merge with each other because they are filled with ether. Notice how wonderfully everything works. Ether, filling in some point of time any particle, belongs at this moment only this particle. And exactly ether, filling particles, give them, and also to substance which they form, volume, defines the boundaries, overstep which neighboring particles can't. It is thanks the ether filling them, the particles requires a certain place in space. However, exactly the particle is the cause of that within its sphere is always kept a certain amount of ether. The radius of all the particles is the same. It can be assumed that the elementary particles cause the discreteness of the universe. The particles, how unimaginably huge though would not the number of them in the universe, can be counted, by the bees. But in respect of the ether, spilled in space, it can't. Elementary particles fragment the ether. 32. Boundlessness of space. Infinity of God absolute, is, literally, absence of limits. The creative space is unified, it permeates and imbues all that exists, from particle to particle. Everywhere in the universe is only one space. And there's no boundaries for him, there are no limits. The particles have limits, but not the space containing and creating them. The same can be said about chemical elements and bodies. In the outside world bodies begins and ends. But the fact that there are borders for the elements and bodies does not mean that they are for the saturating and creating them space. I exist, supporting this whole world by one part of my soul f. Bhagavad Gita, 1042. The Bhagavad Gita, having pervaded this whole universe with a fragment of myself, I remain. Alice Bailey. Esoteric Psychology, V.1. Supporting, pervading of the universe can be understood as a process of formation of each elementary particle. This feature, supporting, approval, performs for hat that is approvers and molder. The for hat, is one of the many synonyms for the concept of spirit, the second aspect of the manifested universe. It is the existence in the universe spirit, for hat, energy is the reason for the existence of elementary particles and their hardness in relation to one another. By saturating the particles, spirit as if declares its temporary right for a given volume of space, in which is located at the moment the formed by it particle, and no other particles is no longer able to transgress this border. And any particle will always be an owner of certain volume of space, same for all. 33. So what is outside the infinite universe? What beyond the borders of the infinite universe? Verily, it is the most eternal and unfathomable question of all asked by person to himself. Before it retreat in the powerlessness the best minds of mankind. This is the greatest mysteries of the cosmos, which the human mind has not yet been able to solve. As if inside each of us turn on some emergency blocking system of consciousness, as only a person tries to present to himself that, in his view, 
must limit our universe and continue further. Just here and there a complete paralysis of thought comes, bordering on a panic. After all, from the point of view of any of us, it is illogical, that what contains so much of the ending, measuring, itself has no end or edge and can, t be definitively measured. Must have, tells us our inner voice. But if does it have? Then, what? What surrounds the universe? And what surrounds that? What surrounds the universe? And what surrounds that? What surrounds that? What surrounds the universe? And so on. The mind gives up, overextends, and refuses to submit unimaginable. But it may be that where the logic is powerless, to us help the intuition? Maybe someone in the world knows the answer to this overriding question? Or is anyone in the universe? Let's hope that's the case. Perfectly the issue infinity of space rises in the book of Nicholas Rerick's, Seven Great Mysteries of Cosmos, since times immemorial people have looked at the starry sky reverentially, admiring the glimmer of innumerable worlds. Man was amazed by the grandeur of cosmos since the very beginning of his presence on the earth especially in solitude of the immense desert or amid the conglomeration of gigantic mountains man unintentionally plunges into the thoughts of immense ability of the universe, infinity of the cosmic space. Human mind has been astonished by that infinity. But also it could not imagine cosmos being limited. Assuming the existence of the limit of space somewhere, another question arises immediately, what is beyond that limit? If it is not the space then what is it? Every time the human mind has to admit that cosmos cannot have any limits. Cosmic space infinitely stretches on all sides? Nicholas Rerick's, Seven Great Mysteries of Cosmos, The First Mystery Days and Nights of Brahma. 34. God is everywhere. Now you are at the beginning of this series of books devoted to the main sections of the human science and after we dive into the analysis of the processes and phenomena of this world, go through all the intricacies of matter, spirit and soul and analyze different types of elementary particles, chemical elements and their compounds, and all sorts of representatives of the various kingdoms of nature recommend you to come back to the realization that put all of this together no more than a disturbance in space, mere, an illusion, a dream that can see creative space and everywhere, everywhere there is nothing but God. 35. What is the Akasha? H.P. Blavitsky identifies Akasha in her works with Mule Prakriti that is not quite true. Mule Prakriti, is root matter, original substance. Akasha, it does not the matter that is not the first aspect of creator. Akasha, it's directly the changing of the material basis. Akasha is synonymous of spirit. The second aspect. Akasha is a Sanskrit word, visibility, which in itself indicates that the Akasha is related to the state of manifestation. While Mule Prakriti hidden in there, integument, forever unseen. This is, the first place. Second, the main characteristic of Akasha is Shabda, sound, which indicates a relationship with the voice, speech, word, which are the list of synonyms, where each concept represents the way of manifestation of spirit and matter. Third, according to the Upanishads, Akasha, is the first element, Buta, which created the Brahman. And first, as we know, was born the spirit. Element of matter, it's not matter. Itself, but its altered state. Akasha, this is one of the great elements, Mahaputa. Akasha, this is the fifth element, formed in matter, which combines together all other four elements, air, fire, water and earth. Impulse of manifestations, Akasha, indeed, imbues every point of space, penetrates any of the existing elementary particles. Fourth, to Akasha, inherent lights and darkness, and this corresponds to reality. A method of forming Akasha, is to build of two types of construction units, light, yang, and dark, yin. Fifth, Akasha, is a, repository of knowledge and information, and rightfully so, as the Akasha, 
the spirit, and the spirit, this is information. 36. Buddha and Christ, are the symbols of spirit. The image of Buddha in Buddhism also is symbolic as the image of Christ in Christianity. Buddha, is awakened one. It is almost the same as the Buddhi, awakening, the first thought of the one, impersonal, Brahman, after waking up, that is during the transition from the Manvantara into Pralaya. Buddha, Buddha, is the same as the Buddhi, mind, divine thought, spirit, is embodied in matter. Buddha plays the role male principle, generating this phenomenal world. Christ in Christianity has the same symbolic function. The male principle, married to the female principle, the Church of Christ, with the result that there is this phenomenal world. Buddha and the Christ, are the symbols of the spirit manifested in matter. Buddha was suffering in this world. But the Noble Eightfold Path saved him from suffering and led to Nirvana. Christ suffered on the cross, but after his death, he ascended and was in paradise. And in fact, in both cases, the suffering in this phenomenal world, are completed by liberation and peace. The ascension of Christ and the Buddha entry into Nirvana, are symbols of achieving by them, each in his life, the state that the Bible called the Apocalypse. Apocalypse, is the salvation of human consciousness from the clutches of material existence, get away, exodus from bondage in Egypt. The period of mass achievements of such an existence within the boundaries of the universe is called the Bible, the millennial kingdom of the saints. This is not immersion into Pralaya. No, Pralaya will follow later, when, is unknown. Obviously, Buddha and Christ were done the symbols, by those people, who made biographies of real personalities, who wore these names. 37. The Holy Grail. The Holy Grail, is the vessel, to where is going the blood of Christ. More precisely, not where it's going, but in which it circulates. This vessel, its mother's womb, matter, with the spirit manifested in it, that is, soul, an elementary particle. This is the Holy Grail. The blood of Christ, is the serpent of space, dragon wisdom, flowing ether, spirit which causes objectivization, the manifestations of this universe. The expression, blood of Christ, is closely linked to other concepts encountered in the occult sources, the sweat of the mother, scum. The blood of Christ, is the second aspect of God, the water of life, energy, will be. The body of Christ, is a synonym for the holy grail, for the matter manifested in it the spirit. Soul is the visible universe. In the body is flowing the blood. And as long as the blood flows, the body is alive, that is, exists. If the blood stops running, the body will die, disappear. 38. Christ and Antichrist, Heaven and Hell. Christ and Antichrist, Heaven and Hell, Baptism by fire and baptism by water, spirit and matter. All these are from the series indicating to the pairs of opposites. The word, Christianity, has a double meaning. From one side, this is a live person, holy, Mahatma, who passed through all five initiations, and acquired during this way the status of superhuman and ascended teacher. From other side, it's a symbol of spirit, light, fire, father. Often, in New Testament, you can meet a statement that Christos is the Son of God. All is true. Under the Son of God should be understood the repetition in miniature the image of God. All six plans are merged together in the body of Christ. Christ is the symbol of spirit. The concept spirit, as you remember, can be used in general meaning, as an indication on spilled in the space spirit, or the spirit. It's the particles with fields of repulsion, Yan. By irony of fate, but most probably, just because of misunderstanding true sense of occult concepts, Lucifer in Christianity is opposed to Christ and identified with his antipode. Antichrist. But Lucifer is just an analogue of Christ. Explanation of meaning the concept? Lucifer? As an antagonist of Christ is erroneous. 
The church, bride of Christ, should be considered as a symbol of matter, in this case as elementary particles with fields of attraction, yin. But the bride of Christ, is the matter deprived of her dominated position. She is led by the Christ, that is the spirit. There is one more concept in the Christianity that is opposite to Christ, it's Antichrist. So what it represents? The Antichrist, it's the same matter. However unlike the Bride of Christ, it keeps humans? I? In prisoner. The Antichrist, it's the? Beast? Animal principle of human organism, three sixes, six hundred and sixty-six, three plans physical, astral and mental, enslaving the human soul, the body of buddhic plan. Christos constitutes the savior of human? I? From the yoke of unenlightened matter, antichrist. The Christ, is to highest plans, atmic and monadic, spiritual principle as in relation to three lowest plans, and to the human consciousness, related with the buddhic plan. Hell and heaven are the states of consciousness. Hell, it's an identification of human? I? With material principle, sensation of its headship and insubordination. The feeling of? Hell? Is tightly connected with awakening in person of? Beast? Animal nature, Antichrist. In exactly the same way the heaven, it's the state of human consciousness. It's possible to be in paradise in disembodied state or don't breaking the connection with dense body. The last corresponds to Buddhist. Staying in Nirvana. Power over the matter, control above the animal principle. At same time, the matter doesn't just control. No, she is dissolved in the spirit, identified with him, she is his part and indivisible whole. We can say that the power is given voluntarily, and the union is based on the love. In accordance with the law of identification, the subjection of the largest force, information, happens. This means is considered the most important and valuable the information, which is transmitted by the most strong particles yan, that is emitting the ether with the biggest speed. If to speak by cleanly occult language, not adding the scientific terminology, then such particles can be described as having the most strong and most thin vibrations. To take the Christ in the heart? Means to identify it own inferior material? I? The heart is the symbol of astral principle, with the highest, spiritual plans, presented in the body, consisting of larger amount of particles yan. These higher plans, it's the Christ for the inferior plans. Information of the higher plans affects on the information of inferior, and rebuilds by such way the lower body's shells. Human soul, shell, consisting of the particles of buddhic plan, experiencing such transforming influence from the direction of the spirit, Christ, becomes by a cult? Saved? And it can consider as? Staying in paradise. If the material principle in human doesn't subordinate and is an independent power, able to direct the actions and acts of person, then it can consider that human soul has got to hell? As you remember, in accordance with the law of identification, the last taken information has the most importance. And this state of most importance is saved until up this arrived into particles information not cancelled. The new, more valuable one. From this it follows the conclusion, relating to the post-mortem existence of person. The state of human consciousness, which was typical for him during the life, persists by him as the managing, dominant and after death until, another, stronger energy information will affect on him. What is this more? Strong information? These are the bodies of essences living in the space on more high plans, and containing bigger percent of the particles yan. They with bigger speed emit information, that is ether. All as regards the questions of interaction of energies informations, is extremely important for understanding the main points that happens at initiations. But it's not only for this. In surrounding us life we constantly meet with demonstrations of law of identification. 
we need to learn to differentiate these various manifestations and calmly observe them, and also as far as possible to control them. Because of mentioned conservation after death last lifetime states, probably most of stories about experience of human soul, getting after death or in heaven, or in hell, can be considered enough truthful. But you must also remember about the fact that any one of after death states is not constant. As already was said, if a particle is influenced new, more powerful information, its condition changes. Probably so when the person just has died or is dying, to him invite the people, who can affect well on the human consciousness, remove from it negative memories. Loving close familiars and friends, relatives, shamans, priests. Therefore the ritual of absolution, repentance exists, this clears the soul, and it goes to free life, into another world, clean, devoid of chaining it false, sinful, program of behavior. Human soul after death in the most measure will gravitate to those plans that are more strongly influence on it during the life. After death existence of human? I? is fully determinated by its karma, his chronic of Akasha, that information, which impressed in the particles of human consciousness at his life. That's why so useful for our soul and influence all of higher, that helping us to go out the frameworks of trivial state. Of course, it does not mean, that contact with three lowest plans is harmful. Not in the least. However you should realize that physical plan, astral and mental before others begin to participate in constructing of kingdoms of nature, physical plan before than astral, astral before than mental, mental before than buddhic, buddhic later than atmic. And monadic plan enters in this process after all, because it is saturated by particles yan more than all others. And the speed of emitting of ether by particles of this plan is biggest can say that lower plans personify the history of earth, and not only of earth, but in general, in ecumenical scales, the history of formation and devolution the life on it. So it's naturally to suppose, that low plans, are carriers of more earlier, more primitive information. 39. Father, Son and Holy Spirit. In religious and esoteric literature there are not less complications ambiguities and misunderstandings than in usual books, and doesn't everything simply. The spirit is regarded by true male principle of universe, the partner of matter. Nevertheless we consider that and in this question are hidden quite a few inaccuracies. In Christian Trinity the Father, it's not the second hypostasis, but the first, main, given birth to the Son, and from her emanates the Holy Spirit. In stanzas of Zion book the father is called, father, and father is united with mother mother father. In the same place he is named yet as godlike thought, the matter, godlike bosom. And in religious and in occult texts there are quite many trinities. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Christian. Spirit, Soul, Body. Philosophic. Spirit. Soul, Body. Philosophic. There are still two Hindu trinities. Shiva, Vishnu, Brahma. Atma, Buddhi. Manas. And also is Trinity, meeting in the books of Alice Bailey. Life, quality. Phenomenon. From all listed trinities only in one of them is mentioned the word. Father. In Christian trinity. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. In it Father and is named so. The Father, in which connection in it simultaneously there are concepts Father and Spirit, and it indicates on that every of them has its own meaning and fulfills its own function. As you see, in this Trinity, the Spirit is not Father. Nevertheless, traditionally consider that Spirit and Father are synonyms. Probably, because Spirit, breath, as the male principle in the nature of fertilization becomes the reason of beginning new life, that is enliven the matter. In stanzas it's not said about father as of something separated from matter. In the Old Testament Eva and Adam are together too. Eva symbolizes the matter. And whom then Adam is symbolized, if the serpent that tempted the Eva, 
best suited to the role of that what impregnates the atoms, that is on the role of spirit. But from other side all in the universe is born in the result of union of fire and water, where the water is the matter and fire is the spirit. Spirit, it's the breath of the matter itself, primordial substance, the first male principle, generated by virgin mother. Let's accept the concept that spirit, this it is the father. Union of mother and father, yin and yang, gives birth to soul, to son, elementary particle. In accordance with texts of book Zion comes out that spirit, this it is spurned, eighth son of the mother, who also is named the firstborn. Thus in the Trinity, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, the word, Father, reflects an image of Mother, as it not surprisingly, the most first principle, generating other two. The word, Son, symbolizes the soul, elementary particle. And, Holy Spirit, it's exactly Spirit, Light. 40. The Baptism by Water and by Fire. Let's stop on the theme of baptism. How to interpret the meaning of that sacrament? How to understand the sense of baptism by water and baptism by fire? And how they connect with each other? Start with the fact that the cross, it's the symbol of mankind kingdom. Four petal lotus is the merging in one whole the particles of four plans, physical, astral, mental and buddhic. This is in the narrow sense. And in the more wide, cross indicates on the process of association the particles of different quality, for example, yin and yang. Thus, concept, baptism, should be interpreted as connection the particles, or, can say, bodies, of different quality, forming the human organism. As is well known in Christianity exist two main baptisms, by water and by fire. What is that? and how should understand their meaning. Both baptisms is named by Fathers of Church. The Sacraments. Surprisingly as far as little is understood true meaning of this striking phenomenon. Baptism by water, representing in reality no more than symbolical image, turned into some attribute of protection from dark powers, whammy, vitiation and so on, in obligatory ritual ceremony, entirely pagan. Ablution of kid, or adult, by connecting two chemical elements, this is only the symbol. And some shamanistic, protective meaning is given to it. Supposedly that after hanging to person on the neck a piece of iron in the shape of crucified Christ he becomes invulnerable for evil. Of course, it is impossible to deny that fact the talismans, and the cross, is talisman. Possess some power, all depends from that who created it, who touched it, who wears it and of what material it's made. This is interesting theme, but we don't stay on this now. However to associate the wearing of talisman, cross, and baptism by water in whole one, it's a full absence of true understanding that what is a baptism. But let's return to the interpretation of meaning. In the Bible, in New Testament, in Gospel from John says that nobody enters in God's kingdom, not that baptized by water and not accepted the Holy Spirit from high. Jesus answered, Truly, truly say to you, if somebody isn't born from water and spirit, can't enter into God's kingdom. New Testament from John, chapter 3 colon 5. Holy Spirit, it's the same as fire. Thus Christ claimed that nobody touches the heavenly kingdom. At essence it is the same as dive into nirvana, until accepts double baptism, by water and by fire. What does it mean? Water in occultism, it's the symbol of matter, fire, of spirit. Baptism by water necessarily must proceed to the baptism by fire. Baptism by water, it's merging in the one whole the particles of material principle, bodies, shells, three lower plans, physical astral and mental, which can consider as matter in respect of three high plans, buddhic, atmic and monadic, that are the spirit, fire, as regarding to lowers. After that happens full merging, individualization, initiation and identification, 
of body's three lower plans, that is baptism by water finishes, and begins the time for the next stage. Evolutionary. It's time for the baptism by fire, sequential joining the bodies of three high plans. Human kingdom the first of all begins to join the fiery plans, and namely buddhic. That is, each of us, is just born, is already involved into the process of baptism by fire. We can attract attention of beings to more high plans, atmic and monadic, even more fiery. And then, if it happens, if their bodies integrate into our organism, then our fiery baptism gains yet the more strength and power. And we become the Mahatmas ourselves, great souls. Godlike, in whose organisms united the particles of all six simple plans, like the Creator. Organism of Mahatma is the representative of seven plan, logoic, complex. That's what the baptism by water and by fire from the position the teachers of ageless wisdom, and so they are interrelated. We can consider the Old Testament, John Baptist and baptism by water as the symbols of material origin, yin. While New Testament, Jesus Christ and baptism by fire, are the images of spiritual principle. 41. Rupa and Arupa, forms and formlessness low plans in whole are Rupa, here live forms. The forms are replayed by the particles yin, absorbing the energy, ether. Doing this they thereby fasten all together. By such way creation of forms happens. In mechanics there is such concept. Deformation? It's changing, destruction of the form under effect of some force. What bodies are more difficult to deform? Dense, hard. Need to apply the force, and significant. Try to deform a piece of iron. But liquids are deformed very easy, blow on it, and there is a ripple on it. And to deform a gas is yet simpler. But in what is the cause of difference? Answer. Diverse ratio of the particles yin and yang. In liquids, the percent of the particles yang is bigger than in metals. In gases, it is bigger than in liquids. And they deform easy because yang doesn't create connections between itself and others. They only destroy. In three lower plans, particles yin in whole dominate. So the matter of these plans is denser. From physical to mental, a dense falls. This is Rupa plans. Though they have the bodies, Rupa and Arupa. And in three high plans the percent of Yan is bigger. These are plans Arupa. At the fourth, the sons are told to create their images, one third refuses. To obey. The curse is pronounced. They will be born in the fourth, suffer and cause suffering. This is the first war. Stanza 6.5 this quote has direct relation to the theme of our conversation. The suns are energy units, particles. One third refuses. This is exactly two high plans of six. In them the percent of particles yang is the largest. To obey. Forms of universe first of all are built of physical, astral, mental, buddhic and atmic plans. In the fourth kingdom, in human. Two higher plans will begin gradually to join, that is will born. 42. Chakras, closed and open. Mechanism of initiation and goal of evolution, briefly. The writing of this article has greatly contributed Book of Jasmuin, The Food of Gods. Reading introductory chapters I several times met in the text her words that we are facing a choice of how to make our body, emitting or absorbing, energy. These words immediately became the trigger. Because the theme of the duality of our world, the universe, one of the central problems in our work. Creators and destroyers, yin and yang, matter and spirit, mass and energy, etc. In response to the ideas of Jasmuin I immediately recalled about the chakras, closed and open. I lit up with a flash of insight. I suddenly realized the reasons for their openness and closeness. The mechanism of this phenomenon appeared before my mind's eye with the utmost clarity. That is what I want to try to convey to you. And also to start a story what is the dedication. After all, this issue is directly related to the topic of the chakras. Actually, 
dedication, this is the process of changing the chakras, opening, closing, and the reorientation of ignition of, as well as their interaction with each other and with the outside world. In occult is a number of concepts at the same time has several, little different from each other semantic clothes. This applies to such categories as matter, spirit, soul. We also identified the chakra with the elementary building block of the universe, putting it on a par with terms such as atom and elementary particle. In the universe everything is, as below, so above. Overall it can observed analogy, both in structure and in development. Chemical element in its structure is similar to the planet, the planet, to the solar system, the last, to the galaxy, the galaxy, to the super galaxy and so on, until the rung of the ladder, to central heavenly body of the universe. Because it is in the form of a great big galaxy our universe exists. Atom, elementary particle, this is the smallest force center, the center of creation. Chemical element, is a bigger force center, which is a cluster of elementary particles. Any celestial body, is a cluster of chemical elements. All the elementary particles, as is known, divided into two main types, absorbing and emitting. Or absorbs the energy information ether, or emits. Yin or yang. However, any of them and creates energy, and destroys. In any conglomerate particles are present both types. Percentage ratio of types may be any. Depending on this ratio any conglomerate is either predominantly emitting or absorbing. The same can be said of any celestial body and just the body in general. Absorbing planet, is unholy. Emitting, is sacred. Absorbing people, normal. Emitting, initiate, holy. Chakra, is not only the smallest subatomic particle. It is also the name of the power center as a conglomerate of particles. In any elementary particle, is rotated, the energy, through time appears and destroyed disappears. In any conglomerate energy also rotates in a circle, first, because it is composed of particles, and, secondly, because the particles exchange the energy with each other, yin absorb the energy of yang. Chakra in the mouth of the esotericist, symbolizes one of the power centers in the human body. Force center in this case, is a symbol of the subtle bodies makes the sign of the dense physical body. Etheric, astral, mental, buddhic bodies, all these are the thin bodies of human. His chakras. These subtle bodies also consist of particles. The areas in the human aura, where is the greatest concentration of these particles, the practicing esotericists, who feeling and seeing them, just call them by the chakras, centers of power. That's what a chakra, from the point of view of a practicing occultist. But it will not be wrong to call as chakras subtle bodies of human. At the very least, any force center, is a direct expression of any plan or sub-plan. And here we just come to the theme of open and closed chakras, to their reasons for opening and closing. Opening and closing of chakras are directly connected with the level of human holiness. Holiness of human is determined by measure of energetic saturation. Then more it is saturated, the more it is holy. And it's nothing else. The more energy per unit of time it is produced in the body, including the subtle bodies, not just the physical, and then more holy, more energy saturated is the person. Holiness, initiation, it's just that. Moreover, the higher the plan, the more energy its particles produce per unit of time. Therefore, the thinner. Higher planes become the part of the human body, the more holy, more spiritual, more energetic he becomes. The ratio of particles of yin and yang within the same plan in the body, too, can change. If our predominated absorbing particles, yin, it does not add holiness. Quite the contrary. Reduce the level of energy. This is the darkness. If the number of particles yang becomes more and more, in each of the subtle bodies, and it is compared with the number of yin, then this is the sanctity. In that is precisely the whole secret of initiation. That way, going from initiation to initiation, 
a person adds to their bodies more particles yang. Ideally, the number of yin should be equal to yang number. Then the amount of emitted energy is exactly equal to the amount of absorbed. And the man becomes the god. Because in the body of our creator, the universe, there are equally of yin and yang, how much energy is emitted, so much is absorbed. It's the perfect balance, allowing the universe to remain in equilibrium. And in this precisely lies the mystery of love. God is love. You can often hear these words. But what's behind them? It's absolute harmony. Love in the ideal, is to absorb as much as to give. Then there is no excess or deficiency. Everything is constantly refilled. No one is hurt. And this is the mystery of the second ray. The second ray is the yellow particles. In the three low planes they absorb energy, but less than the blue. And in the top three, emit, but less than red. Summary, across the universe, exactly yellow, the second ray, are ideally harmonized. Not blue, and not red. In unholy man are dominated particles that absorb energy, blue and yellow. We say otherwise, the particles of lower part of spectrum are dominated. It's in all bodies, not only in dense. Because of this, these bodies shells of human are absorbing of energy, and not emitting, or at least they would be in balance. The human body does not have enough energy produced by its. And it has to take the outer. To warm up by the fire, we can say literally and figuratively. To absorb energy from the surrounding sources. Because of this his body turns into a kind of point for external energy. But energy, it is an information. Always. So you can imagine, how much extraneous information the man has to pass through him. Any, positive, negative. Trying to make your life less like carousel of information, the person s starts to limit their contacts with the outside world, making them elective in order to absorb only the energy that he likes and is familiar. He deliberately closes his chakras, for fear of falling into the body of unnecessary energy. When the person goes through the series of initiations, he, she, begins to produce more energy through him herself. His life becomes more stable. If be for any external could influence on his life, whip from the way, then now he becomes the competent member of life melodrama. He try an influence, but make an impact on the surround. His chakras are opened. He consciously opens them to the world to communicate with it, because he no more fears it. This consists all sense of concepts. Open chakras and closed. Closed chakra, it's a chakra, not tuned up to the receiving of external information, more precisely, turned up to the receiving of selective information. In what follows person tries to attune his organism by such way that communicate with external world with the help only one chakra, seventh, complex. This chakra, is single eye of the body. If thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. Such the ancient wisdom, embodied in the book of Alice Bailey. Feats of Heracles. This single chakra, it's the body of seventh, logoic plan body of the higher plan. Monadic, overshadows head of person, where under it, under this higher body, is the shell of atmic plan, and all others four, buddhic, mental, astral and physical. This higher, complex body reports to all organs energy impulses, and for its turn receives reciprocal ones. It means that seventh chakra becomes the guiding principle of person. At him all chakras stop to dominate, except seventh. If be for this at person all chakras could react on external environment individually, in him, caudal, or guttural, or solar plexus, or the others, then now the contact with the world is determined by only one chakra. The others are subordinated to it and listen to it. Its energy impulses for them, are the most important. It doesn't mean that body stops to exchange with outward things by particles, by energy, ether, with the help of these chakras. No, the chakras are active and burn, as before. 
only with the difference that now all perceiving and all reporting to the world energy information they compare with higher template with information stored in the seventh chakra. Person becomes show by himself a single whole non-discord. Single perfect being. In this is all meaning of evolution, all meaning of development of our universe, creating such perfect beings, Mahatmas. At the same time lower chakras all also active. However now they first of all respond on the information come from seventh chakra. The lower chakras become the channels connecting spirit and matter. They don't guide by the body themselves. Exactly this question are devoted the books of Alice Bailey. Spirit is immersing into the matter, higher plans connect with lower. It's an involution. This leads to the energetization of person, to the evolution, ascension, salvation, Easter. And matter, that is organism, overcomes gravitation and propensity to material, and rises to the sky. In organism there are equally yin and yang, matter and spirit. From initiation to initiation organism accept into itself all more and higher plans, and learn to interact with them. When the bodies of higher plans only overshadow the head, weakly penetrate, they can't full-blownly cooperate with the bodies of lower plans in organism. When energy saturated body of higher plans penetrates the head deeply, begins the most wonderful and unique. The transfiguration of consciousness begins thought, and then all organisms. Low chakras of organism was active before this, but higher were not. And during of penetrating the high consciousness more and deeper inside the head, low chakras cease to dominate, and, higher, opposite, become the leading. Till they become the driven two, except one of them, seventh. Single eye, Sahasrara. Such is the common schema and the general plan, and common direction of development of any organism. We give a little more information about chakras. Closed and opened chakras. When clairvoyant looks at the person he sees his energy centers, chakras, as flowers of life. Or closed buds, are dark, dim and little active, or, bright flowers, are burn like the sunday. The first ones he will describe as closed chakras, the second will name the opened. Their openness or closeness, it's not a figurative expression. It's their real energy state. When into composition of thin shell forming that or other chakra, enter more and more particles yan, emitting energy ether, from what their number equates with the number of particles yin, absorbing ether, the chakra is opened. What does it mean? This means that energy center is opening to the external world. Chakra begins to exchange energy with surrounding bodies. If there are little of particles yan, energy is produced little. It's enough only for circulation within own energy enter. All this little quality of energy is absorbed the chakra by itself, its particles yin. The power of ether flow is not enough to full blownly communicate with outwards things. Chakra, is the central area of any thin shells, constitutive the body. Is this man or an animal, plant or mineral? Or superhuman? Chakra, is the heart of this thin body shell. But borders of thin body don't coincide with the borders of chakra. They stretch much farther. Borders of thin bodies are rather amorphous and changeable. For example when the person learns to attention, concentration, memorization, or becomes proficient in any other intellectual function, he actually is trained to operate with his mental body. He learns to modify its form. With its help he gets information from the outward things. Any of thin body's shells is able to exchange energy information with surroundings. Communication is carried out such way. Thin body forms from itself the channel of communication, or can say a tongue of communication. Tongue as a protuberance. Like at Sunday. That one what can? Lick. Studied body and divide with it information. Thin shell pours over the researched body or environment by its energy. This energy flux in accordance with physical laws forces out the same or almost the same portion of energy ether from this body. This it is. Exchange of information? Not fictitious, figurative, but real, literal. 
so and happens communication on all levels, at any plan, at any chakra, at any body. But this is not only existing mechanism of exchanging by energy. Every body accumulates in its chemical elements the solar particles, photons. When photon is in the body, it records information about this body, and temporary becomes as if its integral part. So if such photon gets into another place, flies through or attracts, it? Tell? About that body where it has come from. Because except of exchange by energy aether fluxes directly, bodies also can give to each other the portions of free particles, photons? Charged? With information. Can name this method by electromagnetic. Here so the chakras and communicates with the outward things, energy or particles they also transmit an energy. Then more of energy one or another thin body produces, that is the more in it there is the particles yang, then on more distance it could reach with its energy language. And then more long will prolongs inertial moving of emitted free particles. After all only inertial moving of particles yang can last forever. Here and is all secret. More energy chakra is more open, it more intensively communicates with the world. If there is little of energy, the chakra is closed. Its energy there is barely enough for circulation within itself and the body of organism. 43. The initiations of four elements. This article should consider as direct continuation of the article. Chakras, opened and closed. The mechanism of initiation, briefly. Here we prolong the theme of mechanism of initiation. In article followed over this we will talk about not less importance question, to the rising of Kundalini. In the book of Alice Bailey? Initiation, human and solar? There is analogy between human organism, planetary, planet, and solar, solar system. As above, is so below. And planet, and solar system. These are organisms similar to the human, let having another scale and other form, form and scale are not most main thing here. Planets and solar systems as and galaxies, and super galaxies, and of course all universe on the whole, these are organisms, living, as every their component is live and has a consciousness, we talk about elementary particles. Anybody, its totality of assembling it wills. The will in this way its consciousness of more small unit. But in the finite result we all the same come to the most small, indivisible, to the atom, to the particle, to the energy center. Not only men can go through initiations. But also the planets are. And solar systems are and galaxies. And super galaxies. All universe as a whole goes through one global initiation. Representatives of lower kingdoms, animals plants, minerals, aren't also deprived of their due share of this opportunity. Acceptance of various kinds of initiations, it's inalienable and constant part of our world. This is process, more frequent and usual than uninitiated can guess about this, sorry for pun. All in nature is subordinated to the endless rhythm of initiations which are rolled on the beach of universe in their own only to them known order again and again. In traditions of oriental schools of spiritual development there are mentioning about four initiations through which person goes through as measure of his evolution. In other way they are named the initiations of four elements. Should explain what happens at this time in the organism, in thin shells. From initiation to initiation into thin bodies in series integrates all more and more sparse, energy saturated shells containing the bigger percent of particles yan emitting energy. The person in series goes through the initiations of earth, water, fire and air. Just in this sequence in the scales of universe it increases an energy level of elementary particles from the fields of attraction, earth, water, to the fields of repulsion, fire, air. At that fields of attraction gradually decrease and increase the fields of repulsion. The level of energy smoothly grows. Just in this order level of energy changes inside thin shells of person. As you see energy in the body is added gradually. It gives time for adaptation of low bodies especially of dense physical. 
If the energy in one moment jumps from the earth level to the air level, passing water and fire, organism would die. As you see in this question the nature is led by all the same well making a good showing principle of smooth and gradual approximation to the wished purpose. This method, is the wisest in the universe. It always gives the best results as against the method of quick leaps. If locate the particles of universe in the hierarchical order in accordance with quality of using or producing by them energy, then they are disposed just in this order, earth, water, fire and air. At the same order initiations goes. Every man takes initiation of earth automatically, just giving birth in this world. Initiation of water is named yet, Parjanya Varuna. Of fire, is initiation Agni. Of air, is initiation Vayu. Original Christian name for the initiation, is baptism. Cross, is the symbol of association in single whole the particles of different plans. It is no wonder that baptism, initiation, by water at Christ's forestalls the baptism initiation, by fire. As you see there is full analogy with oriental traditions. Besides just in this order the particles react on the gravity, attraction. In the direction from air to earth the particles are all more strongly attracted, because gravitation. This rule can be observed by the example the photons of visible diapason, when they are refracted and make spectrum. Refraction of the light way, this is just its gravitation, attraction of photons. To the violet part of spectrum the refraction, gravity, increases, and to the red, decreases. Interestingly that on this scale of elements the reaction of particles to the anti-gravity, will be directly opposite. From earth to air, going through water and fire, the particles are all better repulsed from the objects emitting ether, anti-gravitating. From the initiation to the initiation the thin bodies of person are built into itself all more and more the particles yan, till the number of particles both types, yin and yan, equalizes. Such is the scientific esoteric sense of eastern initiations of four elements. 44. The parable about Adam and Eva. Eva, is the human body, collection of particles of physical, astral and mental planes. Adam, is, human consciousness, human eye, bodies shells of the particles of buddhic plan. If we use the term matter and spirit in the form in which they are used in most esoteric books, the spirit, is particles of higher plans with respect to particles of lower plans. And the matter, are particles of lower plans with respect to the particles of a higher plane. Then Adam, buddhic particles. This is the spirit with respect to Eva, the matter, particles of physical, astral and mental planes, forming in total most dense aspects of the human body. The concept of matter is well consistent with the female maternal start. While the concept of spirit has always been identified with the male, paternal start, by considering men as carriers of the supreme principle, and women, as the lowest. This is not surprising if to consider the domination of males over females. Hence, it becomes clear that served as the basis for the biblical parable about Adam and Eve. Adam, man, has become the personification of the human soul, human eye. And Eve, woman, is the symbol of the human body. At the outset of the parable says that originally Adam and Eve lived in paradise. Here we should look at what is heaven and hell. Heaven and hell, are states of consciousness. Paradise, is a state of peace, absence of conflicts, confrontation. Hell, it's the opposite state, fighting, separating, discord. Staying of Adam and Eve in paradise means that in earlier eras of human existence as a species, his soul, I, was still asleep. It was a period of human childhood. Consciousness is not yet awakened not mixed with the human body, with Eve. In our ordinary sleep consciousness separates from the body and stays nearby but does not merge with the cerebral cortex. During waking consciousness penetrates deep into the cortex. Particles of buddhic plan fill the gaps between the elements in the cortical cells. Happening that what is referred to as to, come to him. When the human mind, soul, 
is merged with the cortex, the person is awake. While Adam slept in paradise, that is, was in a state of blissful ignorance, Eve was tempted and seduced the devil, also known as, serpent, Satan, offering to her to eat the fruit from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Who is the devil, and what means, to taste the forbidden fruit? The devil, dev, this is a general name for the whole collections of particles of physical, astral and mental planes. Seduction and temptation of Eva by devil means that the human body is made up of particles of only these plans, was, and is, the part of the devil. The body is deprived of close contact with the particles of buddhic plan, the human soul, as a guiding principle, obeyed the memory stored in the body. Temptation of the devil, is the following to his information programs. Tree of the knowledge of good and evil, it's our entire universe is involved in the process of combining particles of all plans. Proposal by Eve to Adam the fruit from the tree of knowledge of good and evil symbolizes the process of involving particles buddhic plan in the process of building log oic plan that is our universe. That moment when Adam eats fruit, symbolizes the fusion process the human soul buddhic consciousness, with the body. This moment of merger corresponds to the expulsion of Adam and Eve from paradise. In the parable does not say that after the expulsion from Eden, Adam and Eve go to hell. But the way it is. Heaven and hell, are two main and the only possible state of consciousness. It's like two poles. Between them there is an infinite variety of variations. The lack of unity and integrity speaks about the existence of struggle and confrontation hell. When the soul was merged with the body, it was unhappy that it had to endure. Consciousness has felt all the hardships of existence in the animal body. Adam saw the naked, the need to provide food by hard work, pregnancy and childbirth in women, and other adversities. All this has become a huge burden for Adam, for soul that quite accustomed to quite another life in heaven. A state of blissful ignorance, Paradise, was replaced by a state of frightening knowledge, hell. Staying in the complex of particles of three lower plans were very difficult. Prior to the merger of Adam with Eve, he, the soul, Adam, lived in paradise, this was the state of inexpressible joy. The fact that Eve was appointed as an assistant to Adam points out that human consciousness has more energy and more advanced programs behavior compared with the particles of the three lower plans. The total velocity of the energy, ether, from the body of buddhic plan is more. That is why the body becomes an assistant to the soul, but not vice versa. Thank you very much for your attention. N. Official website http colon slash slash newizo dot ru email tanina dot t at yandex dot u facebook https colon slash slash ww dot facebook dot com slash tasiana dot tanina twitter https colon slash slash twitter dot com slash tasiana one where to buy in print only in Russian yet http colon slash slash www.ozon.ru slash context slash detail slash id slash 1870986 one slash question partner equals diner underscore milan